Hi guys, welcome back to another exciting tutorial of Create a Stack. In this tutorial, we will learn how to make a full stack food ordering web app using React.js. We will build the front end, back end, and admin panel with the help of Mern Stack. So, let's see the project overview that we are going to create in this tutorial. So, this is the home page of our food ordering website. Here you can see the list of food items that you can order from this website. And here we have these menu. If I click on this dessert, it will display only dessert. If I click on noodles, it will display only noodles. If I click on this menu again, then it will display all the food items. This web page is completely responsive. so. Let me change the screen size. You can see this web page looks perfect in different screen size. Here we have the sign in button. If I click here, we will get a sign up form. And if you already have an account, you can click on this link, log in here and enter your email ID and password and log in on this web page. So we'll click on this link for a new user sign up. So here we will create a new account. So let me type my name here, then email ID. So if I enter any simple password and select this checkbox, then click on this create account button. Here it is displaying one warning, please enter a strong password. So let me enter the strong password here. Then click on this create account. Now we are logged in on this website. Now we can add the products in our cart. So here we have this plus icon. Let me click here. So this product will be added. If I click on this plus, it will increase the quantity. And if I click on this minus icon, it will decrease the quantity. So let me add two quantity of this product, then I will add this product. It will be three quantity. Now we will open the cart page. So in this cart page, you can see the product image, product name, price, quantity, and here we have the total price and delivery charges. Now we will click on this proceed to checkout button. So it will take you to the delivery information page where user can enter their name and address and proceed to payment page. So let me add one address. Any dummy phone number. And I will click on this proceed to payment. Now it will open the payment page that we have integrated using the Stripe. On this page also you can see the order information. Here we have the food items name and quantity. Let's add the email ID. And here we will add one dummy card number. Then other card information. And I will click on this pay button. Then complete. So after successful payment, it will open the my order page where you can see the order details. Here it is displaying the food details, quantity, total price and the order status is processing. You can see food processing. Now let's see the preview of our admin panel. So let's open the admin panel. Here we have three options, add items, list items and orders. So let's go to orders. You can see the new order that we have just placed on our website. So these are the order information, then delivery address. And here we have the option to change the status of the order. We can click here and select out for delivery. And if I open the web page, refresh this web page, you can see the status has become out for delivery. Like that, you can also change the status as delivered from the admin panel. And now 
the user will see the status delivered. Now again come back to the admin panel. Let's open this list items. Here we have all the food items listed on our web page. So let me delete one of it. Here we have cooked noodles in the last. Let's delete it. So that product has been deleted. If I open the web page, go to home page. Here you can see the last product is missing. Now we can add a new product by using this add items. Here you can upload a product image, then product name, then small description and select the category and price. Then click on add button. So you can see the message here food added. If I open the front end, refresh this website and at the end you can see here we have the food item that we have just added using the admin panel. So this was the project overview. In this video, we are going to use React. So if you are absolute beginner in React, then I will highly recommend you to watch my complete JavaScript course, where I have explained all the advanced JavaScript concepts that are required to learn React.js. I will provide the link in the description. So if you are ready to level up your React.js skills, make sure to smash that like button hit subscribe and let's get started. Right now I am on my desktop screen. Here I will create a folder. So let's add the folder name food del that is for food delivery. Now we will open this folder with the VS code editor. So I will right click here. So more options and open with code. Now our folder is open in VS Code editor. Now here we will open the integrated terminal. Using this terminal we will create our react project. To create the react project we will type npm create wheat latest. After that we have to provide the name of our project. So here we will simply add front end. Here we will select react then select javascript. Now you can see one folder front end has been created. Now we have to install our dependencies. For that we have to navigate to this front end folder. So here we will type cd front end and press enter. Now we are in the front end folder. Here we will type npm install. It will install all our dependencies. So our dependencies has been installed. In this frontend folder you can see node modules folder. After that we will install one package that is react router dom. So here we will type npm install react router dom. So this react router package has been installed. Now we have to run this project. To run this project we will type npm run dev. Now our project is running on this local server. So open this address in the browser. So you can see our project is successfully running in this web browser. So first we have to clear our default react project. For that we will open this src folder and here we have the app.jsx file. So from here we will clear this file and here we will type rafce and here we will get this snippet. If you are not getting this snippet then you have to install one extension. So in this extension you can see I have already installed one extension ES7 React Redux GraphQL React Native Snippet. After installing this, you will get this snippet. So if I type RAFCE and select this, so our export component is ready. Now we will open this app.css file and we will delete it. Now we will open index.css file and here we will clear this file. 
and here we will add some CSS for all the HTML elements. So we will add padding 0, margin 0, box sizing, border box. After that we will add some properties in the body tag. So for this body we will add minimum height 100vh. After that we will add the CSS properties for the anchor tag. So for this A tag we will provide text decoration none, color inherit, So here we have provided some basic properties for our complete project. Now we will open index.html file and here we will replace this title. So in this title tag, let's type footdel. Now we will save this project and we will open the web browser. So our project is clear right now and you can see the title here in the browser footdel now we will create the folder structure for our react project so here we have the src folder we will create a new folder in this src and we will provide the folder name components after that in this src folder, we will create another folder and the folder name will be pages. In this components folder, we will create all the components and in the pages folder, we will create multiple pages for our react project. So first for our project, we will create the navbar. So we will create a new folder in this components folder and the folder name will be navbar. Inside this navbar folder, we will create a new file and the file name will be navbar.jsx. To convert this jsx file into component, we will use rafce. Now for this component, we will create one css file. So we will create a new file in this navbar folder and the file name will be navbar.css. Now we have to import this CSS file in this navbar component. For that, here we will simply type import and provide the path that is dot slash navbar dot CSS. Now first we will mount this navbar component in the app component. So in this app dot JSX file, we will add one class name in this div and the class name is app. And after that here we will mount the navbar component so we will use the opening arrow navbar and here we will get this option navbar just click here and this file will be imported here now close this tag now our navbar component has been added in the app component after that we will open this navbar.jsx file and in this one we will add one class name and the class name is navbar. After that we will insert the assets in our asset folder. So here we have one assets folder. I will provide this assets folder link in the video description. In this assets folder we have the icons and images for our project. So we will copy all these files. And we will open our project folder, open frontend, open src, then assets folder. And here we will paste all the images and icons. After that we will open the VS Code editor. So in this assets folder you can see we have inserted all the images and icons. In this one we have one assets.js file where we have imported all the images and icons and here we have exported it in the object format and the object name is assets so when i want to use that assets here we will type img tag src and in this src we will use the curly braces and here if i use assets it is coming here in this snippet 
and here we will type dot and here we will get all the suggestions that we have exported in this assets.js file. So here if I select assets.logo and save the changes. So on our screen you can see we have the project logo. By organizing our assets like this we can efficiently build our project. Now let me remove this img tag and now we will start building our navigation bar. So in this navigation bar first let's insert one image and the class name is logo and in this src we will use curly braces and here we will insert the assets dot logo. After that we will create one ul tag and the class name will be navbar menu. Inside this ul tag we will create four li tags. So we will type li into four. So in the first list we will add home. In the second one we will add menu. In the third one we will add mobile app. And in the fourth one we will add contact us. After this ul tag we will create one div and the class name will be navbar write. Inside this div first we will insert one img tag and in this src we will use assets dot search icon. After that we will create one div and the class name will be navbar search icon. Inside this div we will insert one image tag and in this src we will provide assets dot basket icon. After that we will create one div and the class name will be dot. After this div we will create one button tag and within this button tag we will add sign in. So our HTML structure for the navbar is ready. Now we will open the web page. So here we have the logo and text and icon in this navbar. Now we will provide the CSS properties. So we will open navbar.css file and here we have the class name navbar. So let's copy this one and place it here. For this navbar we will provide the padding of 20 pixel and 0. Then we will add display that will be flex. Justify content, a space between and align items center. Now we will save the changes. Now you can see in the left side we have the logo, in the middle we have this menu links and in the right side we have the icons. After that we will add some padding for whole project. For that we will open this index.css file and here we will add the CSS properties for this app class name. So here we will type dot app and here we will provide width 80% margin auto. Now we will save the changes. So you can see we have the space in the left and right side. After that we will add the CSS properties for this logo class name. So in this navbar CSS file we will type dot navbar dot logo and here we will provide width 150 pixels. Then save the changes. Now 
our logo is set to 150 pixel. Now we will add the CSS properties for this UL tag and the class name is navbar menu. So we will copy this class name and place it here. For this class name we will provide display flex, list style none. And here we will provide the gap of 20 pixel and the color of these links will be this color code. Then we will define the font size that will be 18 pixel and save the changes. Now we will open the web browser. So here you can see this is our text. Here we will add the custom fonts. For that we will open a new tab and we will search for outfit font. Here we will open this link Google font. Then click on this get font and click on get embed code. And after that we will click on this import and just copy this import statement. Just copy this one and we will paste it in our VS code editor inside this index.css file. So add a space here and paste the link. Add the semicolon at the end. After that here we will provide font family, outfit and save the changes. Now you can see the updated font for our menu text. After that we will add the CSS properties for the right side. So we will copy this class name navbar right and we will paste it here. Here we will add display flex, align item center, then we will provide the gap of 40 pixels. Now the right side alignment is good. Now we will add the CSS properties for this button tag. So here we will type navbar button tag and here we will provide the background transparent font size 16 pixel then we will use the color and this color code then we will create border of 1 pixel solid and here we will provide one color tomato. After that we will add the padding that will be 10 pixel and 30 pixel. After that we will provide the border radius 50 pixel. Then we will use cursor pointer. Now this sign in button is looking good. Now we will add the hover effect on this button. So here we will use this class name navbar. Then button tag colon hover. And here we will add the background color and this color code. Now we will save the changes. So here you can see the hover effect on this button. After that in this button tag we will add the transition property that will be 0 0.3 seconds. Now if I take cursor you can see the background color is changing smoothly. After that we will add the underline effect for these menu items. For that we will open this navbar.jsx file. And here we will create one state variable. To create the state variable we will use const and the state variable name will be menu and the setter function name will be set menu equal to use a state and here we have this option click here and this use a state will be imported from the react.
after that we will initialize the state variable so let's type home so we have created one state variable and we have initialized it with home now on these li tags we will add the dynamic class name so we will add the class name curly braces and here we will add menu and we will compare this menu if our menu is home in that case in this li tag we will provide one class name that is active if our menu is not home in that case we will provide one empty string similarly here we will compare the menu here we will type mobile app and here we will type contact us and for these three list we will add the question mark then active class name then colon and we will provide the empty string after adding this when the state is home this active class name will be applied for this li tag not for the other li tags similarly if the state is menu so in that case the second li tag will get the active class name and other three will not have the active class name after that for this active class name we will add some css properties so open this css file again and here we will type dot navbar dot active here we will provide the padding bottom two pixel then we will provide border bottom that will be two pixel solid and here we will use this color code after that we will save the changes now we will open the web browser so our state is home so you can see underline below this home similarly if i change it let's set menu so you can see underline below this menu now we will add the logic using that when we click on any menu this underline will be moved to that list so for that we will add the on click property for all these li list and here we will pass one add function and in this one we will call the set menu function so in the first li tag set menu we will provide home string in the second one we will provide menu in the third one we will provide mobile app and in the fourth one we will provide contact us now we will save the changes and we will open the web browser so if i click on home this underline is moved to the home if i click on menu you can see the underline on the menu if i click on mobile app you can see underline on mobile app and if i click on contact so our underline effect is working fine now for these li tags we will add the cursor pointer so that when we take cursor over this li tags we will get the cursor pointer so let's open this css file here we will type dot navbar li tag and here we will provide the cursor pointer now you can see the cursor pointer on this menu list after that we will add the css properties for this div where we have added the class name dot we will design this div as a dot that will be visible inside the basket so whenever we will add a product in the basket that dot will be visible if the basket is empty then dot will be hidden for that we will open this navbar.jsx file and copy this class name which is navbar search icon paste this class here and here we will add the property position relative after that here we will add the class name navbar search icon 
then we will provide the class name dot and here we will add the css properties that will be position absolute then we will add the minimum width of 10 pixel minimum height will be 10 pixel then we will add the background color and in this background color we will use tomato then we will define the border radius that will be 5 pixel then we will add the position top minus 8 pixel right minus 8 pixel now save the changes and open the web page so here we have one dot near this basket icon now our navbar component is ready after completing the navigation bar we will open this pages folder and here we will create multiple pages for our project so first we will create the home page so in this pages folder we will create a new folder and the name will be home then we will create a new folder in this pages and the page name will be cart so the folder name we have added cart then we will create one more folder in this pages and the folder name will be place order we will use this home folder to display our home page we will create the cart page to display the cart item on this place order page we will get the information about the user that is user's address and details to place the order now we will create one jsx file in each folder so open a new file in this home folder and the file name will be home.jsx and here we will use rafce and for this page we will create one css file so in this home folder we will create a new file and the file name will be home.css we will import this css file in this home page so we will add import dot slash home dot css now the css file has been imported now we will create a new file in this cart folder and the name will be cart dot jsx here also we will use rafce and in this folder we will create one new file that is cart dot css now in this jsx file we will add import dot slash cart dot css similarly we will add the new file in this place order folder and the file name is place order dot jsx and here we will use rafce here also we will create a new file that will be place order dot css and import this css file in this jsx file so here we will type import dot slash place order dot css so we have added one jsx file and css file in each folder now we will set up the react router to set up the react router first we will open main dot jsx file and here we will remove this react strict mode and we will wrap this app component using the browser router first we will import the browser router so here we will type import curly braces and here we will add browser router from and here we will use react router dom package using this browser router we will wrap this app component so we will add opening arrow browser router and within this we will place this app component now we will get the react router support in the app component now we will open app.jsx file and here we will set up the routes so 
After this navbar, we will create one routes tag. We will add routes. Here we have this option from React Router DOM. Select this one. So this package has been imported automatically. Then close this tag. Within this routes tag, we will create multiple route. So first we will create the route for our home page. Here we will use the route tag that is also from React Router DOM. This route has been imported. Then here we will define the path. So our path will be slash. And here we will use the element property. And in this element, we will provide the home page component. So we will use the opening arrow home and select this one. Then close this tag and close the route tag also. So whenever we will open this slash path, we will get our home page. Similarly, we will set up our cart page. So we will add route path and here we will provide slash cart then element and in this element property we will use the cart page component so we will add opening arrow cart slash closing arrow so this cart has been imported then close this route tag slash closing arrow similarly we will create the route for the place order page. So we will type route. And in this path, we will provide slash order. And here we will provide the element property. And in this element property, we will use place order component. So for all three pages, we have created the route. Now we will start creating our home page. So first in our home page, there will be one header. So in this components folder, we will create a new folder and here we will add the name header. We will use this header component in our home page. So first let's create one file in this header folder that is header.jsx. Here we will use RAFCE. After that, we will create one CSS file for this component. So in this header folder, we will create one new file and the file name will be header.css. Now we will link this CSS file with the JSX file. For that, here we will type import dot slash header dot CSS. After that, here we will add one class name property that will be header and our component has been created. After that we have to mount this component on our home page. So we will open home.jsx file and within this div we will mount our header component. For that we will use the opening arrow header and here we have this header component from our components folder and close this tag. Now this header component has been mounted on our home page. Now we will start building our header. So in this header component, we will add the HTML structure. So in this div, first we will create another div and the class name will be header contents. And in this div, we will create one h2 tag and here we will add one text. Then we will use one paragraph tag. And in this paragraph tag, we will paste this text. So here we have created one h2 tag and one p tag. After this p tag, we will create one button tag and in this button, we will add view menu. So our HTML structure for the header is 
ready now we will open this assets folder and here we have this header image.png so we will copy this file and we will paste it in our public folder right click here and paste this image so in this public folder we have one image that is header image for now save these changes and open the web browser right now our header is looking like this so in this header background we will place one image for that we will open header.css file and here we will add the header class name and here we will provide height that will be 34 vw then we will provide the margin 30 pixel auto then we will provide the background property where we will provide the url for our background image so we will add slash header underscore img dot png after that we will add no repeat property then we will add the background size and we will provide contain then we will add the position relative now save the changes so this header is looking like this after that we will add the css properties for this header contents class name so we will copy this one and place it here here we will set the position absolute display will be flex then flex direction will be column here we will use the align items a start and we will provide the gap of 1.5 vw then we will set the maximum width that will be 50 percent and here we will add the bottom 10 percent left 6 vw then save the changes so this content is aligned in the left bottom over this background image now we will add the css properties for these text so here we will type dot header contents h2 tag here we will use the font weight of 500 then we will use the color white and here we will provide the font size of max 4.5 vw and we will add one more parameter 22 pixel and save the changes and open the web page now our header text is looking good next we will add the css properties for this paragraph text so here we will add dot header contents p tag let's provide the color white font size 1 vw save the changes so our paragraph tag is also looking good now we will provide the css properties for this button so here we will add this class name header contents then button tag for this button we will provide border none color and we will provide this color code then we will provide the font weight that will be 500 then we will provide the padding 1 vw and 2.3 vw then we will use the background color and we will set it as white then we will define the font size and here we will use the max property 1 vw and 13 pixel then we will provide the border radius of 15 pixel this will be border none after that save the changes and we will open the web browser 
So this view menu button is also looking good. After that, when we reload this web page, there is no effect. So here we will add one fade in effect so that these text will be displayed with fade effect. So for that we will open this index.css file and here we will define one fade in keyframe. So let's type keyframes and we will provide the name fade in. After that here we will provide the 0% this opacity will be zero after that at 100 percent we will set the opacity one after that we will open this header.css file and here we have the header contents in this one we will add animation here we will provide the name of our keyframe that is fade in and then we will provide the duration 3 seconds. Then save the changes and we will open the web browser. So when we reload the web page, you can see these text are coming with smooth animation. So our header component is ready. After that, we will create the menu section where we will display the different types of menu. For that we will come back to the VS Code editor and in this components folder we will create a new folder and the folder name will be explore menu. Inside this folder we will create a new file and the file name will be explore menu.jsx. Here we will use RAFCE. After that, we will create one CSS file for this component. So here we will right click and select new file and provide the file name explore menu.css. Now we will import this CSS file in this component. So here we will type import dot slash explore menu.css. To display the items in this menu, in this assets folder, here we have the assets.js file where we have one object. Here we have the images that we have already seen. After that, we have one menu list array. In this array, we have the multiple objects. Each object carries the detail of the menu item like menu name and menu image. So this menu image is imported here. You can see we have imported total 8 menu image. So using this add a list, we will display the menu data in our component. So we will open this explore menu.jsx file and here we will import menu list from the assets folder asset file. So we have imported the menu list. Now we will create the HTML structure for the explored menu component. So first in this div we will add the class name property and we will provide the class name explored menu. After that we will add the ID property. And here also we will add explored menu. Then we will add one h1 tag and here we will add the text. Explore our menu. Then we will create one p tag and in this paragraph text we will add this text. So we have added one sentence here in this p tag. After that, we will add one class name in this p tag and it will be explored menu text. After this p tag, we will create one div and the class name of that div will be explored menu list. Inside this div, 
we will render this menu list using the map method. For that, we will add the curly braces and here we will add menu list dot map and in this one we will pass one addo function in this addo function we will use the return statement and here we will return one div so we will use the parenthesis and in this one we will use one div and we will add a class name for this div that will be explore menu list item in this arrow function we will pass one individual item and index number in this div we will add the key property and here we will simply provide the index in this div we will insert the image tag and in this src we will use item dot menu image so this item is one object where we have the property menu image where we have added the imported image after that we will create one p tag and in this p tag we will use the curly braces and in this curly braces we will provide the item dot menu name after that we will mount this explore menu component in the home.jsx file so after this header we will mount that component that is explore menu now we will open the web browser so here we have this explore our menu then this paragraph text and after that we have the multiple menu items with the menu image and name now we will provide the css properties for this component so first we will add the css properties for this explored menu class name copy this class name open this css file explored menu.css and here we will provide this class name and in this one we will add display flex flex direction column gap of 20 pixel then save the changes and open the web browser so here we have the gap of 20 pixel and we have provided the display flex now we will add the css properties for this title here we will add dot explore menu h1 tag and here we will provide the color property and this color code after that we will define the font weight 500 so we have added the CSS properties for this header tag. Now we will add the CSS properties for this P tag. So here we have added the class name explore menu text. Just copy this one and paste it here. Here we will provide the max width of 60% and the color will be this color code. So this text is displaying in two lines and we have added the color property also. After that we will add the CSS properties for this explore menu list class name. So we will copy this class name and paste it in the CSS file. Here we will provide display flex. Then justify content a space between align item center gap of 30 pixel text align center and in this margin we will add 20 pixel and 0 pixel then we will add the overflow x and we will type scroll save the changes so here we have all these items in a single row and here we have one scroll bar. Now we will hide this scroll bar. So for that we will add dot explore menu list double colon webkit scroll bar 
and here we will provide display none. Then save the changes and open the web page. Now here we don't have the scroll bar. After that we will add the CSS properties for these images. So here we will type dot explore menu list item. Then we will use the img tag. For this image we will define the width. That will be 7.5 VW. Then we will define the min width. That will be 80 pixel. Then we will provide the cursor pointer. Then we will provide the border radius of 50%. Then we will add transition 0.2 seconds. Then save the changes. So we have added the width, cursor and border radius on these images. After that we will add the CSS properties for these text. So here we will add dot explore menu list item and p tag. For this p tag we will provide margin top 10 pixel then we will provide the color this color code then we will define the font size we will provide the max property 1.4 vw and 16 pixel then we will provide the cursor pointer and save the changes and open the web page again now these menu text is big in size and here we have added the cursor pointer. After that we will open this explore menu.jsx file and after this div we will create one hr tag. Now we will provide the CSS properties for this hr tag. So here we will add dot explore menu hr tag. Here we will provide the margin that will be 10 pixel and 0 pixel. Then we will define the height of 2 pixel background color. And here we will use this color code. Then we will define the border none. Now open the web browser and at the end you can see one horizontal line that is coming using the hr tag. So here we have created this explore menu component. After that we will create some functionalities. For that we will come back to the home.jsx file and here we will create one state variable and the name will be category. So let's add category and the setter function name will be set category. equal to use state and initialize it with one string that will be all. So we have created one state variable category and the setter function name is set category. We will pass this in our explore menu component as a prop. So here we will type category equal to curly braces and we will provide the category then we will pass set category equal to curly braces and here we will provide the set category setter function now we can destructure this category state and setter function in the explore menu component so open this explore menu dot jsx file and in this parenthesis we will add curly braces and here we will destructure the category and set category function. So now we have this state and setter function. Now in this div we will add the onclick property and here we will pass one arrow function. 
and here we will call the set category function so here first we will take our previous state and here we will check if the previous state is same as the item dot menu name in that case we will set the state all and if it is not same in that case we will set the state with our menu name so we will add item dot menu name after adding this when i click here in our state it will store salad if i click here it will store rolls in the state using these state we will add one dynamic class name in this image so here we will add the class name property and here we will add the curly braces so if our category is same with the menu name so we will add item dot menu name in that case we will add one class name that will be active and if it is not same in that case we will provide one empty string so basically when we will click here we will add one active class name on this image similarly if i click on this one that active class name will be moved to this image tag so we will add the css properties for this active class name so we will open this explore menu dot css file and here we will add dot explore menu list item dot active class name then we will provide the border and the width will be 4 pixel solid and the color is tomato after that we will add the padding 2 pixels and save the changes now we will open the web browser so if i refresh the web page now we will click on any menu item so here we have this border similarly if i click on this one you can see the border is moved to the second image if i click again it will remove this border so we will use this explore menu component to filter our product so here we have created the navigation bar header and explore menu component after that we will create the food display component where we will display the multiple food items to display the food items first we will set up the context api in our project for that in this src folder we will create a new folder and the folder name will be context in this context folder we will create a new file and we will add the file name store context dot jsx here we will create one context for that we will type export const store context equal to and here we will use create context that we will get from react and in this create context we will provide null so here we have created one context the name is a store context and we have exported it now we will create the store context provider function so here we will type const a store context provider it will be one arrow function so in this one we will pass the props after that here we will create one variable and the name will be context value and it will be one object if i add any element in this object we can access that element in any component using the context here we will add the return statement and here we will use the store context dot provider 
and here we will add the value property and in this one we will simply add context value variable close this tag and within this tag we will provide props dot children so here we have created this context now we have to export this a store context provider so we will type export default store context provider so the store context has been created in this context value we can provide any value or function and we can access that in any function using the context to add the support of this context in our project we will open main.jsx file and in this browser router we will use store context provider tag and in this one we will place this app component we will click on format document so here we have wrapped the app component inside the store context provider and browser router now we have the support of context api in our project now we will open store context.jsx file and here we will mount the food list here in this assets folder we have the assets.js and here we have the variable that stores one array and here in this array we have multiple object each object represents the food details like food id name image price description and category so we will mount this food list in our context so here we will type import curly braces food list from assets and assets so this food list array has been imported from the assets.js file after that in this context value we will provide this food list now using this context we can access the food list array anywhere now we'll create one component and the name will be food display so in this components folder we will create a new folder and we will provide the name food display in this folder we will create a new file that will be food display dot jsx and here we will use the rafce similarly we will create a new file that will be food display dot css now import the css file in this component so we will type import dot slash food display dot css so in this food display component first we will get the food list array using the context api so we will type const curly braces food list is equal to use context and in this use context we will provide the stored context so we will type store context from here select this one now this store context has been imported automatically now in this component we have the food list now we'll create this component so in this div we will add one class name property and here we will provide the class name food display then we will provide one id that will be food display in this div we will create one h2 tag and in this h2 tag we will add the text top this is near you after that we will mount this component on our home page so we will open home.jsx file 
After this explore menu, we will mount the food display component. And in this food display component, we will pass the category state as a prop. So here we will add category is equal to curly braces category. After that, save this file. And now we will open this food display component. And here we will destructure the category. So we will add curly braces category. We will save the changes, open the web browser. So at the bottom, you can see top this is near you. So this food display component has been mounted on our home page. After that, we will display the multiple food item. So let's come back and here we will create one div with the class name food display list. In this div, we will use the curly braces and this food list array. So we will type food list dot map method. In this map method, we will pass one arrow function. And in this arrow function, we will pass the parameter item and index. Then we will use the return statement and we will return one component that will take the food data and it will display that in a card. For that, we will create one more component. So in this component folder, we will create a new folder and the name will be food item. In this folder, we will create a new file that will be food item dot JSX. Here we will use the RAFCE. After that, we will create one CSS file for this component. So we will right click and select new file and add the file name food item dot CSS. Now import the CSS file in this JSX file. So we will type import dot slash food item dot CSS. In this component, we will get the image, price, description, ID of the food as a props from this food display component. So here we will add the D structure. So we will add curly braces, ID, name, price, description, and image. After that, we will come to food display dot JSX file. And after this return, we will mount food item component, then close it. And in this component, we will pass the props. So first we'll pass the key property where we will use the index. After that, we will pass the ID property where we will pass item dot underscore ID. Then we will provide the name. In this one, we will use item dot name. Similarly, we will pass description. And here we will use item dot description. Then we will pass the price property. In this price property, we will pass item dot price. After that, we will pass the image property. And in this one, we will type item dot image. So here we have passed the key ID, name, description, price and image using props. After that, here in this component, we don't have any food item because we have not designed the food item. So in this food item component, we will add one class name in this div. So the class name is food item. And after that, in this div, we'll create one div and the class name will be food item image container. In this div, we will insert one image tag and here we will add the class name property that will be food item image. And in this SRC, we will provide the 
image that we are getting using this props. So we will type image. After that, here we will create another div and the class name will be food item info. So we will type food item info. In this div, we will create one div and the class name will be food item name rating. In this div, we will create one p tag and here we will add the curly braces and we will provide the name that we are getting using props. After this p tag, we will add one image tag and here we will use the assets and from this assets we will add the rating starts. In this div we have added the product name and a star rating. After closing of this div we will add one p tag with the class name food item description. So we have added food item desc and in this div we will add the curly braces and we will add description that we are getting using props. After that we will create one more p tag and here we will add the class name food item price. So we will add food item price and here we will add the dollar sign curly braces and here we will provide the price that we are getting using the props. After that, save the changes and now we will open the web browser. So if I scroll the web page, you can see here we have the food image, title, description, star rating. So here we have total 32 food items. And we are getting this food data from this food list array that we have mapped over this food item component. Now we will add the CSS properties for this food display component. So first we will add this class name food display and paste it in this food display.css file. Here we will add the margin top 30 pixel. Then we will add the CSS properties for this h2 tag. So here we will add dot food display h2 tag and here we will define the font size max property and here we will provide 2 vw and 24 pixel. After that we will define the font weight that will be 600. Now this h2 tag is ready. After that we will add the CSS properties for this food display list class name. So copy this and here we will add the class name food display list. We will provide display grid, grid template columns, repeat, autofill, then we will add minmax. 240 pixel and one fraction. After that, we will add the margin top of 30 pixel, gap 30 pixel, row gap 50 pixel. Now save the changes and open the web page. Now here in each row we have four items and here we have the multiple rows. After that we will add the CSS properties for our food item component. So here we have the food item class name. Just copy this one and we will open food item.css file and we will add this class name here and here we will provide the width. 100% margin auto border radius of 15 pixel 
then we will add the box shadow 0 pixel 0 pixel 10 pixel and one color code after that we will add the transition of 0 0.3 seconds then we will add the animation and it will be fade in duration will be one second now if i reload the web page so these food items are coming with fade animation now we will add the css properties for this image tag so here we have the class name food item image so add this class name here so for this image we will provide width 100 percent and then border radius 15 pixel 15 pixel 0 pixel and 0 pixel save the changes now the card image is looking good after that we will come back to the food item dot jsx file and here we will add the css properties for this food item info class name so copy this class name add it in this css file and here let's add padding 20 pixel so now we have some space around this information text after that here we have this food item name rating so add this class name here and here we will provide display flex justify content space between align item center margin bottom of 10 pixel save the changes now the food name is in the left side and the star rating is in the right side after that we will add the css properties for this p tag where we have added the name of the food item so we will add dot food item name rating space p for this p we will provide font size of 20 pixel then font weight of 500 save the changes and open the web page so the food item name is looking good after that we will add the css properties for this star rating so here we will add dot food item name rating img tag and here we will provide the width 70 pixel save the changes now the star rating is also looking good now we will add the css properties for this description we will open this component file and copy this class name food item description add this class name here and for this one let's add color and this color code then we will add font size 12 pixel save the changes now this description is also looking good next we will add the css properties for this price so let's copy this class name food item price paste it here so for this price let's add the color property and the color is tomato then we will add the font size 22 pixel then we will add font weight 500 then we will add the margin 10 pixel and 0 pixel save the changes now this price is also looking good after that in this food item component we will create one add button using that we can add the food item in our cart 
For that, we will open this foodItem.jsx file and in this component, first we will create one state variable. So let's add const and we will add the name item count. Then we will create the setter function. It is set item count equal to use a state and here we will initialize it with zero. So for all product cart, we will initialize it with zero. Now after this image tag here, we will add the curly braces and here we will check if our food item count is zero. In that case, we will provide one add button and if the count is greater than zero, in that case, we will provide one counter. So here first we will type item count is not zero. In that case, we will use ternary operator. So we will use the question mark. In that case, we will add one image tag. In this image tag, we'll add the src assets dot add icon white. And if it is not equal to zero, in that case, we will return one div with the class name food item counter. In this image tag, we'll add the class name property that is add and we'll add the on click property. And here we will pass one arrow function. And here we will use set item count. First, we will take the previous count. And here we will return previous plus one. And save the changes, come back to the web page. So here we have the add icon and if I click this one, it will disappear because here the state will be changed from the 0 to 1 and when it is 1, it will return the another div. So now we will design this div. So here we will add image tag and here we will use assets dot remove icon red. Then we will add one p tag where we will display the item count. After that, we will display one image tag and here we will use assets dot add icon green. After that, in both images tag we will add the on click property and here we will pass one arrow function here we will add the set item count and in this one we will add previous count and here we will return the previous plus one so this button will remove the count so we will add previous minus one and in this button, we will add previous plus one. Then save the changes and we will open the web page. So if I refresh the web page, here we have this plus icon. If I click here, it is displaying the count one. If I click on green button, it will become two. If I click on this minus, it will become one. And if I click again on the minus, that counter will be zero. And here again, we will see one add button. Now we will add the CSS properties for this food item image container. So just copy this one and open this food item dot CSS file. And here we will paste it. Here we will simply provide position relative after that, we will add the CSS properties for this image tag where the class name is add. So we will add dot food item image container dot add. Here we have to provide the width 35 pixel. 
position absolute bottom of 15 pixel right 15 pixel then we will use the cursor pointer and after that we will add the border radius 50% save the changes and we will open the web browser so here we have this add icon over this food image that is looking good now if I click on this icon it is displaying this counter here so we will add the CSS properties so let's come back and here we have the foodItem.jsx file from here we will copy this class name food item counter just copy this one and paste it in this food item dot css file in this one we will add position absolute bottom 15 pixel right 15 pixel display flex align items center gap of 10 pixel padding of 6 pixel border radius of 50 pixel background color will be white save the changes so here you can see these counter are looking good it is over this image if i click on minus it will become zero if i click on this plus icon it will display this counter and this counter is looking good now we will add the css properties for these image tags so here we will add dot food item counter img tag so for this image we will define the width 30 pixels save the changes now the button size is perfect if i click on minus it will become zero and it will display the plus icon and if i click on plus it will increase the counter we can do the same thing in any other food item so it is working here we have defined this counter value zero using that when we have 32 product it is creating one state variable for each product that is not a best practice to solve this issue we will create one cart item object in our context and we will manage these product cart data using the manage cart functionality so we will come back to store context.jsx file and here we will create one state variable and the name will be cart item so we will add const cart items and the setter function name will be set cart items equal to user state and we will initialize it using the curly braces so here we have created one cart items state after that we will create the functionality for add to cart and remove from cart so first we will add the functionality for add to cart so let's add const add to cart equal to and it will be one arrow function in this parameter we will simply pass the item id first we will check if the user is adding the product first time in the cart in that case we will create one entry so we will add if cart item bracket item id so if the cart items item id is not available in that case we will use set cart items and here we will pass our previous cart data 
and here we will return one object where we will define the item id and the value will be 1 so if the user will add the item first time in the cart then this statement will be executed using that in this object one entry will be created and the key id will be item id and the value will be number of quantity so here we will add the else statement suppose any product item is already available and quantity is one in that case we will increase that so we will add set cart items and here we will pass previous cart data and here we will add this previous and in this previous card data we will modify the item id key previous item id plus one here we will use the triple dot after adding this this add to cart logic has been created similarly we will create the remove from cart so we will add const remove from cart and it will be arrow function here also we will add the item id as a parameter and here we will use set cart items here we will pass the previous cart data and in this previous card data we will set item id previous item id minus 1 so basically what these functions are doing first this if a statement will create a new entry for our food product if that product id is not available in our cart item then only if that product is already available in the cart item then this else condition will increase the value by one and this remove from cart functionality will decrease the value by one so we have created the state cart item add to cart functionality remove from cart functionality now we will pass these three in the context value so here we will add comma cart items then we will pass set cart items then we will pass add to cart functionality then remove from cart functionality now we will access the cart items add to cart remove from cart functionality in our food item component using the context api so in this food item here we will add const curly braces cart items add to cart function name then remove from cart this function name equal to use context and in this one we will simply provide a store context so we will get the access of cart item add to cart and remove from cart after that we will remove this item count and here we will add cart items and in this one we will simply provide the id similarly in this on click we will remove this and we will add add to cart function in this one we have to pass the id similarly here also we will remove it and we will add remove from cart function where we will pass the id here also we will remove it and we will add add to cart function and we will add the id instead of this item count we will add cart items 
and here we will provide the id now this cart items add to cart and remove from cart has been integrated with the food items component save these files and remove this line because we are not using this we can remove this use a state from the importer statement and save the file after that we will open a store context.jsx file and here we will run one use effect where we will pass one arrow function and here we will add this a square bracket and we will add cart items so when the cart items will be updated we will log the cart items state now we will open the web browser we will reload the web page so here if i click on this plus icon it will be added and if i click again it will be increasing it becomes 2 3 and it works on other image also and these data are getting managed at one place at a store context if i click on inspect open this console so here we have multiple objects that is our cart items so when we open this object here we have the food id 1 and the quantity is 3 so this is the food 1 the quantity is 3 if i click again you can see it becomes 4 similarly if i click on the second one you can see in the second product id the quantity is 1 and here we have the three entries that we have added in the cart if i click on the new product so you can see we have the four entries that is product id 1 2 3 4 and in the right side we have the quantities if i reload the web page this will be reset and this cart is empty now if i click this product id 1 quantity becomes 1 if i click again for the product id 1 the quantity is 2 so this store context has this if a statement that is creating the first entry and for modifying the created entry we are using this else statement if i click on this remove so this quantity will become 0 for that here we have used this remove from cart functionality so till now we have created the navbar header component menu selection component and this foot display component now we will add the functionality using that if i click on these icons this food item will be filtered and it will display the food items from the particular category for that we will open this food display dot jsx file in this statement we will add one if a statement in this if a statement condition we will add if our category is all in that case we will get all products or if our category is same as the item dot category in that case we will get the product of the particular category so here we have added category all so if the state is all it will return the complete items and if it is not all then it will display the product of the particular category now we will move this return statement in this if condition so we have added this return statement here in this if statement after that we will open the web browser and reload the web page now it is displaying all the food item right now our food item is not filtered so let's come back here we will add triple equal to this is the comparison operator save the changes 
and if I click on salad here we have the salads all the items are removed if I click on this rolls so here we have products in the rolls category if I click on dessert here we have dessert category food if I click on sandwich cake pure veg noodles so all categories are working fine if I click on rolls here we have only rolls product if I click again it will be deselected and we will get all categories food so our explore menu component and this food display component is perfectly working after that we will create one footer for our project for that we will come back to the VS code editor and here we have the components folder here we will create a new folder and the folder name is footer in this footer folder we will create a new file and the file name will be footer.jsx and here we will use rafce here we will add a class name so the class name is footer now we will create one css file for this footer component so we will right click on the footer folder and add a new file footer.css now import this css file in this component so we will add import dot slash footer.css now we will start adding some elements in this footer so first we will mount this footer component in the app component so open app.jsx file and after closing of this div we will mount the footer component so let's add footer and close it here we are getting one error because we are returning two elements to solve this here we will add the fragment and in this fragments we will insert these elements format document now it is returning only one element now save the changes and we will come back to the footer.jsx file and in this div we will add the html elements for the footer so in this div let's add one id that will be footer after that in this div we will add another div with the class name footer content inside this div we will create three div and the name will be footer content left center and right so let's create the div with the class name footer content left after that another div with the class name footer content right and after this div we will add another div with the class name footer content center move this in the center so first we have the left then center then right we have three div so first we will add the content in the left div so we will add one image tag and here we will use the assets dot logo after that we will create one p tag and in this p tag we will add one dummy text after this p tag we will create one div with the class name footer social icons inside this div we will create three image tags so we will add img into three and in these src we will add curly braces we will use assets dot facebook icon in the second one we will replace the icon it is assets dot twitter icon 
in the third one we will add assets dot linkedin icon then save the changes and we will come back to the web browser at the bottom you can see this is our footer text so now we will come to center div and in this one we have to add one h2 tag where we will add one text company after that we will add one ul tag and in this ul we will create four li tags so let's add li into four so in the first one we will add home in the second li tag we will add about us in the third one we will add delivery and in the fourth one we will add the privacy policy after that we will come to write div in this one we will add one h2 tag where we will add get in touch after that here we will add one ul tag and in this ul tag we will add two li tags so in the first list item we will add one phone number so i am adding one dummy phone number after that in the second li we will add one dummy email id so let me add contact at tomato.com so our three divs are ready footer left center and right after that we will add one hr tag here and after this hr we will add one paragraph tag with the class name footer copyright in this p tag we will add the text this is one copyright text after that save the changes if i open the web browser so at the bottom you can see we have all the elements now we will add the css properties for the footer so first we will add the css properties for this footer class name so just copy this open this footer.css file and here we will paste this class name for this footer we will provide the color this is one color code then we will add the background color so here is the color code for the background then we will add display flex flex direction column align item center gap of 20 pixel padding of 20 pixel and 8 vw then padding from top 80 pixel then save the changes now if i come back to the web page so you can see some changes in this footer layout now we will add the css properties for this footer content class name so let's copy this one add it here for this footer content we will add width 100% display will be grid then grid template column two fraction one fraction and one fraction then we will add the gap of 80 pixel save the changes now you can see the content in three columns after that we will add the css properties for all these three div so let's add dot footer content left comma dot footer content right comma dot footer content center For all three divs, we will add display flex, flex direction column, 
align items start and here we will provide the gap of 20 pixel then save the changes so here we have some gap that is 20 pixel now we will add the css properties for these li tag so let's duplicate it remove these css properties we will add list style none and after this left we will add li similarly here also we will add li and here also we will add li tag after that we will add the margin bottom 10 pixel save the changes so now these dots are removed from this li tag after that we will add the css properties for these titles so let's copy it and paste it again in the left side we don't have any h2 tag so remove it and here we will add h2 and this one also h2 so for this title we will add the color white save the changes now this title text is looking good now we will add the css properties for this social media icons so here we will type dot footer social icons then img tag for this image we will provide the width of 40 pixel then we will provide the margin from the right side that will be 15 pixel save the changes so these footer icons are looking good after that we will add the cursor pointer for these li tags so here let's add a space and we will add cursor pointer save the changes now if i move cursor over these list items we will see the cursor pointer now we will add the css properties for this hr tag that is not visible here so let's add dot footer then hr tag for this hr we will provide width 100 percent height of 2 pixel then margin of 20 pixel and 0 then save the changes so this hr tag is visible after that in this hr tag we will add background color gray and then we will add border none now this hr tag is looking good so here we have one problem after this food item component we don't have any space it is touching the footer content so here we have the footer so in this footer we will add margin top and we will provide 100 pixel so now you can see some space above this footer layout now this footer is also complete next we will add one more component between this footer and this food items that will be mobile app download so let's come back to the vs code editor and in this components folder we'll create a new folder with the name app download and in this folder we will create a new file that will be app download.jsx and here we will use rafce after that we will create one css file so here we will type app download.css now we will import this css file in this component so we will add import dot slash app download dot css now we will mount this component on our home page so after this foot display we will add the app download component 
so we have mounted it here now we will open app download.jsx file and in this div we will add one class name that will be app download and we will add one id that is also app download in this div we will create one p tag and in this p tag we will add one text after adding this text here we will add one br tag using that we can split this paragraph in two lines then we will add one div with the class name app download platforms inside this div we will create two image tag so we will add img into two so in the first image we will use assets dot play store and in the second one we will add assets dot app store now the HTML structure for this app download component is ready let's open the web browser so here we have this text and play store and app store icon now we will add the css properties so first we will add the css properties for this app download class name so copy this one add it here in this app download.css file for this app download class name we will provide the margin auto auto then we will provide margin from the top that is 100 pixel after that we will provide the font size we will use max property 3 vw and 20 pixel then we will add text align center and font weight of 500 right now you can see these text are looking good now we will add the css properties for this class name which is app download platforms copy this one add it here here we will provide display flex justify content center then we will add gap in this gap we will add max 2 vw and 10 pixel then we will add margin from the top 40 pixel save the changes and we will open the web browser so here we have the gap between these play store and app store icon now we will add the css properties for these images so we will add that class name app download platforms then img tag so for this image we will define the width where we will add the max property and here we will provide 30 vw comma 120 pixel after that we will define max width 180 pixel transition 0 0.5 seconds cursor pointer now these images are looking good next we will add the hover effect on these images so duplicate it and at the end we will add colon hover so when we will hover this image we will provide transform scale 1.05 save the changes and if i open the web page now you can see if i move cursor over this image it will increase its size that looks very nice after that our home page is ready where we have created the navigation bar header section explore menu component then we have added the foot display component after that we have created this app download layout then we have created the footer now we will make this website responsive so we will right click and inspect then select this device option so you can see this is how it is 
displaying in the small screen. So we will make it responsive. So let's come back to the code file and we will open navbar.css file. And here we will add the media query. So let's add media max width of 1050 pixel. In this one we will add navbar.logo and we will apply width of 140 pixel. Then we will add dot navbar menu and here we will provide the gap of 20 pixel. After that we will define the font size that will be 17 pixel. Then we will add dot navbar right. Here we will provide the gap of 30 pixel. After that we will add dot navbar right img tag. So for this image we will provide the width of 22 pixel. After that we will add dot navbar right. Then button tag. And for this button we will provide the padding of 8 pixel and 25 pixel. Now we will create one copy of this and paste it again. Here we will reduce the max width. It will be 900 pixel. Here we will add the width 120 pixel and we will provide the gap of 15 pixel, font size of 16 pixel. Here we will provide the gap 20 and the image width will be 20. After that we will add the padding of 7 pixel and 20 pixel. It will be 20 pixel. After that here we will add the font size. So we will set the font size 15 pixel. Save the changes and we will create another copy of this media query. Copy and paste it and here we will add 750 pixel. And here we will remove this logo and we will keep only navbar menu. So in this navbar menu we will provide display none. Save the changes and open the web page again. And you can see it is fully responsive. Now we will make our header section responsive. To make the header section responsive we will come back and we will open header.css file and here we will add the media query. So let's add the media max width 1050 pixel and here we will add the dot header class name. Here we will define the height of 38VW. Then we will add the header contents class name and here we will add the max width of 45%. Then save the changes and let's create a copy of this media query. And here we will set 750 pixel max width. Remove this header. For header contents we will add max width 55%. Then we will add header contents p tag. For this p tag we will add display none. Then we will add header contents button tag. And for this button we will define the padding of 2VW and 4VW. Then save the changes and we will open the web browser. So this is how our header is looking right now. So we will fix it. So let's add the max width of 65% and we will remove this header. Now we will save the changes. Now our header is looking good. You can see if I change the screen size, it looks good in all a screen size. This is how it will display in phone screen. Now this header component is also responsive. Next 
we will make the explode menu component responsive. So we will come back to the VS Code editor and we will open explode menu.css file. Here we will add the media query. So we will add the media max width 1050 pixel. And here we will add dot explode menu text. And we will set the max width 100%. Then we will define the font size that will be 14 pixel. Now this explore menu component is also responsive. This is how it is displaying in a small screen. And we can slide these menu images because we have added the overflow x scroll. Our foot display component is already looking good in a smaller screen. So it is also responsive by default. If I change the screen size, you can see it is completely responsive. This is the app download component. It is also looking good in phone screen. After that, we will make our footer responsive. For that, we will open footer.css file. Here it is. Here we will add the media query. So let's add media max width. And here we will define 750 pixel. And here we will add the class name footer content. Here we will add display flex. Flex direction column. And we will provide the gap of 35 pixel. After that we will add the class name dot footer copyright here we will apply text align center save the changes and we will open the web browser now our footer is also looking good in smaller screen so we have made our website fully responsive now we will add some functionality so that when we will click on the menu it will uh, scroll the web page to the explored menu section when we will click on mobile app it will scroll the web page to the app download section and when we will click on the contact us it will uh, scroll the web page at the footer to add this functionality we will come back to the vs code editor and here we will open navbar.jsx file so in this first li tag, let's remove this li and we will add link tag. We will select this link from react router DOM. And this link tag will be imported from the react router DOM package. After that, in other three li tag, we will replace it with a tag. So remove this li and here we will use the a tag in these a tag we will add the href property and here we will provide has and in the first a tag we will add explore menu id that we have added in this div you can see we have added explored menu in the second one we will provide has app download and in the third one we will provide footer and in this link tag we will add two property and here we will add slash we will save the changes so when we click on menu it will scroll the web page to the menu section if i click on mobile app it will scroll the web page to the mobile app and if i click on contact it will scroll the web page at the bottom. So this is scrolling the web page quickly. So we will convert it into smooth scroll. So we will open the index.css file. And here after this font family, we will add a scroll behavior smooth. We will save the changes and we will open the web page. Now if I click on mobile app 
it scrolls the web page smoothly to the mobile app. Now we have added the smooth scroll effect. Now our home page is completely ready and we have added the functionality on these menu links. After that we will add the login sign up pop up component so that when we will click on this login button it will pop up a login form over this component. To create that we will come back to the VS code editor and in this components folder we will create a new folder with the name login pop up and in this folder we will create a JSX file that is login popup dot JSX. Here we will type RAFCE and for this component we will create one CSS file. So here we will create a new file with the name login popup dot CSS. In this JSX file we will import the CSS file. So we will add import dot slash login popup dot CSS. Now in this div we will provide a class name that will be login popup. So first we will mount this component in the app component. So we will open app.jsx file and to display the login popup first we will create one state variable. So we will type const so login set so login is equal to use state and we will initialize it with false. Now I want to display this on the top. So here before this div we will add one ternary operator and here we will type so login and if this so login is true it means we have to display our component. So we will mount our component that is login popup. Then close this and if this so login is false in that case we will return the fragment. Now we will send this so login in our navigation bar where we can convert it into true or false. So in this nav bar we will pass the props. So we will add set so login is equal to curly braces set so login. Now we will copy it and we will destructure it in the navigation bar component. So here we will add curly braces and paste this set so login. Here we have the button sign in. So we will link this function with this sign in button. So here we will type on click and here we will pass one arrow function and here we will call the set so login and in this one we will pass the data true. We will save the changes. After that we will open login popup.jsx file and here we will add some text login. After that we will save the changes and we will open the web page. So here we don't have any login option. If I click on sign in button you can see one text login at the top left corner. It means our functionality is working. When we click this button it will display the pop-up. After that we will come back to the login pop-up component and we will design this pop-up. So first let's remove this text and here we will add one form tag and the class name will be login popup container. Remove this action and within this form tag we will create one div with the class name login popup title. In this one we will add one h2 tag and here we will display login or sign up state. For that we have to create one state variable. So let's add const 
and the state name will be current state. Set current state is equal to use state and we will initialize it with sign up. And in this S2 tag, we will add the curly braces and here we will provide current state. And if I save the changes, it is displaying sign up that is coming using this state variable. After this S2 tag, we will create one image tag. And in this image src, we will use assets dot cross icon. And after that, here we will add on click property. And here we will pass one arrow function. And here we will use the set so login function that we have created in the app component. So here we have created set so login. So let's copy it and we will pass it using props. Now we will get the access of this function in the login popup component. So we will destructure it here and when we will click on this image which is the cross icon it will close the pop-up for that here we will type set so login and we will add false we will save the changes and we will open the web page so here we have the sign up and then cross icon if i click on the cross icon it will hide that pop-up if i click on sign in button it will display the sign up again after this div we will create another div and here we will add the class name login pop-up input in this day we will add input field and the type will be text here we will add the placeholder where we will add your name and we will set required after this input field we will add one more input field and it will be type email we will add the placeholder your email and it is also required then we will create another input field and the type is password then we will add the placeholder property and we will apply password and we will set it as required after this tip we'll add one button tag in this button tag we will add the curly braces and here we will provide ternary operator so first we will check our current state is sign up in that case we will return one string that will be create account and if the a state is not equal to sign up in that case we will add one string that is login here we will add colon we will save the changes and open the web browser if i click on sign in here we have sign up cross icon your name email and password field and create account right now this state is sign up that's why it is displaying sign up button if I set it as login so here we have the login and we have the button text login after that we have to remove this input field that is your name on the login page so we will hide this input field when the state is login for that here we will add ternary operator so we will check the current state if the current state is equal to login in that case we will return fragment and if the state is not equal to login in that case we will provide this input field so we will move it after this colon save the changes and we will open the web browser so at the time of login we have the email field and password field and after this button tag we will create one div and we will provide one class name for this div 
that is login popup condition in this step we will add one input field and the type will be checkbox and we will set it as required after this input field we will add one p tag and here we will add one text after this div we will create one p tag and in this p tag we will add create a new account question mark and here we will add one span tag and in this span tag we will add click here then we will save the changes so when we are on the login state it will display create a new account click here and when we are on the sign up state for that we will create one more format so we will add p tag already have an account question mark and we will add a span tag and here we will add login here we have to display this paragraph when the state is login and when the state is sign up it will display the second paragraph for that we will use the ternary operator so we will add the curly braces and we will check if the current state is same as login in that case we will provide the first paragraph so we will place it here then we will add the colon and we will provide the second paragraph now in these span tag we will add the on click property and here we will pass one arrow function and here we will call the set current state so in the first one we will set sign up and in the second one we will set login we will save the changes now we will open the web browser so we are on the login and here it is displaying create a new account click here if i click here so it will display sign up page and here we have the name input field and here we have the text already have an account login here if i click on this it will again display the login page now the html structure for this login pop up is ready now we will add the css properties so first we will add the css properties for this login pop up class name so we will copy this one and we will open login popups.css file here we will add this class name and we will provide the position absolute z index 1 width it will be 100% height will be 100% background color and here we will use this color code after that we will add display grid and we will save the changes now you can see the changes in the layout of this login page so now we will come back and here we will copy this class name login popup container and we will paste it here for this one we will add the place self center then we will add the width max property 23 vw and 330 pixel then we will add the color property that will be this color code then we will add the background color white then we will apply display flex flex direction column and we will provide the gap of 25 pixel then we will add padding that will be 25 pixel and 30 pixel then we will add the border radius of 8 pixel font size will be 14 pixel 
and here also we will add animation fade in and duration will be 0.5 seconds we will save the changes and we will open the web page now this container is in the center with the white background if i click on the cross icon it will hide this and if i click on the sign in button it will again display this pop-up if i click on this link it will display the sign up page if i click again it will display the login page now we will add the css properties for this title so we will copy this class name login pop-up title and here we will provide css property display flex justify content a space between align items center and the color will be black we will save the changes now our login text is displaying in the left side and the cross icon is in the right side after that we will add the css properties for this cross icon so we will add dot login pop-up title img tag here we will define width that will be 16 pixel then we will add the cursor pointer we will save the changes now this cross icon is looking good and we have the cursor pointer after that we will add the css properties for this div which is login pop-up inputs so we will copy this one and we will paste it here for this one we will provide display flex flex direction column gap of 20 pixel and we will save the changes now we have the gap between these input fields that is 20 pixel now we will add the css properties for these input field so here we will add dot login pop-up inputs input field here we will provide the outline none border one pixel solid and this color code then we will provide the padding that will be 10 pixel and border radius of 4 pixel now these input fields are also looking good after that we will add the css properties for this button so we will type dot login pop-up container button tag here we will add border none padding of 10 pixel it will be none then border radius of 4 pixel color white then background color tomato then we will define the font size that will be 15 pixel then we will provide the cursor pointer we will save the changes and open the web page so our button is also looking good if i click on login here also it is looking good after that we will add the css properties for this login pop-up condition so we will copy this one and paste it here here we will provide display flex align items start gap of 8 pixel margin top minus 15 pixel we will save the changes now this condition div is also looking good it is aligned side by side now we will add the css properties for this checkbox so let's add the class name login pop-up condition input field and we will provide the margin top 5 pixel now this checkbox and the condition text is aligned properly after that we will add the css properties for this span tag 
login here and click here. So we will type dot login popup p tag span tag. And in this one, we will add the color tomato, font weight 500, and cursor pointer. We will save the changes and we will open the web page. So here you can see the color on this link. So if I click here, it will open the sign up form. So now we have created the login pop up component that is fully functional. If I click on cross icon, it will hide this pop up. And if I click on sign in button, it will display this pop up again. After that, we will create the cart page. To build our cart page, we will open VS Code Editor. And here we will open cart.jsx file that is available in this pages folder and cart folder. So here first we will access our cart items, food list, remove from cart functionality from our context. So here we will type const then curly braces and here we will type cart items food list remove from cart equal to use context and in this one we will provide our store context after that in this div we will add the class name property and here we will type cart. Inside this div, we will create another div and the class name will be cart items. So we will type div dot cart items. And inside this div, we will create another div with the class name cart items title. So we will type div dot cart items title here we will create six paragraph tags so we will type p into six and in the first paragraph tag we will add items in the second one we will add title in the third one we will add price then in the fourth p tag we will add quantity and in the next one we will add total and in the last one we will add remove after closing of this div we will add one br tag and here we will add one hr tag After adding this, save the changes and we will open the web page. So in the routes, we have added slash cart. So if I open this slash cart, so it will open the cart page. Now we have to link this route with our basket icon so that when we will click on this icon, it will open the cart page. So we will open the navbar.jsx file and here we have the img tag so before this img tag we will add a link tag and we will wrap this image tag with this link tag and in this link tag we will add the two property and here we will provide the path that will be slash cart save the changes now if i open our home page to go to home page we have added the route on this link home so we will add this route on the logo also so that when we will open the cart page and click on the logo it will open the home page so we will add the link on this image tag so here we will add link and close this link after this logo image and here we will add the to property and we will provide the path 
slash save the changes and now we are on the cart page and if I click on logo so it will open the home page and if I click on the cart icon it will open the cart page so this route is successfully working after that we will come back to the cart.jsx file and after this hr tag we will use the curly braces and here we will use food list dot map method and here we will pass one arrow function in this parameter we will add the individual item and index number so we will get all the food list one by one from our food items after that we will compare our cart items and food item if that food item is available in this cart item then we will display it in the cart page so for that we will type if and here we will provide the cart items and in this one we will provide the item dot underscore id greater than zero so if our cart items contains one product with this item id in that case we will return one div so we will type return and in this return we will add div and we will provide the class name cart items title and we will add one more class name that will be cart items item we have added two class this class name is same that we have already used so we can use the same format after that we will check this logic so simply we will add one p tag and here we will add curly braces and we will type item dot name we will save the changes and if i open the home page and click on this plus icon to add this product and we will open the cart page so here we have this product name now if i add four products and open the cart page now we have the name of four products it means this if logic is successfully working now remove this p tag and here we will create one structure using that we can display the cart items data so first we will provide one image tag and in this src we will provide item dot image after this image tag we will provide one p tag and in this one we will display the name of our product so we will type item dot name after that we will provide products price so we will type p tag curly braces and we will type item dot price so next we have to display the quantity so we will type p tag curly braces and we will add cart items in this cart items we will provide item dot underscore id so it will return the quantity for this product after that we have to display the total price for that we will use the p tag curly braces and here we will use the item dot price so we will multiply this item price with the number of quantity so we will get the total amount so let's copy this one and here we will type multiply and paste it after that we will create one more p tag and here we have to display one cross icon so simply we will use x and we will save the changes and open the web page so here you can see we have the images and other details in this cart now we will add the css properties for this cart page so let's come back and here we will copy this class name cart paste it here in this cart.css and here we will provide the margin from the top 
that will be 100 pixel after that let's copy this class name cart items title and we will paste it here for this we will add display grid grid template will be columns 1 fraction 1.5 fraction 1 fraction 1 fraction 1 fraction and 0.5 fraction after that we have to provide the align item center then we will set the color then we will change the font size so let's add max property 1 vw and 12 pixel we will save the changes and we will open the web page now you can see the cart items in the grid layout for individual product it is aligned horizontally now we will add the css properties for this image tag so we will open the jsx file and here we have this class name cart items item and we will paste it here here we will provide the margin 10 pixel and 0 pixel then we will provide the color black and save the changes now the color has been updated for this text and we have a space also now we will reduce the size of this image so let's add dot cart items item then img tag for this image we will provide the width of 50 pixel we will save the changes now you can see the size for this icon is good now we will open the vs code editor and after closing of this div we will return one hr tag so we are returning two elements that's why we are getting one error so we will create one div tag and in this div tag we will place this div and hr we will click on format document now we don't have any error now you can see one horizontal line after each product now we will add the css properties for this hr tag so let's open the cart.css file and here we will provide dot cart hr tag and here we will provide the height of one pixel background color and provide this color code then we will provide the border none save the changes now this horizontal line is looking good after that we will open the jsx file and in this p tag we will add the class name property and the class name will be cross now we will open the css file here we will type dot cart items item dot cross and here we will simply provide the cursor pointer we will save the changes now if i move cursor over this x it will become pointer now we will add the functionality on this cross icon so that when we will click here this product will be removed from our cart for that we will open the cart.jsx file and in this p tag we will add the on click property in this one we will pass one arrow function and here we will call the remove from cart function that we have already created and destructured using this context api so in this one we have to provide the item id so let's add item dot underscore id we will save the changes and open the web page so here we have the quantity one for all products if i click on this cross that product will be removed from our cart if i click on the second one this product is also removed similarly we can remove all products let's open the home page and if we add one product four times it means four quantity so you can see the quantity four and if i click on this cross icon it will reduce the quantity it will become three if i click again 
it will become two. If I click again, it will become one. If I click again, it will finally remove the product. Here in front of this price, we will add the dollar sign, add the product. And now you can see the dollar sign in front of this price. In this total also we will add the dollar sign. So here also we will add dollar sign and save the changes. So you can see the dollar sign in front of this price. If I increase the quantity, let's set two for this product, open the cart page. Here you can see the price $12, quantity two, and the individual total price for this product, which is $24. So these add to cart and remove from cart functionality is working fine. After that, we'll create one section where we will display the delivery fee and total price. And in the right side, we will create a section where user can enter one promo code. For that, after closing off this div, we will create another div with the class name cart bottom. And inside this div, we will create another div with the class name cart total. So inside this cart total div, we will add one s2 tag and here we will type cart total. After this h2 tag, we will add one div and in this div, we will add three div and the class name will be cart total details. So let's add div dot cart total details into three. So we have created three div. Inside this div, we will create two p tag which is paragraph tag. So let's add P into two. So in the first one, we will add subtotal. And in the second one, we will add curly braces and simply provide zero. Here also we will add the P tag two times. And we will add delivery fee. Here also, for now, we will add the curly braces 2. And in the third div, we will add the B tag, that is bold tag. And in this one, we will add the total. And we will create one more B tag. And in this one, for now, we will type 0. After this div, we will add one HR tag. And here also, we will add one HR tag. And after this div, we will add one button tag and in this button tag, we will add the text proceed to checkout. Let me move this button from here. So remove it and we will place it after this div. We will save the changes and we will open the web page. So here we have these data on our card page. Now we will add the promo code section on the right side. So after this div, here we will add one more div with the class name cart promo code. Inside this div, we will add one more div. And in this div, we will add the P tag. And here we will add, if you have a promo code, enter it here. After this P tag, we will add one div tag. And in this div tag, we'll add the class name property that will be cart promo code input. Inside this div, we will add one input field. And the type will be text. After that, we will add the placeholder. In this placeholder, we will type promo code. After this input field, we will add one button tag. And the button text will be submit. We will save the changes. And we will open the web page. This is how our cart bottom section is looking right now. So we will add the CSS properties. So first we will add the CSS properties for this class name cart bottom. So open this CSS file and here we will add dot cart bottom. 
For this one, we will provide the margin from the top 80 pixel, display flex, justify content space between gap max property. We will provide the 12 VW and 20 pixel. Then we will add the class name dot cart total and here we will add flex one. Then we will add display flex, flex direction column, gap of 20 pixel. We will save the changes. So in the left side you can see this cart total and in the right side we have the coupon. Now we will add the CSS properties for this cart total details class name. Just copy this one and paste it here. Here we will add display flex, justify content space between and this color code. We will save the changes. Now you can see some changes here. After that we will add the CSS properties for these HR tag. So let's add the class name dot cart total HR tag. Here we will provide the margin that will be 10 pixel and 0 pixel. Then save the changes. So now we have the margin. Next we will add the CSS properties for this button tag. So here we will add dot cart total and button tag. Here we will define border none, color white, background color, tomato, width max property 15VW and 200 pixel. Then we will add the padding that will be 12 pixel and 0 pixel. After that we will define the border radius of 4 pixel. And here we will add cursor pointer. We will save the changes. Now this button is looking good. After that we will add the CSS properties for this promo code section. So let's copy this class name cart promo code and paste it here in this CSS file. For this class we will provide flex1. Save the changes. Now we will add the CSS properties for this p tag. So let's add dot cart promo code p tag. And here we will provide the color property and this color code. After that we will add the CSS properties for this cart promo code input class name. Just copy this one and paste it here. Here we will provide the margin top 10 pixel, display flex, justify content space between, align items center, background color and here we will use this color code. After that we will define the border radius that will be 4 pixel. We will save the changes. Now in the background we have this color. After that we will add the CSS properties for this input field. So here we will type dot cart promo code input and input tag. Here we will add the background transparent, border none, outline none. Padding from the left 10 pixel. Save the changes and we will open the web browser. Now background of our input field is transparent. Now we will add the CSS properties for this button tag. 
so here we will type dot cart promo code input button tag here we will add width max property and we will define 10 vw and 150 pixel then we will provide the padding 12 pixel and 5 pixel then we will add the background color that will be black and the border will be none we will set the color white we will use the border radius of 4 pixel save the changes and we will open the web page now this promo code section is looking good now if i right click and click on inspect so this web page is not responsive in a small screen so we will make it responsive using the media queries so let's come back to the vs code editor and here we will add at the rate media and in the condition we will add the max width 750 pixel here we will add dot cart bottom and in this one we will provide the flex direction column reverse then we will add dot cart promo code and here we will use justify content start then save the changes now open the web page so if i reduce the screen size you can see it is looking good in phone screen if i add any product in the cart page and open the cart page so this is how it is displayed in the phone screen now we have successfully created the cart page and we have made it responsive now we have to create the logic using that our subtotal will be calculated and then it will calculate the total to create that logic we will open a store context.jsx file let's remove this use effect that we were using to check the cart items so let's remove it and here we will create one add a function that will return the cart total so we will type const get total cart amount equal to and it will be one arrow function here we will type let total amount is equal to zero so here we have added one variable with the name total amount and initialized it with zero now we will use the cart items in foreign loop so let's add for and in this loop we will add const item in cart items const item in cart items here we are using for in loop because the cart items is an object and this for loop will iterate over that object and it will provide the items one by one and this item will be the key value of the cart items so first we will type let item info equal to food list dot find method and in this find method we will pass one arrow function where we will get the product and here we will type product dot underscore id and here we will use the comparison and we will type item so if our product id is matching with the item that is the key value of our cart items it means this product is available in the cart in that case we will add total amount and we will add plus is equal to and here we will add item info dot price 
into quantity so this item info dot price will give the price of one product and we will multiply that with the quantity so that we will get the total amount of that product and that will be added in the total amount variable so we will type cart items and in this one we will provide the item using that we will get the quantity of that product after that we have to execute this statement inside one if condition so let's add if cart items and here we will provide item greater than zero so it will be executed only when the quantity is greater than zero so provide this code inside this if a statement let's click on the format document now after this for loop we will get the total amount so we will return this total amount so let's type return total amount now this function is ready that will return the total amount of our cart so we will pass it in this context value we will type get total cart amount we will save the changes and we will open the cart page here first we have to destructure that so let's add get total cart amount after that where we have provided zero in the subtotal here we will provide get total cart amount so here we will provide get total cart amount function in the delivery fee we have added two so we will add this two in the total so we will type plus two and save the changes and open the web page so if i open the home page and if we add this product two quantity and this product one quantity and open the cart page so here you can see for the first product the price is 12 quantity 2 total is 24 for the second product price is 24 quantity 1 and total 24 and by adding 24 24 the subtotal is 48 delivery fee is 2 and the total is 50 that is perfectly working now we will add the dollar sign so it will look like a currency so here just add dollar sign and here also we will add dollar sign and at the total we will add dollar sign now it is looking good now we will use this get total cart amount in our navigation bar using that if the cart value is zero this dot will be hidden if the value is greater than zero then this dot will be visible again so for that we will open navbar.jsx file and here we will type const curly braces get total cart amount equal to use context and in this one we will provide our store context here we will provide the dynamic class name so remove this dot class name we will add the curly braces and we will provide get total cart amount if it is zero in that case we will return empty string and if it is not zero in that case we will return dot class name we will save the changes we will use the comparison triple equal to zero so if the total cart amount is zero in that case we will return empty string and if it is not zero then we will return dot so right now we don't have any dot in the cart icon and if i add any product in the cart this dot will be visible so we have added this functionality also 
After that, we will create one place order page where we can get the address details of our user. For that, we will open the VS Code editor and we will create this place order page. To go to this place order page, we will open the cart.jsx file and here we will use the navigate. So let's type const navigate is equal to use navigate and we will open proceed to checkout button and we will type on click and in this one we will pass one arrow function and here we will use navigate and in this navigate we have to provide the path so we will type slash order here we have added slash order because in this app.jsx file we have defined this route at this route we have placed the element place order component save the changes so if i click on this checkout button it will open the order page now we will start building our place order page so first we will convert this div into form and here we will use the class name property that will be place order after that in this form tag we will create two div that will be place order left and place order right so let's add div dot place order left and after this div let's add another div with the class name place order right first we will create the left side so let's add one p tag with the class name title in this one we will add the delivery information after this p tag we will create one div with the class name multi fields and inside this div we will create two input fields so let's type input into two So the type will be text and in both input tag will add the placeholder property and in the placeholder let's add the first name and in the second one we will add last name. After this div we will create two input fields. and the type will be text and in both we will add the placeholder property so in the first placeholder we will type email address because it is one email address so we will set the type email and here we will write straight after that we will create one copy of this multi field div and place it here and replace this placeholder text it will be city and here we will type state after that again create one copy and here we will add the placeholder zip code and here we will add country after this div we will create one input field and the type will be text and we will add the placeholder and in the placeholder we will type phone so this left side is ready save the changes and we will open the web browser here we have these input fields next we will add the content in the right side so in the right div first we will display the cart total that we have created using this cart.jsx file so from here 
we will copy this div the name is cart total and copy this one and paste it in our order page in this place order page we will paste this div here also we need this get total cart amount function in this component and we will remove this on click property and instead of this proceed to checkout we will add proceed to payment then save the changes and we have to mount this get total cart amount using this context api so let's add const curly braces and in this one we will type get total cart amount equal to use context and here we will provide a store context we will save the changes and we will open the web browser so here we have this cart totals and this delivery information after that we will add the css properties for this place order page so first we will copy this class name place order and paste it here in this place order.css file here we will provide display flex align items start justify content space between gap of 50 pixel margin top 100 pixel we will save the changes and open the web browser so in the left side we have these input fields and in the right side we have the cart totals after that we will add the css properties for this place order left class name so let's copy this one and paste it here here we will define the width 100 percent and we will define the max width of max property where we will provide 30 percent and 500 pixel we will save the changes after that we will add the css properties for this title so let's add dot place order left dot title here we will use the font size 30 pixel font weight of 600 margin bottom of 50 pixel save the changes and we will open the web browser now this title is looking good after that we will add the css properties for these input fields here we will add the class name dot placeholder left then input tag for this input tag we will provide the margin bottom 15 pixel width 100 percent padding of 10 pixel border one pixel solid and one color code then we will add the border radius that will be four pixel and outline color tomato then save the changes now all the input fields are aligned vertically next we will add the css properties for this multi fields class name where we have two input fields so here we will type dot place order left dot multi field and for this one we will provide display flex and gap of 10 pixel just update it it will be multi fields now you can see two input fields are aligned side by side first name last name then city state zip code country and we have the 
large field for the email street and phone number now we will add the css properties for the right side so let's add place order dot right and here we will provide the width of 100 percent then we will provide the max width max property 40 percent and 500 pixel now this right side is also looking good after that we have to add a space in this button so let's add dot place order dot cart total and button tag and here we will provide the margin top 30 pixel save the changes now this order page is looking good so till now we have created our home page where we have the navigation bar this header section this explore menu component then we have the food display component where we have displayed the food items after that we have created this app download component and at the end we have created the footer section and this add button and counter is also working and if i click on menu it will scroll to the menu section if i click on mobile app it will scroll here if i click on contact us it will scroll the web page at the bottom if i click on this cart icon it will open the cart page here on this cart page we have one issue our cart is empty and it is showing delivery fee two dollar so to solve this one we will come back and we will open cart.jsx file and here we have added two remove this one we will add get total cart amount is equal to zero in that case we will simply provide zero and if it is not zero in that case we will set the delivery charge to similarly here also we will check if the get total cart amount is zero in that case we will provide zero and if it is not zero we will provide get total cart amount plus two we will save the changes now we will open the web browser so now it is displaying zero 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 and if i add any product in the cart then it is displaying twelve dollar delivery charge two dollar and total is fourteen dollar next we have to update this logic on this page also for that let's come back and open cart.jsx file just copy these div and open place order.jsx file and paste it here save the changes so here also it is correct so till now in this project we have created the home page cart page place order page and login pop-up component now we have completed the front end next we will move for the back end part so we will come back to the vs code editor and here we will close this front end folder and here we will create a new folder and we will provide the name backend now we will close these files now we will open the terminal and stop this terminal to stop this terminal we will type ctrl c and yes delete these instance now we have to open the terminal in the backend folder so we will right click over this backend folder and click on open in integrated terminal so now our terminal is open and we are in the backend folder now we will create our backend project to create the backend 
we will use the command npm init. Then press enter. Next we have to give the package name so we will keep it backend. Then just click on enter. Version will be default. And in this entry point we will add server.js. Then just click enter for all these options. Now in this backend folder we have one package.json file. Now in this folder we will create a new file and we will add the name server.js. Now we have created the server file. Next we will add all the dependencies that will be helpful to create the backend. So in this terminal we will type npm install and here we will add the dependencies name that we have to install for our backend. So here we will type express then we will add the mongoose that will help us to connect with the database then we will use json web token using this we will create the authentication system after that we will use bycrypt using this we will encrypt the user's data and store in the database after that we will install cores using that we can give the permission to our front end to connect with the back end after that we will add dot env using that we can use the environment variable in our project after that we will install the body parser using this we will parse the data coming through the user then we will use multer using this multer we can create the image store system. Then we will install Stripe. Using that, we will add the payment gateways on the web page. Then we will add the validator. Using this validator package, we will check the password or email ID is valid or not. And after that, we will add Nodemon. Using this package, when we will save our project, the server will be restarted. So we will install all these package. Just press enter. So it will install all these packages. Now all packages has been installed. And here we have the node modules folder. Now if I open package.json file. So here we have all the dependencies by crypt, body parser, cores and all these. Now we will create one script using that we can run the project. So remove this and here we will add one script. So let's add server and when we will run the server we will execute nodemon server.js then save the changes so whenever we will type npm run server in the terminal then it will execute this server.js file let's close this file and now we will open the backend folder and in this backend folder we will create the folder structure for our backend project. So in this backend folder we will create a new folder and we will add the name config. In this one we will store the configuration files like database configuration file. After that we will create one more folder in this backend and the name will be models. In this one we will store the models of our mongodb database after that we will create one more folder and we will provide the name middleware in this one 
we will store all the middlewares. After that, we will create one more folder and the folder name will be controllers. In this controllers folder, we will add the logic for our backend. Next, we will create one more folder and here we will add the name routes. After that, let's create one more folder and let's add the name uploads. In this folder, we will upload all the images uploaded by the user. Now we have created all the folders. After that, we will create a new file and the file name is .env where we will store all the environment variables. Now our folder structure has been created. Next we will open server.js file. Here we will create one basic express server. We will create one server that will be a module type server where we will use ES6 feature. To use the ES6 feature, we will open package.json and here we will declare type and the type will be module. Save the changes and here we will create the basic express server. So first we will import express from express package. Then we will import course from course package. After that we will add one comment and here we will add app config. And here we will initialize our app using the express package. So let's add const app equal to express. After that we will define the port number where our server will be running. So let's add const port equal to and we will use the 4000 port. Then we will add one more comment and let's add middleware. Here we will initialize our middleware. So let's add app.use. First middleware will be express.json. Using this middleware, whenever we will get the request from the fronted to backend, that will be parsed using this JSON. After that, we will add app.use and here we will use course. Using this, we can access the backend from any frontend. So here we have initialized these middleware. After that, we will add app.get method. So the get method is a HTTP method. Using that, we can request the data from the server. So we are using app.get method. There are more other methods like delete, update, post, and they have different uses. We will talk about those later when we will use that. Here we have used the get method. After that, here we have to give the path where we want to run this endpoint. So simply add slash. After that, here we will pass one arrow function. And here we will take the parameter request and response. After that, using this response, we will create one response. So let's add response.send and whatever this text, so whatever text we will write here that will be displayed on this endpoint. So we will add API working. So whenever we will open this endpoint, 
we will get the response API working. After that, we will run the express server. To run the express server, we will use app.listen and in this one, we have to provide the port number. So let's add this port that is 4000 and after that, we have to pass one callback function. So whenever our server will be running, we will display one message in console. So let's add console.log and here we will use the template literal. So let's add the backtick and we will add server started on and we will write http localhost colon and here we will add the port number from the variable so we will add the dollar sign curly braces and we will add the variable name which is port and save the changes so our basic express server has been created where we have created one get method slash endpoint so whenever we will hit this endpoint we will get this message api working to run this server we have to use this script which is server so in this terminal we will type npm run server then press enter So our express server has been started and here we have the message server started on localhost port 4000. So if I open this address in the web browser. So here we have a message API working that we have added here in this get method. So Whenever we hit any URL in the browser, that will be executed as a get method. That's why we are getting this message API working. To test the API, we will not use the browser. We will use one extension which is Thunder Client. In this extension, we will test all our APIs. So we will click on this new request and here we will add this URL and the method type is get and here we will click on send. So here we have this message API working A status 200 OK and here we have the timing. So it is in the 7 milliseconds. So we will use this Thunder client extension to test our APIs. If it is not installed in your VS code, you can go to extensions and you can search and install this extension. After that, we will set the database for the backend. For that, we will use the MongoDB Atlas database. So first we will open the browser and here we will search for MongoDB atlas now we will open this link now click on sign in button we will sign up with google you can use github also so here first we have to create one organization so we'll click on this button create an organization here we have to provide one name, so I will type great stack. After that, we will select this MongoDB Atlas, then click on next button. After that, we'll click on this create organization button. Now our organization has been created. Next, we will click on this new project. And here we have to add one project name. So we'll just add projects. 
then click on the next button again now click on create project now our project has been created now we have to click on database and click on build a database here we will use this m0 free server then we will keep it like this cluster 0 then we will select the provider so i will select google cloud and select your nearest region so i will select mumbai then click on create deployment after that we have to create the username and password so in this username you can write any username i will write great stack and here we have to set one password when you set the password make sure you don't use the at the rate symbol so we will create another secure password without using the at the rate symbol so let's add something then click on create database user so our user has been created then click on choose a connection method driver here we will select mongoose after that we will get this connection string so let's copy this first line now we will open the vs code editor so in this file we will write this text as a comment and we will come back to the browser then click on close so here we have the notification an ip address has been added to the ip address list so close this and open this network access let's open this in this option the IP address is listed we can access the database from this particular IP to give access to all the IP we will click on this button add IP address and here we will type 0, .0, .0. then click on confirm button so here we have added this entry now it will allow us to access the database from anywhere now we will delete the second entry now we can access the database from any ip address now we will open the server.js file and in this config folder we will create a new file and the file name will be db.js in this file we will create the logic using that we can connect with the database so first we will import mongoose from mongoose package after that we will add one arrow function and the name will be connect db it will be one asynchronous arrow function In this function we will add await mongoose dot connect and here we will paste the text that we have copied from the mongodb website so paste it here after that remove this question mark and here we have to add the project name that is food delivery so i have added food del after connecting with database here we will add dot then and in this one we will pass one arrow function and here we will 
console log one message and the message is db connected so here we have used the dot then method where we have called the arrow function and we are doing console log db connected after that we have to export this function so just add the export keyword using that we can access this function in the server.js file open server.js file and after configuring the middleware here we will add one comment and let's add db connection and here we will call connect db function from the config db.js file so this function has been imported from config file and here we will add this parenthesis now save the changes so here we are getting one error to solve this one here we will type config slash db dot js that's it save the changes again now it will restart the server and here we have the message server started on localhost 4000 and db connected so our database has been connected with the express app after that we will create the models using that we can store the products in the database so in this models folder we will create a new file and we will add the name food model dot js here we will import mongoose from the mongoose package after that we will create the schema where we will describe the food model properties so here we will add the const food schema is equal to new mongoose dot schema and in this one we will add one object so in our food data first we will add the name and we will define the type of this name property for that here we will add one object and in this one we will provide the type property and the type will be string and here we will add required true So if we will try to store any data without name that will not get stored because here we have added required true. After that we will add the description property. Here we will define type string required true. After that, we will add the price and the type will be number and required true. After that, we will add the image property where we will store the product image URL. So we will add type string required true and in the food product we will add the category also so let's add category and we will set the type string and it is also required so we will add required true 
So we have created the schema for the food model. So in the food model, we will add the name, description, price, image URL and category. Now using this schema, we will create the model. So let's add const food model equal to mongoose.model and here we will add the model name that will be food and here we have to provide the schema so we will add the food schema now our model has been created but we can create this model only once but when we run this file again it will create the model again to solve this one here we will type mongoose dot models dot food and after that we will add or operator so if this model will be already there it will be used if it is not there then it will create a new model after that we have to export this food model so let's add export default food model save the changes now the food model has been created after that we will create the apis using that we can add the new food item in our database for that we will open this controllers folder and in this folder we will create a new file and the name will be foodcontroller.js in this file first we will import food model models slash food model dot js so this food model has been imported next we will import the file system from and here we are using this fs file system that is pre-built in the node.js after that here we will add one comment and the and the comment is add food item after that here we will add one add function and the name will be add food so we will add const add food equal to and it will be one async add function after that in this parameter we will take request and response after that we have to simply export one object and here we will provide add food function so here we have created one controller function to add food item using this function we will create one route so we will open routes folder and here we will create a new file and the name will be food route dot js in this file first we will import the express from express package after that we will import this add food function that we have created in this food controller dot js file so we will type curly braces add food select it from here and here we have to provide dot js so the function has been imported after that we will import multer using that we will create the image storage system after that we will create one express router for that we will add const and the router name will be food router equal to express dot router so our router has been created using this router we can create the get method post method and many other methods 
so after that here we will export default this food router and we will set up it in the server.js file so save the file and open server.js file and after this db connection here we will add one comment that will be api endpoint so first we will create the api endpoints for the food route so we will type app.use and here we will provide the endpoint address so we will add slash api slash food and here we will provide food router select it from here so it has been imported from the food route.js file now we will save this and we will come back to the food route.js file so here we will create one post request so let's add food router.post and we use the post method to send the data on the server and on the server our data will be processed and after that we will get one response for example when we fill a form that form data will be sent using the post method if i have to upload a file we have to use the post method so in this post method we will add one endpoint address that will be slash add and at this address we will run the add food function that we have imported here so let's add add food to use that api in this endpoint we have to use localhost port 4000 api slash food then slash add endpoint after that here we will create the logic using that the image will be saved in this uploads folder for that here we will add one comment and we will type image storage engine after that here we will create one storage using the multi disk storage method so let's add const storage equal to multi dot disk storage and here we will configure the disk storage so we will add the destination property where we will provide the folder name where i want to store the image so here we will add uploads after that we will add the file name and here we will pass one arrow function where we will add the request file and callback here we will return our callback function where we will provide null and after that here we will use the template literal to rename our file for that we will use the backtick and we will add a unique name for each image for that we will add dollar sign curly braces and to create the timestamp we will add the date dot now using this method our file name will become unique and after that we have to provide one extension so let's add dollar sign curly braces file dot original name so our storage has been created so whenever we will upload one file our timestamp will be added in the file original name and it will create a unique name 
and that file will be stored in this uploads folder. Now we can use this storage configuration. So let's add const upload equal to multer and in this one we will provide one object where we will add a storage and here we will provide the storage that we have created using the disk storage. So this middleware upload has been created. Using that we can store the image in the upload folder. On this route we have to use this middleware. To add this middleware on this route here we will type upload.single and here we will provide the field name that will be image and just add one comma. So here on this food router we have created the post method slash add endpoint where we have used this middleware to upload the image that we have created using the multer package and in this storage configuration we have used this disk storage configuration. Now our post method has been created. Next we will add the logic for this add foot function. So we will open the foot controller.js file and here we will add the logic using that we can store the product data in the database. So first we will add one variable to store the name of the image. So let's add let image file name equal to and here we will use the template literal. So we will add the backtick dollar sign curly braces and here we will add request dot file dot file name. Using this we will store the uploaded file name in this variable. After that we will create a new food using the food model. So we will add const food equal to new food model and in this one we will add the curly braces. To define the food schema we have used name, description, price, image and category. So now we will provide the value for these properties in this food model. So we will add name and it will be request.body.name from the name field. Then we will add the description and we will take the description from request.body.description. Then we will add the price and this will come from request.body.price. Then we need category. So let's add category and here we will provide request.body.category. After that we have to add the image URL. So simply provide this file name, image file name. So whenever we will hit this API, in the body we will send these details and we will access it in the backend using this function. After that, here we will add the try catch block and in this try we will use await food.save. Using this method, this food item will be saved in the database. 
After that, we have to create one response. To create the response, we will use the JSON method. And here we will send one object as a response where we will add success, true. And here we will add the message property where we will add the text food added. If we get any error while saving the food, in that case, this catch block will be executed. So here we will add console.log and here we will display the error. So whenever we will get the error, that error will be displayed in the console. After that, we will add the response using the response.json where we will add success. It will be false because product is not saved. And after that, we will add the message. And here we will simply provide the text error. So if we get any error while saving the product, we will get this error. And if the product is saved, we will get this response. After that, we will save the file. And now let's test this endpoint. So we have created this endpoint at slash API slash food slash add. And here we have used the post method. So when we will save this file, our server will be restarted. And here we have the message DB connected. So now we will open the Thunder client and click on new request. Here we will select post method. And here we will use HTTP localhost port 4000 slash API slash food slash add. After that, in this post method, we have to send some properties. So we will click on the body. Here we will not send the JSON, we will click on this form. And here we will add the field name and value. So as in this food controller, as we have defined in the food controller, in the body name, we will send the name, then in the body description, we will send the description, then price, then category. And in the image, we will send the image. So we will open this request and we will add name. And let's add the name test one. Then we will add description. Here we will add description test. Then we will add the price. We will add the value 10. After that, we need the category. Here we will add the category wedge. After that, we have to send one image also. We will click on files and here we will select one image. So we will select this image and the field name will be image because we have defined it here in the food right upload dot single image. So when we send the image, the field name will be image. So after filling this form, if I click on the send button, here we have the message success true message food added. It means our food item has been successfully added in the database. And with that, our image has been uploaded in this uploads folder. So this is our image and the name has been changed. We have the timestamp and at the end we have the original file name which is foot5. So if I open the web browser, 
click on database then click on browse collections so here we have the food delivery entry and then we have foods model in this foods model we have one entry where you can see the name description price image and category so our api food add endpoint is successfully working now we will see how we can access this image using that we can show the uploaded image on the front end for that let's come back to the server.js file and here at this api endpoints we will create one endpoint app.use and the endpoint address will be slash images and here we will add express dot static and here we will provide the folder name that is uploads after this entry if i save the changes here we have this uploads folder that will be exposed on this endpoint so if i open the web browser and let's copy this image name and here we will type http localhost 4000 slash images slash and we will paste the file name and press enter so here we can see that image so basically what we have done here we have mount this folder at this endpoint if i insert any file in this folder and we can access that file by using this slash images slash file name now our add food item functionality is successfully working using this api we can add new food items in our database after that we will create the list food api endpoint using that we can display all the food items listed in the database for that after this function we will create a new function and the name will be list food so first we will add one comment we will type all food list first we will create one add function and the name will be list food this will be asynchronous add function so we will type async and in the parameter we will type request and response so our function has been created now we will pass this function in this export object so we will add comma and list food after that we will open foodroute.js file and here we will create one get method so we will add foodrouter.get and here we will provide one endpoint name that will be slash list after that here we will provide the list food function that we have created in this food controller.js file so first we will import that file so here we will add comma list food now this function has been imported after that here we will provide list food function so we have created one new endpoint at slash list that will execute the list food and save the file open foodcontroller.js file and here we have to create the logic using that 
वी कैन एक्सेस ऑल दी फूड आइटम एंड सेंड देम एज ए रिस्पॉन्स सो फर्स्ट वी विल एड द ट्राई कैच ब्लॉक इन दिस ट्राई वी विल एड कॉन्स्ट फूड्स इक्वल टू एंड वी विल यूज अ वेट फूड मॉडल यूजिंग दिस मॉडल वी कैन फिच ऑल दी फूड आइटम्स फॉर दैट वी विल एड डॉट फाइंड एंड इन दिस मैथड वी विल सिंपली एड वन एम्प्टी ऑब्जेक्ट इन दिस वेरिएबल वी विल गेट ऑल द डेटा ऑफ द फूड आइटम्स आफ्टर दैट वी विल क्रिएट वन रिस्पॉन्स यूजिंग द जेसन मैथड एंड हेयर वी विल पास वन ऑब्जेक्ट एंड द प्रॉपर्टी विल बी सक्सेस ट्रू एंड हेयर वी विल एड वन मोर प्रॉपर्टी दैट विल बी डेटा एंड इन दिस वन वी विल पास द वेरिएबल सो सिंपली एड फूड्स आफ्टर दैट इफ आई गेट एनी एरर इन दैट केस वी विल एड वन मैसेज इन कंसोल सो वी विल एड कंसोल डॉट लॉग एरर and after that we will create one response also so we will add a response dot json where we will add success false and here we will add the message that will be error we will save the changes after that we will open the thunder client go to last request here we will send this request again so that we will create multiple food items for that we will click on the send button so here we have the response food added we will click again again and this food will be added multiple times if i refresh this so here we have total 5 items in this database now if i open the vs code editor let's close this request and we'll click on new request our new endpoint is mounted at this slash list endpoint so here we will type localhost api food slash list because this is one get method so we'll select get and we don't have to provide anything in body just click on send button and now we have the success true and here we and here we have the data property where we have one array and in this array we have multiple objects each object is representing one food item total we have five food items so this endpoint is successfully working next we will create the endpoint using that we can remove these food item from our database for that here we will add one comment and here we will add remove food item after that here we will create one add a function and the name will be remove food and it will be one async add a function so let's add async request response so we have created this function after that we will pass this function in this export object so just add remove food after that we will open food route.js file and here we will access remove food and using that function we will create a new endpoint so we will create one new post method and here we will pass the endpoint name that is slash remove after that here we will add remove food function 
and save the file. Now we will come back to the foodcontroller.js file in this function. So first we will add the try catch block. In this try block first we have to find the food item that we want to delete. To find the food item here we will add const food equal to await and here we will add the food model dot find y id. So here we have to provide the id as you can see in this data where we have the id that is created automatically using the mongodb. So whenever we will add a new entry one id will be created. So when we need to remove this, we have to pass this id in the body and we will access it in this function. So here we have to provide the request.body.id. Using that, that food item will be stored in this variable. After that we have to delete the image of this food item from the upload folder. So we have added the products five times. So you can see the five images here. So to delete these images here we will type file system dot unlink. And here we have to provide the path of the image. So here we will use the template literal backtick. So our images will be in the uploads folder. So we'll type uploads slash and here we have to provide the name. So we will add the dollar sign curly braces. Then food dot image property. After that we will add one callback function and we will keep it like this. After that this image will be deleted from the folder. After that using this id we have to delete the product data from the mongodb database. For that here we will type await food model dot find y id and delete. And here simply provide request dot body dot id. After that our food data will be deleted from the database and using this line we can delete the image from the folder and this line is used to find the food model using the id. After that we will create one response dot json and here we will add one object where we will add success property that will be true and after that we will add the message and we will add the message food removed. So if this execution fails in that case this catch block will be executed and here we will console log this error. And after that we will create one response using the json method where we will add the success false and we will pass the message and here we will simply add error. Save the changes. Now we will test this API. For that let's open thunder client click on new request and here we will select post method and here we will add localhost port 4000 slash api slash food slash remove and here in this body we have to pass the id of the food item we will send it as a json. 
So we will add the curly braces. Here we will add the ID property. And here we have to provide the ID. So we have multiple objects. Let's copy this ID and paste it here. If I click on the send button, you can see the message success true food removed. So now if I open the web browser, refresh this. So here we have only four food items. It was five. So we have deleted one item. Now we have total four items. Now if I open the file system and in this uploads folder, you can see one image has been deleted. Now we have only four images in this uploads folder. Now let's copy the another ID and delete the product. Let's copy the second ID and paste it here. Then click on send button. We have not copied it. I think that's why we are getting this error. So let me again copy this one and paste it here. Then click on send button. Now you can see the message food removed. Now if I open the web page and refresh it. So now we have three products. Let's copy this another ID and provide it here. Then click on send button. So this product has been removed again. Now this product is also removed. Now we have only two images in the folder. Let's copy the another ID, paste it here. Click on send. Food removed. Now we have only one image in the folder. Let's copy the another ID of the last product, paste it here. Then click on send button. So this food removed is here. Now in this uploads folder, we don't have any image. Open the MongoDB website, refresh it. Now you can see here all the items has been deleted. We have the zero result. Now if I hit this API endpoint, which is localhost API food list that display the food items. Let's click on send. Now in this data, we have one array and in this array, we don't have any data. That is because we have deleted all the food items from the database. So here we have created the APIs to add the food item, display the list of food item and remove the food item. Now using these API, we will create the admin panel. So let's close these files. In this food delivery folder, we will create a new folder and we will add the name admin and we will open this folder in the integrated terminal. So we are in the terminal and we are in the admin folder. So here we will type npm create wheat latest then dot. Then press enter. Here we will select react, then select JavaScript and we will run these commands npm install.
so all dependencies has been installed in this admin folder so you can see all the files has been created in this admin folder now we have to run this admin project so we will type npm run dev and open this address in the browser so you can see the default react project now we will clear this default project for that let's come back and uh, open this src folder and remove this app.css just delete this one then open index.css and clear this file then open app.jsx file clear this file and here we will type rafc we will save the changes after that we will open assets folder and from here we will delete this react logo after that we will open index.html file and here we will rename this title so let's add fooddel admin save the changes now you can see the project is clear and you can see the title in the browser food dell admin now we will start building our admin panel so first we will add the custom font in our admin panel project so we will open the web browser and here we will search for outfit font open this link click on get font get embedded code then click on this at the rate import just copy this line and we will come back to the vs code editor and in this index.css file i will paste this link after that add one semicolon and here we will add the css properties for all the elements so we will add the start and in this one we will add the padding 0 margin 0 then box sizing border box then we will add the font family outfit then we will add the css properties for the body tag here we will provide the minimum height that will be 100 vh then background color and one color code then we will add the css properties for all our links which is in the a tag then we will add the text decoration none color inherit then we will add the CSS properties for the HR tag, it will be border none, height will be 1 pixel and then we will add the background color and one color code. Save the changes. Now we have the outfit font support in our project and we have provided some CSS properties. Now first we will create one component folder in this src folder so let's create a folder within this src the folder name is components now we will insert the assets in this assets folder so here i have one assets folder where i have some icons for the admin panel so we will copy these files and open the project folder go to admin go to src folder and assets folder and paste all these files now we have inserted the assets in this assets folder here we have one assets.js file in this one we have imported all the images then exported all images in one 
object and the object name is assets. Now we will create another folder in this SRC that will be pages and in this pages folder we will create multiple pages. For now, we will stop running this project, we will type control C, yes, then we will install some packages. So first we will install Axios. Using that, we can create the network request like get, post, edit, etc. Then we will install React Toastify. Using that, we can create the Toast notification easily. After that, we will install React Router DOM. Then press enter. So it is installing all these packages. Now our packages has been installed. After that, we will run the project again. For that, we will type npm run dev. Now in this components folder, we will create a new component and its name will be sidebar. So we will create a new folder with the name sidebar. And within this folder, we will create a new file and it will be sidebar.jsx. In this JSX file, we will use RAFCE. And for this component, we will create one CSS file. So within this sidebar folder, we will create a new file with the name sidebar.css. Now we will import this CSS file in this JSX file. For that, we will type import dot slash sidebar.css. And within this components folder, we will create another folder with the name navbar. And in this one, we will create one JSX file and the name is navbar.jsx. Here we will use RFCE. And within this navbar, we will create one new file that is navbar.css. And import this CSS file in this navbar.jsx. So here we have created two components that is sidebar and navbar. Now we will open app.jsx file and within this div we will mount the navbar component and here we will provide one hr tag. After that we will create one div and we will provide the class name app content. Within this div, we will mount the sidebar component and save the changes. Now in this project, we will add the support of React router. So we will open main.jsx file and here we will remove this React strict mode and here we will import browser router from react router dom here we will create the browser router tag and within this tag we will place this app component after that now we have the support of react router in our project now we will open app.jsx file and here we will add the CSS properties for this app content. So we will open index.css file. Here we will add the class name dot app content. Here we will add display flex. We will save the changes. Now we will open navbar.jsx file. In this browser, we don't have anything because we have not created anything for the UI. So we will create the navbar component. So for this div, we will provide a class name property that is navbar. Then we will add two images tag 
so we will add the img into two so in this image tag we will add the class name property and here we will add the class name logo and in this src we will add the curly braces and we will add the image so in this assets.jsx file we have imported all the images so here we will import that assets from double dot slash double dot slash assets folder slash assets file so here we can use assets dot logo similarly in this img we will add the class name property and the class name is profile and in this src we will use curly braces assets dot profile image we will save the changes and we will open the web browser so here we have both images logo and profile image next we will add the css properties for the navbar so we will open navbar.css file here we will add the class name dot navbar and here we will add display flex justify content space between align items center then we will provide the padding 8 pixel and 4 percent we will save the changes so in the left side we have the logo and in the right side we have the profile image after that we will add the css properties for these images here we will add dot navbar dot logo here we will provide the width property that will be max 10 percent and 80 pixel we will save the changes so this logo size is looking perfect after that we will add the css properties for the profile image so we will add the class name dot navbar dot profile and here we will add the width 40 pixel save the changes so you can see these images are looking good after that we will open sidebar.jsx file and for this div we will add a class name property it will be sidebar now we will create one div with the class name sidebar options then we will add one div with the class name sidebar option so we have created sidebar options and in this one we have the sidebar option within this div we will create one image tag and in this image src we will use assets dot add icon and here we will add one p tag where we will add add items now we will create two other copy of this div in the second one we will use the different image so we will add order icon in the third one we will use assets dot order icon in this p tag we will add list items in the third one we will add orders we will save the changes and we will open the web browser so in the left side we have these icons and text now we will add the css properties so we will open sidebar.css file and here first we will add the css properties for the sidebar class name here we will provide the width 18 percent mean height 100 vh border 1.5 pixel solid 
and one color code. Then we will add the border top, it will be 0 and save the changes. So here we have the layout of our sidebar. After that we will add the CSS properties for this class name sidebar options. So let's copy this one and here add this class name. Here we have to provide padding from the top it will be 50 pixel then padding from the left 20% display flex flex direction column and gap of 20 pixel we will save the changes so this is how it is displaying right now now we will add the css properties for this sidebar option class name so just copy this one and add it here in this css file here we will provide display flex align items center gap will be 12 pixel then we will add the border property it will be one pixel solid and here we will provide this color code after that we will add the border from the right side it will be zero then we will add the padding 8 pixel and 10 pixel then we will add the border radius it will be 3 pixel 0 pixel 0 pixel and 3 pixel then we will add the cursor pointer let's save the changes and we will open the web page so now these items are looking good next we have to add the css properties in the sidebar here we will add the font size let's add the max property 1 vw and 10 pixel let's save the changes then we will add the media query so that this component will be responsive so here we will add condition max width 900 pixel and here we will use the class name dot sidebar option then p tag and we will make it none so we will hide it so just add display none now let's inspect this web page when i reduce the size of this web page these p tag are removed we can only see the icon now we will set up the react route for that we will open pages folder and here we will create three pages to add the product to display the list of product and to display the order so here we will create a new folder with the name add now in this pages folder we will create another folder with the name list then we will add one more folder in this pages folder and the name will be orders now within these three folders we will create one jsx file and one css file so within this add folder we will add one file add.jsx here we will add the rafce now in this add folder we will add a css file so it will be add.css now import this css file in this jsx file so we will add import dot slash add dot css we will save the changes similarly we will add the new file in this list folder it will be list dot jsx here we will use rafce then we will add the new file in this list folder it will be list.css and import this css file in this jsx file then we will create a jsx file in this orders folder it will be orders.jsx use rafce then we will create the css file in this orders folder so we will select new file and the file name is order.css here we will import the css file 
orders.css. Now save the changes. So here we have created three folders within this pages folder and in all three folders we have created one JSX file and CSS file. Now we will set up the routes in this app.jsx file. So after this sidebar we will create routes tag. Click here routes from react router dump. So it will be imported from component. So it will be imported automatically in this component. Now within this routes tag we will create multiple route. So first we will create route tag. Here we will provide the path slash add and at this path we will add the element and here we will mount the add component. Close this then close this route tag. We have to import the route tag so let's add here. So let's add it here route. So we have created one route and the path is slash add and in this one we have mounted the add component. Now just copy and paste it again for two times. We will change the path. It will be list and here we will mount the list component. Similarly here we will add path orders and here we will mount the orders component. So these components has been imported automatically in this file and here we have set up the route. Now we will open sidebar.jsx file and within these div where the name is sidebar option we will convert this div we will use nav link tag that is coming from react router dom we have selected nav link and it has been imported from the react router dom package now here we will add two property here we will provide slash add we have provided this add path now we will update the second div it will be nav link here also we will add the two property and we will provide slash list. Now for the third one we will replace the tag it will be nav link. Here we will provide two property and we will provide slash orders. We will save the changes. Now if I come to the browser and click on this add items. Here we are on the slash add path. If I click on second one, we are on the slash list. If I click on orders, we are on the slash orders page. So here you can see the slash orders slash add slash list, but it is not visible on these list items. Now we will add the logic so that when we will click on anyone that will become red. So here we have used the nav link. So if I inspect the web page, let's click on this tab and when we have clicked here in this anchor tag, we have one active class because here we are using nav link tag. So when we go to another route, a new class name active will be added in the nav link. If I go to the third one, so in the third one, you can see the active class name and it has been removed from other two. Now we will add the CSS properties for this active class name. For that we will open sidebar.css file and here we will add dot sidebar option dot active. So when the active class name is present. In that case we will add the background color and this color code. Then we will add the border color. Here we will use this color code. We will save the changes and we will open the web browser. Now if I click on add item. So this tab is highlighted. If I click on the second one it is highlighted. 
If I click on the third one, you can see it is highlighted with this color. And the route is also changing. Now if I go to pages folder and add .jsx file and here if I add the text add save the changes in this list we will add the list save the changes and in the orders.jsx file we will add the text orders save the changes when I click on add items it is displaying add if I click on list items it is displaying list if I click on orders it is displaying orders so this router is successfully working now we will remove these text Now we'll create the add page. Using that, we can add a new product in the MongoDB database. So first, in this div, we will add the class name property and here we will provide the class name add. After that, here we will create one form tag. And in this form tag, we will remove this action. And here we will add the class name. And the class name is flex call after that now we will create one div where the class name is add image upload so let's add dot add image upload with this class name we will add one more class name that will be flex call within this div we will create one p tag and here we will add the text upload image after that here we will add the label tag and here we will add HTML for image and in this label tag we will add one image tag in this SRC we will add assets dot upload area after that we will add the input tag and the type will be file and the ID will be image then we will hide it so we will use hidden and we will set it required after this div we will add one more div here we will add the class name add product name Within this div, with this class name, we will add one more class name, flex call. And here we will add a paragraph tag. The name will be product name. After that, we will add the input field. And the type will be text. Then we will add the name property. It will be name. Then we will add the placeholder property. So just add type here then we will add the another div with the class name add product description with this class name we will add flex call and here we will add the p tag where we will add the product description After this p tag, we will create one text area. Here we will add the name description. We will remove this id and column property and we will provide the row 6. After that we will add the placeholder property and here we will add write content here we will set it as required we have added the text area after this div we will add one another div with the class name add category price so just add the text add category price within this div we will add one more div here we will add the class name add category 
With this add category, we will add the class name flex call. And in this div, we will add the p tag. Where we will add the product category. After this p tag, we will create one select button. So just use the select tag. The name will be category. Remove this id. In this select tab, we will add 8 options tab. So just add option into 8. And in this value, we will add the same text that will be option text. So we will add the select. Here we will add the roles in the text and value. In the third one, let's add desert. After that, here we will add sandwich. Then we will add cake. In the next one, we will add pure wedge. Then we will add pasta. And in the last one, we will add noodles. After that, after closing of this div, we will add another div and here we will add the class name add price. With this class name, we will add one more class name flex call. And within this div, we will add one p tag. And here we will add the text product price. After this p tag, we will add one input tag. And the type will be number. Then we will add the name property, it will be price. And here we will add the placeholder property and we will add dollar twenty. After this div, we will add one button tag. And we will add the button text add. And within this button tag, we will add the type that will be submit. Then we will add the class name property. It will be add button. We will save the changes and we will open the web browser. If I go to add items option. So here we have these image upload area, product name, description, collect category select option then product price, then add button. Now we will add the CSS properties. So we will open add.css file. And first we will add the CSS properties for the add class name. Here we will define the width, it will be 70%, margin left, max, here we will use 5VW and 25 pixel. Then we will add the margin from the top that will be 50 pixel. Then we will add the color and this color code. Then we will define the font size. It will be 60 pixel. We will save the changes. Now we have the space on the top and left side and the text color has been updated. After that we will add the CSS properties for this form tag. So in the CSS file we will add dot add then form tag. Here we will add the gap of 20 pixel. Then we will add the CSS properties for this flex call. We will use this flex call in multiple components. So we will add this CSS in the index.css file. So open index.css file. Here we will add this class name. Let's add display flex. Flex direction column. Gap of 10 pixel. Save the changes and we will open the web browser.
After that, we will open add.jsx file and we will add the CSS properties for this img tag that is in this class name add image upload. So just copy this class name, open add.css file, paste it here. Then we will add the img tag and for this image we will define the width it will be 120 pixel. So this image size is 120 pixel. After that we will add the CSS properties for this class name add product name add product description. Just copy this one and paste it here add product name comma dot add product description. Here we will provide the width max property 40% or 280 pixel. We will save the changes. So on these div we have defined the width. Now we will add the padding on these input field and text area. So let's add dot add product name a space input field comma dot add product description text area and here we will provide the padding 10 pixel. We will save the changes. Now here we have the padding of 10 pixel within this input field and text area. So it is looking good. After that, we will add the CSS properties for this class name add category price. So let's copy this. Paste it here. Here we will add display flex. gap of 30 pixels save the changes now this product correct now this product category and product price are aligned side by side now we will add the css properties for this select button and input field for the price so just come back we will add dot add category price then select tag comma dot add category price input field and here we will provide the max width 120 pixel padding of 10 pixel we will save the changes now this product price input field and product category select menu is looking good after that we will add the css properties for this add button so we will add the class name dot add button here we will define the width. Here we will define the maximum width 120 pixel, border none, padding, padding 10 pixel, background color, black, color white, cursor pointer. We will save the changes. So this add button is looking good. Now this add items page is looking good. We have completed the UI. Now we will add the functionality. So now we will store this image for that we will create one state variable. So we will open add.jsx file and here we will create one state variable and the name will be image. So just add const image and the setter function name will be set image equal to use state and initialize it with value false after that we will open this after that we will come here in this input field here we will add the on change property we will pass one arrow function and in this arrow function, we will pass the event and here we will use set image 
setter function and here we will provide e dot target dot files index number zero we will save the changes and we will open the browser if i click on this image it will open the image selection window and if i select any image so we have selected the image but we have not displayed the preview of that image to create the preview let's come back to the vs code editor and within this src we will add ternary operator so here we will check if we have any image available in that case we will display that image if this image is not available in that case we will display the image from this assets dot upload area so after this question mark we will use this image state and create one url so for that we will add url dot create object url and here we will provide this image state we will save the changes and we will open the web browser so now this image preview is displayed here if i click again and select the other image so that image preview is displayed here now this image is getting stored in this state variable after that we have to create one object where we will store the product name description product category and price for that here we will create one more state variable and the name will be data so just add const data then setter function name will be set data equal to use state and we will initialize it with one object where we will add the name property we will set it as empty string then we will add the description property it is also one empty string then we will add the price here also we will add the empty string then we will have the category here we will add the salad so that whenever we will reload the web page our default category will be salad because it is the first option so we have added the default category salad after that we will come to this input field which is in the add product name div so we will convert this input field in the controlled input field it means when we change anything in this input field that will be updated in this state variable for that first we have to create one on change handler function so here we will add const on change handler it will be one arrow function in this one we will pass the event so that on which input field we will update that event will be added in this function parameter so from this event we have to find the event name and value so just add const name is equal to event dot target dot name then we will add the const value so it will extract the value so value equal to event dot target dot value so we have extracted the name and value from this event after that here we will add set data we are using this set data setter function here we will pass the previous data and we will use this parenthesis and we will use the curly braces here we will take our previous data 
and here we will provide field name it will be name and we will update the value with the new value that we will get from the event so we have created the on change handler function now in this input field we will add on change property and here simply provide the on change handler function after that here we will add the value property and to save the product name we will use this field so we will provide data dot name now let's copy this on change and paste it in this text area here we will add the value property that will be data dot description after that in this select option we will paste that on change and uh, after this input field here also we will add on change on change handler we will add the value property and in this value we will use data dot price so for each field we have added the on change property we will save this file and to check this whether our data is getting updated we will create one use effect and here we will pass one arrow function and here we will add the square bracket and we will add the state name that is data so whenever our data will be updated this function will be executed here we will add the console log so let's add console.log and just provide the data we will save the changes and we will open the console tab so when i refresh the web page in this object we have the name price description these are empty and we have the category salad if i add something in this name wedge this so whenever i am updating a letter in this input field at that time this on change handler function is getting executed and it is updating the data in this state variable and when it is getting updated it is printing the data in the console so in the last one you can see the name wedge this in the name that we have provided here if i add something in this text area eat tasty food open the last object so in the description we have eat tasty food if i update the category here we have the updated category which is cake if i update the price if i open this one here we have the price 20 wedge this eat tasty food and the category cake so all these fields are getting updated successfully now let's remove this use effect we have already checked it so we have removed it let's remove this use effect import we will save the changes when i select the image it is updating this image state and other data is saved in this data state variable so we have all the data of this form now we can do the api call to make the api call here we will create one on submit handler function so just add const on submit handler and it will be one async arrow function we will pass the event here we have created the function now in this form we will add on submit is equal to and we will provide the on submit handler function then save the changes now if i click on the add button here we have this tooltip message fill out this field so let's select the image add the data 
then click on the add button this page is getting reloaded to prevent this reload let's come back and in this on submit handler just add event dot prevent default if i save the changes and select any image add any text add any price click on add button now it is not reloading the web page and this function will be executed now we have to insert all these form data which is the image and these title description price category in one form data so first we will create one form data so just add const form data equal to new form data so we have created the form data now we have to insert all the data one by one in this one for that let's add form data dot append and here we will provide the field name so we will provide the name and it will be data dot name similarly let's copy this one paste it again here we will add the description and for this description field name we will add data dot description then we will paste it again here we will add the price and we will provide data dot price we have stored this price as a string and we have defined the price as a number in the backend so we have to convert this value in the number so we will add this bracket and here we will use number now this number now this string will be converted into number now we will paste it again and here we will define category field name and in this category we will add data dot category and after that we will add form data dot append and here we will add the field name image and in this field name we will send image state so we have provided name description price category and image in this form data next we have to send this form data on our endpoint so our backend is running at port number 4000 so let's press ctrl c so that it will stop this backend now we will run this backend again so simply add npm run server make sure you are running this npm run server in this backend folder so whenever you have to run the backend you have to open the backend folder which is here select open in integrated terminal then only run npm run server command so now our server has been started here we have the message db connected now we will do the api call to call the api we will use the axios so just add const response here we will create the variable response where we will store the response from the server equal to await and here we will use the axios so first we have to import the axios so let's add import axios from and here we will use axios package now after this await we will add axios dot post method because we have created the add api using the post method that's why we are using axios dot post and after that we have to add the url so within this add we have to create one variable it will be const url and in this url we will save the url so our url is http colon 
स्लैश स्लैश लोकल होस्ट पोर्ट फोर थाउजेंड सो दिस इज दी यू आर एल विल एट दी सेमी कॉलन एंड हेयर वी विल कम टू एक्सियोज डॉट पोस्ट एंड वी विल एट दी टेम्पलेट लिटरल सो लेट्स एट बैक टिक एंड आफ्टर दैट वी विल एट दी डॉलर साइन कर लिबर एसेज यू आर एल एंड हेयर वी विल एट दी स्लैश ए पी आई स्लैश फूड स्लैश एड सो दिस इज द एंड पॉइंट वेयर वी विल अपलोड द प्रोडक्ट आफ्टर दैट we have to send the form data so simply add form data so that all the field data will be sent after that this form data will be added in the database and this image will be stored in the backend folder after that we have to check our response is success or false so here we will add if response dot data dot success if the response is success then we will add the statement for this if condition that will be executed if it will be false it means the food item is not added in the database in that case we will add one else statement so if the response is success in that case we have to reset these field value for that here we will use this object just copy this and in this if statement we will add set data and paste this one so the data will be reset after that here we will add set image false so that image will be reset we will save the changes and we will open the web browser if i add any image then we will add the product name then we will add the description let's select the desert price 10 click on add button so you can see the form has been reset and it will be reset when the response is success it means our data has been added successfully in the database so let's open the mongodb database click on this refresh button now in this database we have added one product which is food one description is tasty food price is 10 and this is the image file name this is the category so let's try to access this image copy this image file name here we will add local host 4000 images and paste the image file name press enter so now our image is open it means the image is successfully saved in our folder now if i open the vs code editor and if i open backend folder here we have the uploads folder and in this uploads folder we have the image let's close this folder so this add item function is successfully working now we have to add the notification using that we will get one notification about the product added successfully for that we will search toastify and we will open react toastify here we have different type of notifications so here I scroll down and just copy these two lines and open the vs code editor we will open app.jsx file and paste these two lines here after that after this div we have to mount the toast container and close this one remove this toast so here we need this toast container and this css file 
save the changes and open add.css file and in this if statement after this set image here we will call the toast that we will get from the react toastify so we will type toast.success and here we will provide one message and that will be displayed on the web page so just add a response dot data dot message where we have added the food added message in the backend response so we will save the changes and we will open the web browser so if i add any product image then we will add the product name food to then we will add the description healthy food we will select the category pure veg then we will add the price 10 click on the add button so here we have one toastify notification food added so this react toastify is successfully working similarly if i get any error in that case we will display one toast error so let's add toast dot error and here we will use response dot data dot message so whenever we will get any error in that case in the notification we will get one error message we will save the changes so if there will be any error we will get one toast notification with red color error message after this we will create the component list items where we will display the food items that is available in the database we will display that as a list for that we will open the vs code editor and here let's close these files let's open list.jsx file first we have to store all the data from the database into one state variable so we will create one state variable with the name list and the setter function name will be set list equal to use state and initialize it with one empty array after that we will create one fetch list function so we will type const fetch list equal to and it will be one async arrow function here we will add api call so let's add const response is equal to await then we will add the axios first we have to import this axios from axios after that we will add dot get method and here we have to provide the url so let's create one variable const url equal to http colon slash slash localhost port 4000 after that here in this get method we will use the template literal so let's add the backtick dollar sign curly braces url and in this url we will append slash api slash food slash list so when we hit this api link we will get the response with the food items data so here we will add one if statement and here we will check the response dot data dot success if this is true it means the data has been loaded in the response variable in that case we will load those data in the state variable so we will add set list 
then response dot data dot data so our response data will be saved in the list variable if we don't get any data in that case we'll add else and uh, here we'll add toast dot error and simply so one error message so we have to import the toast also so we will type import toast from react toastify so this fetch list function has been created after that we have to run this function whenever the web page is loaded so we will use the use effect and pass one add function and here we will add one empty add a in this add function we will call the fetch list function so whenever this component will be loaded in that case this function will be executed once to check this whether we are getting the response here we will add console log response dot data then save the changes open the web page let's click on inspect and open console tab and when we will load this page here we have one object where we have the success true and here we have the data add a where we have two items which is food 1 and food 2 so these data is available now we have to display these food data in the list item page so let's come back and in this div we will add the class name property and we will add the class name list then we will add one more class name which is add then we will add flex call here we will add the paragraph tag and we will add the text all foods list save the changes so here we have the all foods list after that we will create one div with the class name list table in this div we will create one more div with the class name list table format with this class name we will add title class name in this one we will create 5 b tag so let's add b into 5 in the first one we will add the image in the second one we will add name in the third one we will add the category then we will add the price and in the fifth one we will add the action save the changes so here we have the image name category price and action after this div we will add one curly braces and here we will add list state and on this one we will add the map method here we will pass one add o function in this parameter we will pass individual item and we will pass the index number and here we will return one format where we will display the data so we will create one div and in this one we will add the key property and here we have to add index after that we will add the class name property that will be list table format in this div first we will add the image tag and in this src we will use template literal so we will add the backtick where we will add the dollar sign curly braces url and then we will add slash images and here we will add item dot image that will be the image name then we will add the p tag and here we will add curly braces item dot name after this p tag we will add one more p tag where we will add the curly braces provide item dot category 
After that, we will add one more p tag. Here we will add curly braces, and we will display price. So we will add item dot price. Here we will add dollar sign also. After that, we will add the p tag, and we will simply add x. Save the changes, and we will open the web page. So we have added two items. So these two items are displayed here where we have the product image name category price and this cross icon after that we will add the css properties for this list item page so first we will open this list.css file and here we will add the css properties for dot list table format here we have used this list table format and the same class name is used here list table format so let's add the css properties display grid grid template columns 0.5 fraction 2 fraction 1 fraction 1 fraction and 0 0.5 fraction after that we will add the align item center gap will be 10 pixel padding 12 pixel 15 pixel then we'll add the border one pixel solid and this color code after that we will add the font size 13 pixel we will save the changes and we will open the web page so here here these items are displayed in the horizontal line now we'll add the css properties for this title class so let's add dot list table format dot title and here we will add the background color and this color code save the changes so you can see this background color in this title after that we will add the css properties for these images so we will type dot list table format img tag and here we will define width 50 pixel save the changes now these items are looking good after that we will add the media query so that these components will be responsive so we will add the media screen we will add the condition max width 600 pixel and here we will add dot list table format grid template columns one fraction three fraction and one fraction after that we will add the gap of 15 pixel then we will add dot list table format title here we will add display none we will save the changes and if i open this web page below 600 pixel now this is how this food item is displayed and this add item is already looking good in phone screen now we will add the css properties for this cross icon so let's open list.jsx file and in this p tag we will add class name property cursor we will define the css properties for this cursor in this index.css file so just add dot cursor cursor pointer now if i move cursor over this cross icon we have the cursor pointer effect now this list item is ready next we have to add the logic for this cross so that when we'll click on this one that item will be removed from the database for that let's open list.jsx file and here we'll create one arrow function and the function name will be remove food it will be one asynchronous arrow function so let's add async here we will pass the food id then we have to link this function with this p tag so here we will add on click and here we will pass one arrow function and we will call this remove food function 
in this one we have to provide the item dot id if i inspect the web page go to console and in this data you can see we have the id which is underscore id so we have to provide this id in the function so here we'll add item dot underscore id we will save the changes and we will check whether we are getting the id in this function so just add console.log food id and remove this previous console log save the changes now if i open the web browser refresh the web page open the console tab and click on cross icon so here it is displaying the id for this food item if i click on the second one now it is displaying the id of the second food item so we are getting the food id now remove this one and here we will do the api call so let's add const response equal to await and here we will use the axios dot post method because we have created the remove food api using the post method here we have to provide the template literal so let's add backtick dollar sign curly braces url and here we will add slash api slash food slash remove after that we have to pass one object where we will define id that will be food id using that this food will be removed from the database after that we have to update the ui with the new data so once we have removed this first one that will be removed from the database after that again we have to fetch this data and display the new data for that here we will add await fetch list and run this function again save the changes and we will open the web page so from here we will remove the food one so let's click on the first cross that food one has been removed and if i refresh the database you can see the food one has been removed now we have only food two this remove action is successfully working after that here also we will add one toast notification so that the user will see the item has been deleted so let's add if and we will add response dot data dot success if the success is true it means the item is successfully removed from the database so in that case we will add one toast notification so let's add toast dot success and here we will provide response dot data dot message after that we will add the else statement also and here we will add toast notification and the type will be error and here we will display error save the changes now let's open the web browser now if i click on this cross icon that food item has been removed and here we have one notification food removed so now we have successfully created the add items and list items component now we will upload all products one by one with the image name category in the database so here we have uploaded all 32 items using this admin panel after that now we will come back to the vs code editor and here we have defined the url in two places in the list.jsx file and add.jsx file now we will remove these url and we will define the url at one place where it will be in the app.jsx file so in this app.jsx file we will add const url equal to http colon slash slash localhost port 4000 after that in these elements 
we will pass the props url equal to url so here we have passed this url as a props in add page list page and orders page now open add.jsx file and here we will simply destructure that so just add url and remove this url save the changes now open this app.jsx file save the changes now open list.jsx file destructure the url and remove this const url save the changes now if i open the list items still you can see all the products if i go to add items let's add one more item we will add the name test test here we will set the price click on add now in this list item you can see test if i click on the delete this will be removed now we have defined the url only one place which is app.jsx file now we will close the admin panel let's switch to another terminal and close this admin panel control c and y now delete this instance now we have only one terminal where the backend is running now close these files now we will open the backend folder here we have created the food controller logic using that we can add the food list the food and remove the food next we will create the user authentication system so that we can allow user to log in or register on the web page for that first we will create one user controller.js file so we will create a new file and the name will be user controller.js so we have created user controller.js file now we will come to routes in this routes we will create new file user route dot js so we have created two files user controller where we will create the login and sign up logic after that we have created this user route dot js file where we will create multiple route after that we will open models folder and here we will create a new file and the file name will be user model where we will define the model of our user so first we will create the user model for that we will import mongoose from mongoose package after that we will define one schema for our user so let's add const user schema equal to new mongoose dot schema and in this one we will add one object and here we will define the properties that will be in the model so here we'll add the name property and next we'll define the type so the type will be string then we will add the required true after that we will add the email property where we will save the user's email and the type will be string and the required will be true with that we will add one more property that will be unique we will set it true suppose one email id is already used to create an account we cannot create another account with that email id because we have added unique true after that we will add password property and the type will be string and this is also required true after that here we have to create one cart data where we will manage the user's cart and the type will be object and 
by default the cart will be one empty object here we will add comma and we will add minimize false if we don't add this false in that case this cart data will not be created because we have not provided any data here that's why we have added minimize false so that this cart data entry will be created without any data then we will add const user model equal to mongoose dot model dot user after that we will add the or operator and here we will add mongoose dot model and here we will add user user schema so if the model is already created that model will be used if the model is not created it will create the model after that we will add export default and we will export this user model so this user model has been successfully created after that we will add the code in the user controller.js file so here first we will import the user model after that we will import jwt from json web token package after that we will import by crypt from by crypt package after that we will import validator from and here we will import it from validator package so here we have imported the user model so let's add user model dot js file so we have imported the user model then jwt using that we will create the authentication then we have added the by crypt then we have added the validator after that we will create two functions the first one will be login user so let's add the comment and we will add login user and here we will create one asynchronous arrow function the name will be login user so just add const login user equal to async and here we will pass the request and response after that here we will add one more function and the name will be register user so we will add one comment register user and after that we will add one asynchronous arrow function with the name register user so just add const register user equal to asynchronous function and we will pass request and response so we have created two functions login user register user after that we have to export one object where we will add login user and register user after that we will open user route dot js file and here we will import express from express package then we will import login user function and register user function and here we will add user controller dot js after that we will create one router using the express router so we will add const user router equal to express dot router after that we need the data of the user like email id and password to create the user so here we have to create one post method so we'll add user router dot post method and first we'll create one endpoint that will be slash register and here we will provide registered user function after that we'll create one more post method where we will add the endpoint login and here we will add login user method after that we have to simply export default this user router 
Now we will set up this user router in this server.js file. So here in this API endpoints we will add app.use and here we will set up the endpoint slash API slash user and here we will provide user router select it from here so this user router will be imported now we will save this file now let's open user controller.js file and first we will create the logic using that we can allow user to register on the website so first we have to destructure that name email and password from the request body so just add const curly braces name password email equal to request dot body so in these variables our name password and email will be stored after that we will add the try and catch block so in the try block first we will check if any user exists with this email if any user is already available with this email id we will generate one response so just add const exist equal to await and here we will use the user model dot find one method and here we will add curly braces and we will provide email so if this email is available for any account then that account will be stored in this variable and here we will add one if statement and we will pass exists and if any email id is available in that case we will return one response dot json and in this response we will add one object where we will add success property we will set it as false because we have not created the account it was already available in the database then we will add the message so in the message we will add user already exists After that here we will add one comment so that anyone can understand why we have written this logic. So we are adding this comment checking is user already exist. After that here we will add one more comment and we will validate the email format and a strong password. So here we will add validating email format and a strong password so here first we will add the if statement and we will type not validator dot is email and here we will provide users email so it will check if the user's email is a valid email or not if it is not valid in that case we will generate one response so we will add return response.json and just copy this object and paste it here so the success will be false and in the message we will provide please enter a valid email So if the email is not valid in that case it will generate this response where the success is false and the message is please enter a valid email. If this statement is not running it means the email is valid. After that we will check our password length is greater than 8 digit or not. If it is less than 8 digit in that case we will generate one response where we will add the success false and we will add the message please enter a strong password 
So again, we'll add one if statement where we will add the condition password dot length is less than eight. If the password is less than eight, in that case, we'll return response dot json. And here we will add one object. So the success will be false. And here we will add the message. Please enter a strong password. If the password is not strong, it will display this message. After that, if this if a statement is not executed, it means the email is valid and password is also valid. In that case, we will create one account. So before creating the account, we will encrypt this password. To encrypt the password, we will use the bycrypt package. So here we will add one comment and we will add hashing user password. Here we will type const salt equal to await by crypt dot gen salt and here we will add the number between 5 to 15. So as higher number we will put it will create the strongest password according to that number. So here we will simply add 10. We can set this range from 5 to 15. If we will set 15, it will take time to encrypt the password. After that, we will create the encrypted password using this salt. So we will add const has password equal to await. And here we will add bycrypt dot has. Here we have to provide the password and the salt so that this password will be hashed and it will be saved in the hashed password variable. So first we have to provide the user's password. Then we have to provide this salt that we have created here. Now the password has been hashed. After that we have to create a new user using the name, email and has password. For that we will add const new user equal to new and we will add the user model. In this user model we have defined the name email password and here we have the cart data that will be by default one empty object. So here we will provide the name email and password. So here we will add one object in this one first we will provide the name that will be name we will get this name from request dot body after that we will provide the email so let's add email and here also we will add the email that we will get from this request dot body after that we will provide the password and in this password, we will not use the user's password. We will use this hashed password. So we will add colon hashed password. After that, this new user will be created. Then we have to save this user in the database. To save the user, we will type await new user dot save method so that this user will be saved in the database after that we need the reference of this user so just add const user equal to await new user dot save so after saving this data we will store that user in this user variable after that we will create one token and we will send that token using the response to the user to create the token let's come here and here we will create one function that is create token so just add const create token and in this token we need the 
user's ID that will be self generated in the MongoDB database. After that, here we will return JWT dot sign and here we will provide one object where it will store the ID and here we have to provide one salt using that our data will be encrypted. For that in the backend folder in the dot env file open this file and here we will add JWT secret and here we will store one string. We will type random has secret. So we have used one random string in this JWT secret. Now we can use it in this JWT sign. So now we need the env support in our server file. So open server.js file and here we will import dot env slash config. After importing this, this env file will be included in our project. After that open this and here we will add process dot env dot jwt secret. Let's update it jwt secret. Now this env file variable will be inserted here. So here we have taken the user's id then we have used this user id as a data and we have generated one token then we have returned this token using this function. Now let's come back and here we have created the user now we have to take the user's id and generate one token so we will add const token equal to create token we are using that function that we have created and in this one we have to send the user's id that we will get from user dot underscore id after that this token will be generated now we will send this token as a response so here we will add response dot json here we will add one object where we will add the key success true after that we will send this token in this process if we get any error in that case we will execute this catch block so we will add console.log and we will display that error after that we will add one response also so let's add response.json where we will add success false and we will generate the message this is error then save the changes. So we have created the API to create the user. To use this registered user API we have to go to slash register endpoint. Here also we will add one slash. So we will get this slash register endpoint after this slash API slash user. So now we will test this API. So we will open the thunder client and here we will create a new request and here we will add the post method and here we will add the endpoint. So it will be localhost port 4000 slash API slash user slash register. After that in this body we have to provide the users data. So in this JSON we will send the user's name and in this name we will add greatest stack. After that we will send the user's email. So we will add the email address. So here we will add user dot greatest stack at gmail.com. After that we will add one password. So here we will add password and in this password we will simply add one weak password. So we have added the five digit password and if I click on the send button. So here we have the message success false please enter a strong password. 
we are getting this message because we have added a password which is less than eight digit if i set the password to eight digit and in this email we will remove this at the rate then click on the send so here we have the message please enter a valid email so our password is correct but this email is not in the correct format that's why we are getting success false message please enter a valid email now let's correct this email and click on the send button now we have the message success true and the token has been generated now if i click on this button again so here we have the message user already exist because we have already created the user with this email id now we cannot create a new account using this email id now the user registered api is successfully working now we will create the api using that our registered user can log in so let's come back to the user controller.js file and here we will come to the login user function and to login the user we need the user's email id and password from the request body so here we'll add const email and password equal to and we will get it from the request dot body after that we will include one try and catch block so first we will check whether one user is available with this email id for that we will add const user equal to await and here we will add user model dot find one method and here we will add curly braces and email by using this if any account is available then that user account will be stored in this user variable after that we will check whether we got any user or not for that we will add if and in this condition we will add not user if we don't have any user in that case this if statement will be executed so when this if statement will be executed we will generate one response that we didn't get any user so just add response dot json and here we will set one object so the success will be false and here we will add the message where we will type the text user does not exist so if any user is not available with that email id then this message will be displayed if we are getting the user in that case we will match the user's password with the stored password in the database so here we will add const is match equal to await and here we will add the bycrypt package so bycrypt dot compare here we have to pass two arguments that is user's password and the password stored in the database so here we will pass the password that user will enter while login to the website after that we will pass the password stored in the database so we will add user dot password if these password match this is match will be true if it is not matching this will be false so after that we will add one if statement and here we will add not is match so if this value is false in that case we will execute this if block so we will add return response with the json method and here we will pass success false and after that we will add the message and in the message we will add invalid credentials so if the password is not matching in that case we will get this response if the password is matching in that case we will generate one token for that 
here we will add const token equal to create token and here we will send the user's id so we'll add user dot underscore id using that this token will be generated and we will send this token as a response so we'll add response dot json and we'll add success true and we'll send the token also in this process if i get any error in that case this catch block will be executed so we'll add console dot log and that error and we will generate one response also so let's add response dot json and we'll add the success false and here we will add the message and we'll type error so now the logic for this user login has been created save the changes now this server will be restarted again now we will open the thunder client we will click on new request so our method is post and here we will add the url localhost port 4000 slash api slash user slash login then go to body and in this body we will send the email id and password so we will add the email and in this email we will add the email that we have used to create the account so let's copy this one and paste it here so when we click on the send button so here we have the success true and here we have a token so this login api is successfully working if i send the wrong password then click on send button here it is displaying success false and in the message we have invalid credentials if i use the correct password and change the email id and click on send button then you can see the message success false and in the message we have the user does not exist so this login api is perfectly working now we can allow user to log in and create account on the web page using these api now let's come back to the web browser now in this database we have the users collection let's open this one and here we have the users data so the user name is greatest tag then we have the users email and this is the users password that we have hashed using the bycrypt so if the database got hacked or database got leaked then users password will be fully protected because we have saved the hashed password instead of the original password and here we have the cart data which is one object and in this object we don't have any data so this api is perfectly working now we have to integrate this login and sign up api with the front end so let's close all these files and we will open front end folder this backend server is already running we will keep it running now in this front end folder we will right click and select open in integrated terminal so we are in the terminal and we are in the front end folder we can switch the back end terminal or front end terminal now in this front end terminal we will type npm run dev command so that it will start the front end so let's open this in the web browser so this front end is open after that we will open the vs code editor so we will open the components folder then login popup then login popup.jsx file now we will create the state variable where we will save the user's name email and password so just add const in this const we will add the data then setter function name will be set data equal to use state 
and we will initialize it with one object where we will add the name that will be one string then we will add the email it is also one string then we will add the password and it is also string after that we will create one on change handler that will take the data from the input field and save it in the state variable so we will add the const on change handler equal to and this will be one arrow function and in this arrow function we will pass the event from this event we will extract the name and value so let's add const name equal to event dot target dot name then we'll create one more variable and the name will be value here we will add event dot target and let's update this trget target dot value so here we have extracted the name and value from this event now we will set this value in the state variable for that here we will add set data and here we will pass the previous data here we will add the bracket curly braces and in the previous data we will change the name field and we will update it with the updated value after that we have to link this on change handler with the input fields so in this input field we will add the name and uh, here we will add name and here we will add the on change property and we will add on change handler and here we will add the value property in this value property we will add data dot name so here we have added the name then on change handler then value is equal to data dot name after that we will come to second input field here we will add the name property and the name will be email after that we will add the on change handler so we will add the on change property on change handler function then we will add the value property and here we will add the data dot email similarly in this input field we will add name property that will be password then we will add on change property and in this on change property we will add the on change handler function and here we will add the value that will be data dot password we will save the changes now when we will make any changes in the input field this data will be updated to verify this one we will run one use effect so let's add use effect and in this one we will pass the arrow function and here we will add a square bracket and we will add data so whenever the data will be updated this function will be executed so in this function we will add console.log and we will display the data save the changes and we will open the web browser now click on this sign in button and we will open the console tab also and if i type something in this email field email at the rate gmail.com so when we are updating the letters it is updating the data in the console you can see email at the rate gmail in the last one so this email input field is updating the data 
if I type something in the password, you can see it is also updating the data. So here you can see the password 1234567 Now in the signup field, we have the name input field also. If I type something in this name input field, greatest tag. In this data, you can see we have the name greatest tag. So these handler for the input field is perfectly working. Now we will come back to the VS Code editor and remove this use effect. Remove this use effect from here also. Now save the changes. After that, we will open context folder, then open a store context.jsx file. Here we will define one variable. So just add const URL is equal to, and here we have to set the backend URL that is HTTP colon slash slash localhost colon 4000. Now we will pass this variable in the context value so that we can access this URL in any component. So save the changes. Now come back to the login popup.jsx file. Here we have to fetch the URL using the context API. So let's add const curly braces URL equal to use context and here we will provide the stored context. Select it from here. So this stored context will be imported here. Now we can use this URL for the login component. So for user login, we will create one function that will be on login. So just add one arrow function and the name will be on login. So just add const on login equal to this will be one asynchronous arrow function. So we will add async. Here we will pass the event. Then we will create one arrow function. Now we will link this function with the form tag. So here we will simply add on submit. And here we will pass on login function. Now in this button tag, we will add type that will be submit. We will save the changes. Now we will open the web browser. So here, if I click on this sign in and if I add any value, then click on login. Here we have to check this one, then click on login. Now this page is getting reloaded. To fix this one, let's come back and here we will add event dot prevent default. After that, we will save the changes. Now open the web browser again, click on sign in and enter the email ID and password. Then click on login by selecting this checkbox. Now this web page is not reloading. Now we will come back to the VS code editor. And here we will add the logic using that we can call the APIs to call the API. We need the Axios support in the front end. For that, we will install the Axios package. So, to install the Axios, first we will stop the front end by using Control C and Y. Then we will add npm install Axios. Then press enter. Now the Axios package has been installed. Now again run the project using npm run dev. So now our project is running. Now we will do the API call in this on login function. So we will create one instance of this URL. So here we will add let new URL is equal to URL. So we have created one copy of the URL. Now we will add one if statement. In this if statement, first we will check 
if our current state is login in that case in this new url we will append our login api that is slash api slash user slash login if the state is not login in this case the state is sign up so here we will add new url in the else condition and here we will append slash api slash user slash register so the current state is login then the new url will be the login api if the current state is not login then the new url will be registered api after that we will call the api for that we will add const response equal to await and here we will add the axios package so first we will import the axios so just add import axios from axios after that here we will add axios dot and our login and register api is created using the post method so here we will add the post and in this one we will add new url and here we will set the data state so this api will work in both login and register if the state is login it will hit the login api if the state is sign up it will hit the register api after that we will get one response so here we will add if and we will add one condition response dot data dot success so if the response dot data dot success is true it means we are logged in or we have registered so we will get one token so to save the token we will use one state variable where we will save the token so let's open store context dot jsx file and here we will create one state variable and the name will be token so we will add const token and the setter function name will be set token and here we will add equal to use state and we will initialize it with one empty string now we will pass this token and set token using the context value so here we will add token and set token now save this file and we will come back to the login popup dot jsx file and here after this url we will access the set token function so when the api will response with the success true here we will add set token response dot data dot token so we will save the token using this set token function after that we will save this token in local storage so we will add local storage dot set item and here we will provide the key name token and in the value we will add response dot data dot token after that we will be successfully logged in after that we will use this set so login function and it will hide the login page for that here we will add set so login and we will provide false so that this login page will be hidden after that we will add one else statement this else statement will be executed when the response data dot success will be false so here we will add alert and in this alert we will add response dot data dot message we will save the changes and open the web browser we will click on sign in and then click on create a new account here we will create a new account so we will add the name greatest stack 
in the email we will add test1 at the rate great stack dot dev and in the password we will add one two three four five six seven eight then we will select this checkbox and click on create account now we are successfully logged in now if i inspect the web page and go to application local storage and in this local storage here we have one token where you can see this token so the token has been generated successfully and we have stored it in the local storage now if i go to mongodb refresh this and here we have the second entry where we have the name great stack then we have one email test1 at greatstack.dev and this is our password now we can create a new account from our front end now we will add the logic using that when we are logged in this sign in button will be removed and here we will get one profile icon for that we will come back to the vs code editor we will come to navbar.jsx here in this get total cart amount after this we will add token and set token function now after this div we will add one ternary operator and here we will check if the token is not available in that case we will provide this button that will be sign in button so here we will add question mark and after this question mark we will provide this button after that here we will add the colon and here we will create one div if the token is not available we will get this button if the token is available it will display this div this button will be hidden so in this div we will add the class name property that will be navbar profile after that here we will add one image tag so we will add the img src and in this src we will add assets dot profile icon after that we will create one ul tag and we will provide the class name nav profile drop down in this ul tag we will add one li tag and after this li tag we will insert one hr tag and after this hr tag again insert one li tag so we have added two li tag and one hr tag in these li tag we will insert one image and in this src we will use assets dot bag icon and in the second one we will add assets dot logout icon after closing of this image tag we will add one p tag and in this one we will add orders similarly in the second li we will add one p tag and here we will add logout now we will save the changes and open the web browser now you can see here it is displaying the user icon, bag icon, logout icon because we are logged in. We have the token available. That's why it is visible. Now we will add the CSS properties for this navbar profile. So we will come back to the navbar.css file and here we will add dot navbar profile. And in this one, we will add position relative. After that, we will add the CSS properties for this nav profile dropdown. So we will copy this one and we will come back to the navbar.css file and paste it here. Here we will provide the position 
absolute display none write 0 z index 1 now we will save the changes and open the web page so here we have only profile icon now if i hover on this profile icon still we don't have any drop down so we will create that drop down so let's come back we will add dot navbar profile hover if we will take cursor over this profile icon then in this nav profile drop down we will add display flex then we will add the flex direction column and we will provide the gap of 10 pixel after that we will add the background color that will be this color code after that we will add the padding 12 pixel and 25 pixel then we will add the border radius that is 4 pixel and here we will add the border 1 pixel solid and this color after that we will add the outline property this will be 2 pixel solid and white then we will add the list style none so that it will remove the bullet points from the li tag now open the web browser now if i hover on this icon here we have the li tags with orders and logout so this drop down is working next we will add the css properties for these li tag so here we will type dot nav profile drop down li tag and here we will add display flex align item center gap we will provide 10 pixel and cursor pointer after that save the changes so now if i hover we have these li tags next we will add the css properties for these small icons so here we will type dot nav profile drop down img tag and we will set the width 20 pixel we will save the changes now open the web browser now if i take cursor over this icon this drop down is looking good next we will add the hover effect for these p tag so just come back we will add dot navbar profile drop down then we will add the li tag and here we will add the hovered and here we will add the color and this color code then save the changes and open the web browser now if i hover on this one and hover on these li tag the text color is changing that is looking good now we will add the functionality on this logout option so we will come back to the vs code editor close this navbar.css file now come back to the navbar.jsx here we will create one add of function and the name will be logout so we will add const logout equal to and this will be one arrow function so first when we will click on the logout we will execute this function so in this li tag where we have added the text logout we will add on click property and in this one we will pass the logout function and save the changes so whenever we will click on this it will execute this logout function for logout we have to remove the token so we will remove the token from the local storage so just add local storage dot remove item and here we have to provide the key name that is token after that we will add set token from the token state we will remove the token it will be empty string after that when the user will be logged out 
we will send them to the home page. To send the user on the home page, we will use use navigate hook. So we will add const navigate is equal to use navigate. And here we will use this navigate. So just add navigate and we will provide the path of the home page that is slash. We will save the changes and we will open the web browser. Now if I hover on this one and click on logout. Now the user has been logged out and here we have the sign in button. If I inspect the web page, go to application. In the local storage, you can see we don't have any token. So now this logout functionality is perfectly working. Now if I again sign in, and click on this login button, we are logged in on our web page and we have the token. Now if I reload the web page, we are logged out. Now we will fix this error so that when we will reload the web page, we will not get logged out. So let's come back to the VS Code editor and we will open store context.jsx file. Here we will add the logic using that the local storage data will be saved in the token state when we will refresh the web page. So let's come back and here we will add use effect and in this one we will pass one arrow function and here we will add the square bracket. In this function we will add one if statement and here we will add for the local storage. So we will add local storage dot get item with the key name token. If this entry is there, then we will execute this if block. And here we will add set token. And here also we will provide this token from this local storage. So if the local storage have the token, then we will set that token in this token state. So that when we will reload the web page, we will not get logged out. Let's come back to the web page and if I reload the web page, still we are logged in because the token state is getting updated with the data from the local storage. Now if I click on logout, now we are logged out. It will remove the token from the local storage. Now we have successfully integrated the login functionality in our food delivery app. After that, here we have these data. These data are coming from the assets file. Now we will get this data from the database. For that, let's come back and we will come to store context.jsx file. Here, first we will create one state variable with the name food list. So let's add const food list and we will add the setter function name set food list is equal to use state and initialize it with empty array. So we have created food list. Now we can remove this imported food list. We will save the changes. Now in this food list we don't have any item if I go to front end. So here we don't have any item because we have not added the data in this array. Now we will create a function using that we can load the food items in this state from the database. So we will load these food items. So we will come back to the VS Code editor. Here we will create one arrow function and the name will be fetch food list. So we will add const fetch food list equal to and it will be one async arrow function.
and here we will call the API. So we will add const response equal to await and here we will use the axios dot get method because we have created the food list API using the get method. That's why we are using axios dot get and here we will add the URL and in this one we will append slash API slash food slash list. When we will hit this API, we will get all the food items. After that, we will add set food list and in this one we will provide this response dot data dot data. Now we will run this function whenever the web page is loaded. Now in this use effect, we will add this after this if a statement. So here we will add one async function that will be load data. So just add async function and write the name load data. And in this one, we will add await and here we will call this fetch food list function that we have created here. So we can cut this if statement and add it after this statement. Now we have to call this function which is load data. So here we will call this. Just add load data. Now we can save the changes and we will open the web browser. If I reload the web page, here we have all the items but we don't have the image of the food item. To solve this one, we will come back to the food item dot JSX. And here, first we will get the URL. So just add URL. So we will get the URL from the context. After that, in this image SRC, here we will add URL plus and here we will add the slash images slash and in this one we will append this image URL. So save the changes and open the web browser. Now we have all the food items image. These images are coming from the backend. If I open this image in the new tab, so you can see the URL localhost 4000 slash images and the image name as we have defined here url slash images slash image name now let's check our functionality if i click on this one and go to cart in this cart we have this data in the cart page we have to update the image so we will come back to the pages folder and open cart.jsx file and here we have the image src so we have to use the url here so first we will get the url from the context api and here we will add url plus and here we will add slash images slash then we will add item dot image that is the image name we will save the changes and open the web browser so here also the image has been uploaded. Now if I open the home page and add more items, open the cart page. Now in this cart page, all the data is displayed perfectly. If I click on this cross icon, these data will be removed. Till now we have integrated the login and registered API and we have integrated the food list that we are getting from the backend. After that, if I add these products in the cart and refresh the web page, these items will be removed. So we will add the logic using that if we add any item in the cart, the data will be saved in the database. For that, first we have to create the APIs. Using that, we can add the cart data in the database. So let's close these things. 
and again open the backend folder. Here we will stop this project using Ctrl C and delete this terminal instance. Now we are in the terminal which is the backend terminal. Now we will create the APIs using that we can update the data in the user's cart. For that let's open controllers folder and here we will create a new file and we will provide the file name cart controller dot js in this file first we will import user model from and we will provide the path of the user model dot js file so just add double dot slash models folder slash user model dot js after that we will create three add of functions first will be add to cart second will be remove from cart and the third one will be get cart so first we will add the add to cart function so just add comment we will add add items to user cart after that here we will create one arrow function that will be const add to cart equal to and it will be async arrow function here we will add request and response then we will create one function similarly here we will add one comment and we will add remove items from user cart here we will create one arrow function we will add const remove from cart equal to and this will be async arrow function here also we will add parameter request and response and here we have created this arrow function then we will add one more comment and in this one we will add fetch user cart data after that here we will type const then we will add the function name that is get cart this will be one async arrow function in this one we will add request and response and here we have created three functions add to cart remove from cart and get cart after that we will add export and here we will export these three functions so first we will import add to cart then remove from cart then get cart we will save the changes and after that we will come back to the routes folder and we will create a new file and we will provide the name cart route dot js now we will use these three functions to create three route so we will add import express from express after that we will import these three functions that we have just created so we will add curly braces add to cart remove from cart and get cart so here we have imported all three functions from the cart controller dot js after that here we will create one express router so we will add const cart router equal to express dot router so we have created one router now using this router we will create multiple endpoint so first we will create cart router dot post method for the 
add to cart function so we will add slash add and here we will add add to cart function similarly we will add cart router we will add one more post api and the endpoint will be slash remove and here we will add remove from cart function similarly we will add one more post method and we will provide the path slash get and here we will use the get cart function so we have created three api endpoint slash add slash remove slash get where we have used add to cart remove from cart and get cart function now we have to export this cart router so just add export default cart router after that we will save this file and we will initialize this cart router in this server.js file so scroll here at api endpoints and here we will add app.use and here we will add the path slash api slash cart and here we will use the cart router after that we will save the changes now we will start building the logic using that if user will send the item id using that id we can add one entry in their cart when user will send the data they will use the token to authenticate them to decode the token we will use the middleware and we will provide the name authentication middleware so we will create a new file and we will add the name auth.js so here we will first import the jwt from and here we will add the json web token package after that here we will create one async add function and its name will be auth middleware so just add const auth middleware equal to async and here we will take request response and callback function next then we will add one arrow function and we will export this function so just add export default and the name of this function auth middleware so we have created this middleware function we will connect it with the cart route so first we will import it here so just add import auth middleware from middleware auth.js file now we will add this middleware on these three route so in these three route after this comma we will add auth middleware and we will add one comma so in these three requests we have added auth middleware after that we will come to auth.js file and we will create the middleware so first we will take the token from the users using the headers then we will destructure the token from the request dot header so just add const curly braces token equal to request dot headers after that we will check whether we got the token or not so just add not token if the token is not available in that case we will return one response so just add return response dot json and here we will return success false and here we will add the message not authorized login again
So if we don't get any token from the user, we will display this message. After that, we'll add the try catch block. In this try catch, if we have the token, we will decode that token. So just add const token decode equal to JWT dot verify method. Here we have to pass the token and with that we have to provide the JWT secret that is this secret text. So just add token. We will get this token from the user using header. And after that here we will pass the JWT secret. So just add process dot env dot JWT secret. So after that our token will be decoded. So while creating the token, we have passed this user ID. So when we have generated the token, we have one object with the ID. So when we decode it, we will get that ID. Now we will set that ID in request dot body user id so just add request dot body dot user id and we will set it with token decode dot id now we will call the callback function which is next and we will run this one if we get any error in this process we will execute this catch block so in that case, we will add console.log and error. And with that, we will display one response using the JSON method where we will add success false. And with that, we will add the message. And in the message, we will type error. We will save the changes. Now this middleware has been created. This middleware will basically take the token and convert it in the user id and using that user id we can add remove or get the data from the cart so first we will add the add to cart functionality using that we can add the data in the cart so in this function first we will add one try catch block and in this try block we will add the user data so we have to find the user data so just add let user data is equal to await and here we will use the user model dot find one method in this method we will add one object where we will add the condition so the user's id should be request dot body dot user id so while finding the user, we have provided this condition. User ID should be same as request.body.userid that we will get using the middleware. So while requesting, we will not send the ID, we will send the token and this middleware will convert the token in the user ID that we have used here in the find one method. After that, we will get all the data of that user. In this user data, we will extract the cart data. For that, we will add let cart data is equal to await. And here we will add user data dot cart data. After that, our user's cart data will be stored in this variable. After that, in this cart data, we will modify the data. So we are using add to cart functionality. So when user will have to add the data in the cart, then they will send the token and with that, they will send the item ID. So here we will add if not cart data 
and here we will provide request dot body dot item id so if in this cart data there is no entry with the item id then we will create cart data and we will add a request dot body dot item id equal to 1 so if the user want to add a product in the cart with one product id and from that item id there is no entry in the cart in that case it will create a new entry after that we will add a logic using that if that cart id is available then we will increase that value so we will add cart data we will add request dot body dot item id and here we will add plus equal to 1 after that when that item will be added in the cart then we have to update the user's cart with this new cart data for that we will add the await and we will use the user model so just add user model dot find by id and update so here we have to provide two parameters that will be users id so just add request dot body dot user id and the second parameter will be one object and in this object we have to provide the new cart data so just add cart data so we will get the cart data after that we will create one response using the json method here we will add the curly braces and we will add success true and we will add message and we will add the message added to cart so this statement will update the cart data in the database after that we will generate one response with success true message will be added to cart if there is any error in this process then it will execute this catch block so here we will add console.log and error and after that we will generate one response so just add response.json and here we will add success false and here we will add the message error So we have created the add to cart functionality. Now it should work. Now we will come to Thunder Client. We will click on the new request. Here we will select the post method and we will add the endpoint address. So our endpoint is HTTP localhost port 4000 slash API slash cart slash add. In this one, we have to send one token using the header. To get this token, let's go to previous login API and here we will add the correct email ID, click on send button. So here we have this token. Let's copy this. After that, in this header we will add token and in the value we will paste this token after that in this body we will type the id of the food item so let's open foods open this foods collection and copy the id just add curly braces and here we will add the item id and in this one we will paste this id so we have added the token in the header and in the body we have added the item id now if i click on the send button so here we have the message success true message added to cart it means this product id has been added in the cart now if i come back to the mongodb web page go to users 
and for this email let's open the cart data and for this id we have the quantity 1 so this logic is perfectly working if i click on the button again send again we have the message added to cart and if i refresh this now it should display the quantity 2 let's check it so if i expand this cart data so yes you can see the quantity is 2 so first time it will execute this statement to add the item to the cart and to increase the value it is using this statement so we have created the add to cart functionality next we will add the remove from cart functionality so here also first we will add try catch block in this try block first we will find the user's data using the find by id method so we will add let user data equal to await we will add the user model dot find by id method and here we will simply provide the id of user so just add request dot body dot user id we will get this user id from our middleware that will decode our token and convert it in the user id after that we have used the find by id method so we can use this method instead of find one if i want i can remove this and here we'll add find by id and here simply provide request dot body dot user id this will also work same if i save this and check this one let's click on send button now database is not connected now the database is connected and here we have the message added to cart so this functionality is working so here we have used find by id method after that we will get the user's data after that we have to extract the cart data so just add let cart data equal to await user data dot cart data so from the user's data we have stored the cart data in this variable now we will add the if statement and we will add the condition cart data and we will add request dot body dot item id first we will check for this item id that i want to remove from that id if the item is available in the cart or not so here we will add greater than zero so if for this id the value is greater than zero in that case we will add cart data and we will add a request dot body dot item id and we will decrement the value by one so we will add minus equal to one so for this id for that product id that uh, quantity will be decreased if it is two it will become one now we will update the new cart data so to update that one we will use the await user model dot find by id and update and here we will add the user id request dot body dot user id then we will add new cart data so just add cart data after that the new cart data will be updated after that we will create one response so just add response dot json and here we will add success true after that we will add the message in the message we will type removed from cart so if 
there is any error in this block so it will execute the catch block so just add console log and error and with that we will generate one response where we will add success false and we will add one message and in the message we will just add error save the changes and we will test this api to test this api in this add api we will remove this add and here we will add remove and we are passing the item id in the header we have the token if i click on send so here we have the message success true removed from cart if i open mongodb page and refresh this so in this cart data we have the quantity 3 if i click on send button again and refresh this one now the quantity should become 2 so open cart data you can see for this product id the quantity is 2 it means the remove from cart logic is working fine after that we will add the functionality for this get cart using that we can fetch the user's cart data for that here we will add try catch block first using the user id we will find the user's data so just add let user data equal to await And here we will add the user model dot find by id and we will provide request dot body dot user id that we will get using the middleware. After that from this user data we will extract the cart data. So just add let cart data equal to await and here we will add user data dot cart data using that the user's cart data will be stored in this variable after getting this cart data we will simply create one response so just add response dot json and here we will send success true and here we will send cart data and we will provide the cart data so it will generate the response with success true and it will display the cart data if there will be any error in the try block it will execute the catch block so we will add console.log and we will add error after that we will generate one response also using the json method where we will add success false and here we will add the message and in the message we will provide error and we will save the changes so the get cart logic has been created now we will test this one also now we will come back to the request remove this and here we will add get in the api endpoint to get the cart data we don't have to provide the item id in the header we have sent the token using that the middleware will convert the token into user id if i click on the send button so here we have the success true and in the cart data we have the object where we have the cart data so we have successfully created all three logics add to cart remove from cart and get cart now we have to integrate these APIs with our front end. So we will close these tabs. And we will close this backend folder and come to front end folder. Open this folder in integrated terminal. So we will run the front end. So just add npm run dev. Now we have two terminals running. First one is backend and the second one is frontend. Now let's open this address in the web browser. 
Now we will integrate our API with our front end. So first we will open context folder then store context.jsx file. So here we have the add to cart function. After this else statement we will add one if statement and here we will check if we have a token available. So whatever item is added in the cart we will update that in the database also. So we will add await and we will add the axios.post method and here we will provide the URL plus our endpoint address that is slash api slash cart slash add. After that we have to provide the item id. So we will add the curly braces and simply add item id that we are getting from this parameter. So we have provided the item id with that we have to set the token in the header. For that here we will add one more comma and we will add the curly braces. Here we will define headers and in this headers we will add one object and in this object we will set the token. Now we have to convert this function in async function. So we have added async. So this await will work. So we have added this logic. Save the changes. When we will logged in, we will have the token. In that case, when we will add the product in the cart, that product will be added in the database cart data also. Now test this one. Let's come back to the web page. First we will log in, click on sign in button, we will provide the email id user.greatstack at gmail.com Here we will provide the password, then click on login. Now we have successfully logged in, after that if I add any item we have added it one time, this one two times and another one two times. Now come back to the database, refresh this one. So here if I open this one, you can see for this id we have four items that we have added two times from the thunder client and from the front end we have added two times. And for this item id we have only one quantity and for the last one we have the quantity 2 that we have added from here. Now we will add the logic using that. We will click on this remove. It will remove the item from the database. For that we will come back to the remove from cart function and we will convert it into the asynchronous function. So we will add the async keyword and after this a statement here we will add one if statement and here we will add token. So if we have the token it means the user is logged in. In that case we will create the API request. So just add await axios.post and here we will add the URL where we will append slash api slash cart slash remove. So we have added the endpoint. After that we will add the item id that we will get from this parameter. So we will add the item id. After that here also we will add the headers. So just add curly braces headers and in this headers we will add the object where we will add token. We will save the changes. Now we will open the web browser. So here we will reset the data. Let's make it 0, 0 and 0. Then click on update. So we have modified the data. If I come back to the front end. Increase the quantity 1, 1 and 1. 
and refresh the database. So in this cart data, we have quantity one for all three product. If I click on minus to remove this product from the cart and come back to the database page, refresh this one. So now these quantity is zero. So this remove from cart functionality is successfully working and the API is also working fine. Next we will add the logic using that when we have increased the quantity 4 and if I refresh the web page it should display the quantity 4. To fix this one let's come back. Here we will create one arrow function that will be load cart data. So just add const load cart data equal to and it will be one async arrow function. In this parameter we will pass token and in this function we will call the API. So just add const response equal to await and here we will add axios dot post method. Here we will add the URL. In this one we will concat the API endpoint that is API slash cart slash get and here to hit this API we don't have to send anything in the body so we'll add the empty object then we'll add the header in the curly braces and in this headers we will send one token in object. After that we will get one response where we will get the cart data. So we will save that cart data in one variable and the name will be cart items. So we already have this cart items. So in this cart item state we will store that data. For that here we will add set cart items. And in this one we will provide response dot data dot cart data. After that our cart data will be loaded in this state. After that we have to call this function whenever our page is loaded. For that in this if statement here we will call that function. So just add await. We will add load cart data function. Here we have to pass the token. So for token we will use local storage dot get item and here we will add key name that is token. Using that we will get the token. Now we will save the changes and open the web browser. Now if I reload the web page still you can see the cart data is displayed here if i make it 2 and reload the web page still we have 2 this data is coming from this database if i refresh this one so here in this cart data for this product we have the quantity 2 if i make it 1 2, the last one 4, let's increase this one also. So we have added multiple products. Let's refresh the database. Now here we have all the quantity for different products. If I reload the web page, still we can see all the quantity that is added. Now we have successfully integrated the cart API where we have added the logic add to cart, remove from cart and get cart. After that we will add the logic using that user can order the product added in the cart. Now we will come back to the VS code editor. We will close this file and we will stop the front end. So type control C yes and we will delete this front end terminal. So now we have the back end running in this terminal. 
close this front end folder and open the back end folder in this one we will add the logic using that we can place the order from our front end so first we will come to models folder and we will create a new model so here let's create a file with the name order model dot js here we will create one order model using that we can save the order in our database so first we will import the mongoose from mongoose package after that here we will type const order schema equal to new mongoose dot schema and here we will add the object and in this one we will define the structure for our order schema so first we will add the user id so the user id type will be string and we will set it as required so just add required true after that we will add the items and this item will be one array so we will add type array and it will be required so we will type required true after that we will add the amount so we will type the amount and the type will be number it is also required so we will type required true after that we will add the address so we will type address and its type will be object so we will write type object and it is also required so we will use required true after that we will add the status and the status type will be string so we will use type string and here we will set one default value so just add default and in this one we will store food processing so whenever a new order will be placed the status will be food processing after that we will add the date here we will add the curly braces and the type will be date and in this one we will use the default value that will be date dot now so whenever we will place one order so this date will be saved using the current date after that we will come to the payment property so here we'll add payment and the type will be boolean and the default value will be false so whenever a new order will be placed the payment status will be false so we have created the schema for the order now using this schema we will create the order model so we will type const order model equal to mongoose dot models dot order order operator and here we will type mongoose dot model and here we will type order and here we will provide the order schema so now we have created the order model next we have to export it so we will type export default and we will type the order model now we have made the order model we will save the changes and we will create the order controller so in this controllers folder we will create a new file and we will provide the name order controller dot js 
In this file, we will import order model from model slash order model dot js. After that, we will import user model from double dot slash models slash user model dot js. After that, we will import the stripe. So we will type a stripe from stripe package. After that, we will create one arrow function and the name will be place order. Using that, we can place the user's order. So first we will add one comment and we will type placing user order from front end. After that, we will create one add a function. So we will type const place order equal to async and here we will take request and response. So we have created this function. Next, we will come to routes folder and here we will create a new file and the name will be order route. So we will create a new file and write the name order route.js. So we have created this route file. In this order controller file, we will export this place order function. So we will type export curly braces place order. Now we will save this file and we will open order route.js file. So here first we will import express. From express package. After that we will import auth middleware from double dot slash middleware folder slash auth dot js. After that we will import the function that we have created in the order controller file. So here we will type import curly braces place order. So our function will be imported here. Now using this express we will create the router. So we will type const and we will provide the name order router for this router. So the router name is order router equal to express dot router. And we have created this router. After that using this router we will create multiple endpoints. So first we will create the endpoint for this place order. So here we will add order router dot post method. Here we will add the name of the endpoint. It will be slash place. After that here we will add the middleware that is auth middleware. After that we will add the place order function. After that we will export this router. So just type export default then order router now we will use this order router in the server.js file in this one we will type app.use and here we will provide the endpoint name that is slash api slash order and here we will provide the order router So this order router has been imported here. We have used this order router here. Now we will save this file and now we will open the order controller.js file. Here we will add the logic using that we can place the order. Before that we will set up the stripe. To set up the stripe we will open .env file. And here we will add one 
new variable and the name will be a stripe secret key so we will type a stripe secret key equal to and here we will paste this secret key as a string so we have added this secret key to get this secret key you have to go to official website of a stripe and here you have to create an account after creating the account in the dashboard you will find the secret key of the stripe that you can paste here i have already created the stripe account and i have this secret key that i have pasted here after that save this file and we will come back to the order controller.js file and we will use this secret key in this file to set up the stripe so here we have imported the stripe so let's make it capital s and after that we will create a variable and the variable name will be stripe so we will type const stripe here we are using a small s and while importing the package we have used capital s after this const stripe we will type equal to new and here we will use this stripe package and here we have to provide the secret key for that we will type process.env dot and then we will use this variable name just copy and paste it here after that we will save the changes now we have the support of a stripe in this component now we will create the place order function so first here we will add the try catch block and in this try block we will add the new order so we will add const new order equal to new and here we will use the order model in this one we will add the curly braces and here we will define the user id that we will get from the middleware so when the middleware will decode the token that will generate this user id to get this user id we will type request dot body dot user id after that we will add the items we will get it from request dot body dot items after that we will add the amount property and in this amount we will type request dot body dot amount after that we will use address and here we will add request dot body dot address so we have added user id items amount and address after that here we will type await new order dot save after that it will save the order in our database when the user will place the order after that we have to clear the user's cart for that we will type await user model and here we will use the find by id and update so first we will provide the user's id so just add request dot body dot user id after that we will provide the object where we will add the cart data and we will set the cart data with one empty object so it will clear the cart data after that we will add the logic using that we can create the payment link using the stripe to create the stripe payment link first we have to create the line items where we will insert all the product data currency and unit amount and quantity 
so we will type const line item equal to and here we will use request dot body dot items that is one array and here we will use the dot map method in this map method we will pass the arrow function and here we will add this parenthesis in this one we will add the object and here in this parameter we will take individual item after that here we will set the price data property so just type price data and here we will provide the country currency so we will type currency and here we will enter the currency code so we have set up the stripe account in india so we will type inr after that we will add the product data in this one we will store the product's name so we will type name and we will provide the item dot name after that we will set the unit amount so just type unit underscore amount so our unit amount will be item dot price multiplied by 100 we will get this data in dollar if i want to convert it in inr so we will multiply it by 80 after that we will add a comma and here we will define the quantity in this quantity we will type item dot quantity so here we have created the line items after that we will push the delivery charges in this one to push the delivery charges in this line items here we will type line items dot push in this one we will add the object and here we will type price data here also we will add the currency INR after that we will add the product data and in the product data we will add the name and it will be delivery charges after that we will add the comma and here we will set the unit amount here we have added the delivery charges two dollar in our front end so we will type two into hundred and to convert it into inr we will add multiplied by 80 after that here we will add the quantity one now we have created the line items now using this line items we will create one session for that here we will type const session equal to await and we will use the stripe dot checkout dot session then dot create method and in this create method we have to provide the line items and in this line items we will provide the line items after that we will set the mode that will be payment After that we have to provide the success URL and cancel URL. If the payment will be successful, we will be redirected to the success page. If the payment is failed, we will be redirected to the cancel URL. So first we will define the success URL. Here we will use the template literal. So we will type backtick and after that we will define the frontend URL.
So here we will type const frontend URL. Now our frontend will be running on localhost port 5173. So we will type localhost colon 5173. We will wrap it in the code. So this is the frontend URL. After that, we will come here and in this success URL, we will add the dollar sign curly braces and here we will type frontend URL and after that, we will type slash verify question mark and here we will add the parameter success equal to true. Then we will type and percent sign and we will add order ID equal to dollar sign curly braces and for the order ID we will use new order dot underscore ID. So if the payment is successful, we will be redirected to this page after the payment. Here we have created the route verify where we have added the parameter success true and order ID. After that we will add one comma and we will copy and paste it. And we will change the name. It will be cancel URL. In this cancel URL, the front end URL will be same. Instead of true in the success, we will type success false. That's it. After that, the session will be created. Next, we will create one response. So we will type response.json. And in this one, we will send the success true. And after that, we will send the session URL. So let's type session underscore URL. And in this one, we will pass the session dot URL. So we have created the logic for the place order. So let's check this again. Here we have created the variable for front end URL. We have added the front end URL in this variable. After that, we have added the try block where we are creating the new order. After that, we are saving this order in the database. After saving the order in this line, we are cleaning the user's cart data. After that, whatever item we get from the user, we are using that item and we are creating this line items that is necessary for the Stripe payment. After creating this line items, we are adding one more entry, which is delivery charges. That is $2 and we have multiplied it by 80 to convert in INR. After that, using this line items, payment mode, success URL and cancel URL, we have created one session and we have sent the session URL as a response. If we get any error in that case, this catch block will be executed. So, here we will add the console log and the error and we will generate the response using response.json. In this one we will type success false and the message will be error. We will save this file. So it will restart the backend server. Now we will link this API with our front end. So let's close these files. We will close this backend folder and we will open front end folder in integrated terminal. The backend is still running. So it will be running in the background. Now 
we will run the front end using npm run dev now we will open the front end folder then src folder and we will open the pages and here we will open the place order.jsx file after that here from the context we will take the token then food list then cart items url and after that we will create the state variable where we will store the information from these form field for that we will type const data and the setter function name is set data equal to user state and we will initialize this variable with one object where we will add first name it will be a string then last name it is also a string then the next thing is email it is also a string then we will type a street then we will add the city after that we will add the state after that we will add the zip code then we will provide the country and then we will add the phone so here we have created the state variable and we have initialized with one object where we have the properties like first name last name email street city state zip code country and phone after that we will create the on change handler function using that we will save the input field data in this state variable so we will type const on change handler and this will be one arrow function and in this parameter we will type event and using this event we will extract the name and value so we will type const name equal to event dot target dot name then we will add one more variable that is value in this one we will store event dot target dot value so here we have the name and value then we will call the set data setter function here we will pass the previous data and we will add this parenthesis then curly braces we will change the previous data so here we will add the name field and in this one we will update the latest value that we will get from this event now this on change handler function is ready next we have to link this handler function and data state with the input fields so in this input field where we have the first name let's add the name property and we will type first name then we will add the on change property here we will provide the on change handler function after that we will add the value property this will be data dot first name similarly in this input field we will type name last name on change property on change handler value it will be data dot last name this input field is for the email so we will type name is equal to email on change property 
here we will add the on change handler function then value data dot email similarly here we will type name street on change property on change handler value data dot a straight here we have to remember one thing we are setting data dot first name that will be same as the name property after that we will come to this input field we will type name equal to city on change property and we will type on change handler then we will add the value data dot city then we will add the name a state on change property then on change handler value will be data dot state After that we will come to this input field here we will type name property zip code on change property on change handler value data dot zip code in this input field we will add the name country on change property on change handler value data dot country after that on this input field we will add the name property this will be phone on change property on change handler value will be data dot phone so in all input fields we have added the name property on change property and value we will save the changes and we will verify it for that we will create one use effect we will pass one add function in this add function we will add the comma and this a square bracket we will add the state name data whenever the data will be updated it will execute this function so in this function we will console log the data we will open the web page inspect and open console refresh the web page so here we have these fields so these fields are empty if i type something in these input field let's add greater stack user dot greater stack at gmail dot com in the street we will type street one in the city we will type city in the state we will type state here we will type the zip code then in the country we will type us and in the phone number we will type any dummy phone number if i open the last object in the console here we have the city information city us email address first name last name phone number state street and zip code so these form data is getting saved in the state variable so we have verified it now remove this use effect and remove it from here also save the changes now in this data state we are getting all the data from the input field after that we will create the add function and the name will be place order so using that we will be redirected to the payment gateway so first we will type const 
and the function name will be place order so the component name is place order this p is capital and here we are using a small p equal to it will be one asynchronous arrow function we will type async and here we will pass the event so we have created the function now we will link this function with this button which is proceed to payment so here we will write type it will be submit after that we will come to this form tag and we will add on submit here we will provide the function name which is place order so this page will be reloaded to prevent that here we will type event dot prevent default so it will not reload the web page whenever we will submit this form after that we have to call our api before calling the api we have to structure all the orders data as we have created in the api so first we will create one variable its name will be order items that will be one array in this one we will add the cart item related data here we will use the food list dot map method and here we will pass the add function in this parameter we will send the individual item and here we will check if our cart items have the product with this item id in that case we will execute this block so we will type let item info equal to item so this item is one object in this object we will add one property that is the quantity so here we will type item info and in this a square bracket we will add the quantity equal to cart items and here we will provide the item dot id using that from this id we will get all the quantity in this item info quantity property after that we will add the order items dot push and here we will add the item info here we are doing the mapping where we are adding the all item data with the quantity in this order items array after that we will check whether this mapping is working fine or not for that here after this line we will type console log and in this one we will console log this order items so just type order items save the changes and we will open the web browser so let's reload the web page and we will click on inspect then click on console if i click on proceed to payment so here we have the console log where we have one array in this one we have the multiple objects each object has product category description image price name and quantity we have added this quantity using this mapping let's close this now we will add the logic using that if these fields are empty then this proceed to payment will not work for that we will come to this input field and here we will add required for all the input fields so let's select all the input fields and in all these input fields we will type required we will save the changes now if i click on this button it is giving the message please fill out this field 
if I enter the value in this field, it is giving the message in the second field. Please fill out this field. Now we have to complete all the fields of this form. Then only this proceed to payment button will work. So here we have created the order items. Let's remove this console log. And here we will create one order data variable. So we will type let order data equal to and this will be one object. So in this object we will add the address that will be data. Here we have the data state variable. So it will be stored in this address property. After that we will add the items and in this items we will provide the order items where we are adding the data using this mapping. So we will type order items. After that we will add the amount. In this amount we will use get total cart amount function. And in this one we will add the 2 that is the delivery charge. So we have created the order data. Now we will send this order data from our API. So here we will type the let response equal to await and here we will use the axios dot post method. Here we will add the URL that is the backend URL. In this one we will concat slash api slash order slash place. With this we will set the order data that we have created here where we have the address data items and total amount. So this is the orders data. After that we will add the header. So we will add the object and in this one we will define headers where we will store token. After calling this API we will get the response. So here we will check if the response dot data dot success is true. In this case we will get one session URL. So we will get that session URL. So just type const curly braces session URL equal to response dot data. So using this we will get the session URL. Now we have to send the user on this session URL. To send the user on this session URL, here we will use window dot location dot replace. And in this one we will provide the session URL. So we have generated the order data. Then we have sent this order data to our API and from there we will get the response. If the response success is true in that case this if statement will be executed where we will get the session URL and we are sending the users to the session URL. If the response.data.success is false in that case here we will add the else condition and here we will display one alert where we will add alert error. We will save the changes and we will open the web browser. So we will fill this form great stack. We will add the email address the street city state zip code country and phone number and click on proceed to payment. So here we are redirected to the Stripe checkout page. 
here we have the product details greek salad then individual price and this is the quantity quantity 2 quantity 1 2 4 so we have all the products with their quantity so you can see all the items and this is the total amount to check this payment we will use the card so let's search for a stripe dummy card let's open this one then scroll this web page or just click here on cards by country i have created the stripe account in india so here we will search for india and here we have one dummy card number click here to copy the card number here we will add the email id then paste the card number then add any future month and year then we will add any three digit number in this field here we will type the name let's add greater stack and click on pay button so here we have this 3d secure page if i click on the complete button this payment will be successfully executed if i click on fail so this payment will be cancelled we will click on the complete button so this payment is successfully placed and we will be redirected to the slash verify success true and order id if i open the database we will open the orders collection click here on orders so here we have the order id user id who has placed this order then we have the items the total amount this is the total amount then we have the address here we have the object with users address detail and the status is food processing that we have set by default and this is the order place date and here we have the payment false here i have added the incorrect spelling for the local host so let's come back to the backend part we will open controllers order controller.js and here we have added local host let's correct this spelling save the changes here also we will correct local host so this is the local host port 5173 and the verify path now we will add the logic using that when the success is true and we have the order id available so using this data we will send the data to the backend that our payment has been made successfully and after that we will update the false status to true if the success will be false in that case we will delete this order because the payment is cancelled for that we will come back to the vs code editor and here we will close these files and we will close this frontend folder then open order controllers file here we will create one verify method to verify the order this is not the perfect way the perfect way is using the webhooks but if i go to webhooks that will be time consuming so here we are using a temporary payment verification system so here we will create one function and the name will be verify order so just add const verify order equal to and it will be one asynchronous arrow function so just add async we will take request and response we will pass this function in this export so just add verify order we will save the changes and we will come back to the routes folder order route.js file and 
after this line we will add order router dot post method here we will add slash verify and here we will use the verify order function so this order function has been imported here after that we will save the changes now here we will add the logic using that we can verify the order payment so here first we need the order id and success so we will get it from the request dot body so just add const order id then success equal to request dot body then we will add the try catch block in this try block we will add the if statement so here we will add the condition if the success is true here we are using the true as a string while calling the api we will pass this data as a string so if the success is true in that case we will make the payment true so just add await order model dot find by id and update here we have to pass the order id with this we will add the object where we will update the payment and we will update it with true so the payment will be true after that we will generate the response where we will add success true and here we will add the message that will be paid after that if the success is not true it means the payment is cancelled in that case we will add the else statement and here we will type find by id and delete so just add await order model dot find by id and delete here we will provide the order id and after that we will add the response using the json method where we will add the success false and here we will add the message that will be not paid if there is any error in this try block the catch block will be executed so just add console.log and error with that we will add the response also so just add response.json and here we will add success false and in the message we will add error we will save the changes now we will integrate this verify order api with our front end so close this backend folder close these files and we will open the front end folder in this folder we will go to src then pages and in this pages folder we will create a new folder and the name will be verify within this folder we will create a new file that will be verify.jsx here we will use rafce after that for this page we will create one css file so just add verify.css we will import this css file in this jsx file so just add import.verify.css now we will connect this page with the routes for that we will open app.jsx file and here we will create one more route and here we will provide the path it will be slash verify and here we will use the element and in this element we will use the 
verify component then close this route we will save the file now when we will open this verify page this verify component will be loaded so if i type a so this a is displayed on the page it means the verify component is working fine with the route after that we will create the logic using that we can get these parameters which is success true and order id within this component to find the url parameter we will use the use search param so just add const search params set search params equal to use search params now we will create two variables and the name will be success and order id so just add const success equal to and here we will use search params dot get method and here we will provide the key that is success using this we will get this value which is true it will be stored in this success variable now let's copy this one and paste it again and here we will provide the name order id here also we will add order id so here we will get the success and order id now we will check whether we are getting the data in these variables or not so simply we will add console log success and order id we will save the changes and we will open the web browser reload the web page right click inspect then go to console tab so here we have the true and this is the order id so in these variables we are getting the data after that we will get the backend url from the context api for that we will type const curly braces url equal to use context and here we will provide the store context next we will display the spinner on the web page until the payment gets verified to create the spinner here we will add the class name property verify and in this one we will create one div and the class name will be spinner now we will add the css properties so in this verify.css file we will add dot verify class name and here we will provide the min height 60vh display will be grid after that we will add the css properties for the spinner class so just add dot verify dot spinner here we will provide the width 100 pixel height 100 pixel place self center then we will add the border property that will be 5 pixel solid and this color code after that we will add the border top color and here we will add this color code then we will add border radius that will be 50 percent after that we will add the animation and to add the animation we will use the keyframe so let's add the keyframe name rotate it will be for one second and it will continue to infinite number of time so here we'll create the keyframes for this animation and we will use this name rotate and here we will add 100%
transform rotate 360 degree. We will save the changes and we will open the web browser. So here we have this spinner and it will be displayed until the payment will be verified. Now let's close this CSS file and here we will create one add function and the name will be verify payment. So just add const verify payment and this will be one asynchronous add function so just add async and here we will call the api so just add const response equal to await and here we will use the axios dot post method in this one we will provide the url and in this one we will append the endpoint that will be slash api slash order slash verify here we are getting the error so let's add this parenthesis here next we will add the object in this object we will send success and order id When we will hit this API, we will get one response. So here we will check if response.data.success. If it is true, in that case, we will navigate the users on different route that will be my orders that we will create later. To navigate the user, here we will use the use navigate hook. So just type const navigate equal to use navigate and here we will use this navigate and we will provide slash my orders if the response is not true in that case the payment will be failed so in that case we will navigate the users on the home page. So just add navigate slash. We will run this function when this component will be loaded. For that, here we will add the use effect. And in this one, we will pass the arrow function. Here we will add the square bracket and here we will call the verify payment function now save the changes now the payment was verified so we are redirected to the my orders if i open the database and refresh this one so here the payment is true and we are redirected to the my orders route if i create a new order let's go to home page add these product go to cart page then click on proceed to checkout here we will provide the data in this input fields create a stack one email id then any dummy data Then we'll click on proceed to payment. So here we have the payment page. We will insert the email ID. Then we will use this card number. Copy this one, paste it here. Here we will add the month year, then any three digit. Then we will add the name, greatest tag. Then we will click on pay button. Before making the payment, we will come back to the database, refresh this and you will see the second order will be created here. So you can see the second order where the amount is 32, where we have two items and the quantity is 11 and the payment is false. 
if I click on fail and click on back, click on leave. So the payment will be false and we will be redirected to the home page. And if I refresh the database, this order data will be removed. Let's refresh this one. So the second order data has been removed successfully. So the verify page is successfully working. Now we will close this and after this we will create the orders page where we will list the orders. To create the order page, first we will come back to the VS Code editor. Here we will close this front-end folder and open the back-end folder. Then open this controllers folder, go to ordercontrollers.js file. Here we have to create one add function with the name users order. In that one we will add the logic so that we can send the users order using the API. For that here we will add one comment and we will type user orders for front end. Then we will create one add function with the name users order and it will be one asynchronous add function. So just add const user orders equal to async and in the parameter we will take request and response. Then we will export this function. So just add user orders. Now save this file and we will open routes folder then open order route.js file. Here we will create one route and the endpoint will be users order. So let's add order router dot post. We are using the post method and here we will use the endpoint slash user orders. After that here we will add the middleware that will convert the auth token into the user id. So here we will type auth middleware. After that here we will add our user orders function. So first we will import that function. So we are importing user orders and we will provide it here. Now we will save this file and we will come back to the order controller.js file. In this function, first we will add one try catch block. Within this try block, we will find the all orders of that user using their user ID. So just add const orders is equal to await. And here we will use the order model dot find method. So this find method will provide the all orders of that user. In this one we have to provide the filter. So just add user ID and in this one we have to provide the user's ID that we will get from the middleware. So just add request dot body dot user ID. Using that we will get all the orders from this particular user ID and it will be stored in this orders variable. Now we will send this order as a response. So just add a response dot json. Here we will pass one object where we will add the success property it is true. With that we will add data and in the data we will store the orders. Using that the user will get all the order details. If there is any error in this try block, it will execute the catch block. So in this catch block, we will add the console.log and error. After that, we will generate one response using the JSON method, where we will add success false and we will add the message error. 
Now we will save this file. Now we will test this API endpoint. For that we will open Thunder Client. We will click on new request. Method type is post so I'll select the post method. Then we will use the HTTP localhost port 4000 slash API slash order slash user orders. After that in this header we have to add one authentication token. For that let's open the login API and we will generate one token using this email id and password. So here we have this token. So let's copy this one and in this header we will add token and we will paste it here in the value. So in the header we are sending this token. If I click on send button we will get all the orders of this user. So if I click on send button here we have received all the orders of this user. Here we have one array and in this one we have one object. We have placed one order that's why we have one object. In this one we have the id, user id. Then we have items. In this items we have all the food items that we have ordered. We have the quantity and the total amount and address. So this API is perfectly working. Now we will link this API with our front end. So close these files. We will open the we will close this backend folder and we will open frontend folder. Then we will go for pages folder and in this pages folder we will create a new page. So we will create a new folder and we will add the name my orders. In this folder we will create a new file. So just add my orders dot jsx. Here we will use RAFCE. We will create one CSS file for this component. So in this folder we will create a new file myorders.css. Now we will link this CSS file with, with our JSX file. So we will add import dot slash myorders.css. Save the changes. After that, we will set up this page in our route. So we will open app.jsx file. Here we will create a new route. In this route, we will add the path that will be my orders. So just add slash my orders. Then we will add the element. And in the element, we will provide my orders my orders component so add this my orders component and close this one so route has been created now if i open the web page and here if i type slash my orders so this component will be loaded here if i open my orders dot jsx file here we will add test and you can see this test is visible on the web page. So this my orders route is working fine. After that here we will add the logic. Using that we can fetch all the users data and save it in one state variable. So first we will create one state variable with the name data. So just add const data and we will add the setter function name set data equal to use state and initialize it with one empty array. After that from the context we need the URL and token. Using that we can call the API. For that here we will add const curly braces. Here we will take URL and token and here we will add use context and in this one we will provide a store context. 
So here we have the backend URL, authentication token, and here we have created the state variable. After that, now we will create a function and the name will be fetch orders. So we will type const fetch orders equal to async. So the function has been created. In this one, we will call the API. For that, we will add const response equal to await. And here we will use the axios package dot post method. After that, here we will add the URL plus and in this one, we will append the endpoint that is slash API slash order slash user orders. After that, in the body, we don't have to send anything. So we will simply add the empty object and after that, we will add the headers. So again, use the curly braces and headers. In the headers, we will add the token. So it will call the API and in this variable, we will get the response. After getting the response, we can save the user's order data in this state variable. For that, we will add set data. Here we will add a response dot data dot data. So our function has been created and in this one we have added the logic using that we can save the user's order data in this state variable. After that we have to call this function whenever this component will be loaded. For that we will add use effect. We will add the arrow function and here we will add the comma square bracket. Here we will add the if statement. So first we will test if the token is available. In that case, we will run this function. If the token is not available, we will not run this function. So in this if statement, we have added the token and here we are adding fetch orders function. So it will execute this function. Suppose user login or logout on the web page. In that case, we have to again execute this arrow function. So here in this square bracket, we will just add token. So whenever the token will be updated, this function will be executed. We will save the changes. And now we will check the response. So here we will add the console.log and we will add response.data.data. We will save the changes and we will open the web browser. Click on inspect, go to console and here we have one array. In this array, we have one entry. Here we have the address, amount, date, items, payment, a status, user ID and ID. So we are getting the data from the API. Remove this console.log. Now we will create the UI. Using that, we can display the user's order. So first in this div, we will add one class name. So it will be my orders. Then we will add one h2 tag and add the text my orders. Then we will create one div with the class name container. In this container, we will use this data array and we will map the data. So we will add the curly braces dot map. And here we will pass the arrow function. In this one, we will pass the individual order data and index number. Then we will return one div. In this div, we will add a class name, my orders order. Then we will add the key property where we will provide the index. So just add key index that we got using the parameter. Now in the order, we will display the image tag 
and in this image we will use the assets dot parcel icon after that we will add the paragraph tag and in this paragraph tag we will display the multiple items so in this api data we have ordered the six item so we will display all these name one by one to display that we will add curly braces here we will use the order dot items that is the array name in this one we will add the map method and in this map method we will pass one arrow function and in this parameter we will send individual item and index number with the item name we will display the quantity also you can see in the data we have the quantity for this item greek salad the quantity is 2 so we will display greek salad multiply by 2 so we will add the if statement if index equal to order dot items dot length minus 1 so using this we can access the last item of the user order and here we will simply return item dot name and we will concat one string that will be one cross icon then we will add the item quantity so we will add plus item dot quantity we will save the changes and open the web page so here we have the entry that is peri peri rolls and the quantity is 2 so this is the last item from our all the items after that we will add the else statement and we will paste this return statement again and in this one simply concat one more string where we will add comma we will save the changes and open the web browser now we have all the items with their quantity so we have total six items and at the end we don't have the comma because we have added the condition here if the if we are on the last item we don't have the comma so it is displaying all the order items after this p tag we will display one more p tag and in this one we will display the order amount for that we will add the dollar sign curly braces order dot amount after that we will add dot zero zero we will save the changes and here we have the order amount after that we will add one more p tag and in this one we will add items curly braces and here we will provide the total number of item that we will get from order dot items dot length so here we have total six items you can see one two three four five and six so this item is also working fine after that we will add the paragraph tag for the order status so we will add the span tag and here we will add the hex code after closing of this span tag we will add one b tag and in this one we will add the curly braces and provide order dot status Save the changes and open the web browser. So this hex code is not working. Here we will add one semicolon. Save the changes. Now you can see one bullet point and here we have the food processing. After that we will add one button tag. And in this button tag we will add the text track order.
we will save the changes and open the web browser. So here we have the image, items name, price, total number of items, status and this track button. After that we will add the CSS properties for this component. So let's come back, open myorders.css file. And here we will add the CSS property for the class name my orders. Here we will add the margin that will be 50 pixel and 0 pixel. We will save the changes. Now we will add the CSS properties for this container class name. So let's copy this, add it here. Before that we will add my orders, then add container. Here we will provide display flex, flex direction column, gap of 20 pixel, margin top 30 pixel. We will save the changes and open the web browser. So here we have the margin from the left and top. After that we will add the CSS properties for the my orders order class name. Let's copy this one and paste it here in this CSS file. Here we will add display grid, grid template column, 0 0.5 fraction, 2 fraction, 1 fraction, 1 fraction, 2 fraction and 1 fraction. Then we will add align item center, gap 30 pixel, font size 14 pixel, then we will add the padding 10 pixel and 20 pixel. Then we will add the color property and we will use this color code. Then we will add the border that is 1 pixel solid and this color code. We will save the changes and open the web browser. So here this entry is looking good. After that we will add the CSS properties for this image tag. So just add dot my orders order img tag. Here we will provide the width of 50 pixel. Save the changes. So this image width is 50 pixel now. Now we will add the CSS properties for this bullet point. So here let's add dot my orders order then p tag, span tag and here we will use color and this color code. We will save the changes. So this bullet point is displaying in the red color. Next we will add the CSS properties for this text. So just add my orders, then p tag, then b tag. Here we will provide font weight 500 then color and this color code. Save the changes. So this text is looking good. After that we will add the CSS properties for this track order button. So we will come back to the VS code editor and we will add dot my orders order button tag. Here we will add border none, padding 12 pixel and 0 pixel, border radius of 4 pixel, background color and we will use this color code. Then we will add cursor pointer and we will add color and this color code. Save the changes and we will open the web browser. So this track order button is looking good. And here we have added the cursor pointer. After that we will add the media query so that this my order page will be responsive for a smaller screen. So just come back to the CSS file. We will add the at the rate media. We will add the condition max width 900 pixel. Here we will add the class name my orders order. 
we will provide dip we will provide grid template column one fraction two fraction and one fraction then we will add the row gap that will be 5 pixel then we will add the font size 12 pixel after that we will add the class name then button tag in this one we will decrease the font size it will be 10 pixel save the changes now click on inspect if i decrease the size you can see this is how it will be displayed in the smaller screen now if i open the home page if i click on this button to add the product in the cart we have set the quantity 3 and 2 we will open the cart page click on proceed to checkout here we will add the details then click on proceed to payment so it will open the payment page now to make the payment we will use the dummy card number so we will select this card number copy this one paste it in this card information area here we will add the month and year then we will add any three digit here we will add the name and click on pay then click on complete payment so the payment has been completed now we are on the my orders page and here it is displaying the second order where the quantity is 2 price $74 and the status is food processing here we have the track order button so our my order page is perfectly working after that we will add the logic so that when we click on logout then we cannot see this order page until we log in again so it so this page will be hidden so just come back to the code file we will open place order page and here we will add the use effect hook so let's add use effect in this one we will pass one arrow function and it will be executed whenever our token gets updated so just add token and then we will add one if statement here we will add the condition not of token so if the token is not available then this if block will be executed so whenever this block will be executed we will be navigated to the cart page for that here we will use the use navigate hook so just add const navigate equal to use navigate after that in this if block we will add navigate and we will add slash cart with this one we will add one more condition we will add else if and that will be if our cart is empty in that case we will send the user on the cart page so just add get total cart amount and if it is zero in that case the cart will be empty so we will again send them to the cart page so just add navigate and slash cart save the changes and open the browser if i click on proceed to checkout so we will be redirected to the cart page if i log in on this website and right now the cart value is zero and if i click on proceed to checkout so it will be redirected to the cart page only if i add any item in the cart then go to cart page click on proceed to checkout so it will display the order page so this logic is perfectly working after that we will close this file after that we will add the function for this orders option so that if i click here it will open the my orders page for that 
we will open the VS Code editor. We will open components folder, navbar.jsx file. So here we have to add onclick property in this li tag. And here we will pass one arrow function. We will call this navigate function. And in this one, we will provide the path slash my orders. We will save the changes and we will open the web browser. Now, if I go to profile and click on orders, so it will open the my orders page. So here we have completed the front end part where we have added the feature for add to cart. Then you can see the product in the cart page. Then we can click on proceed to checkout and place the order. So we have set up the payment gateway and after completing the payment, our order will be displayed on this my orders page. After that, let's come back to the VS code editor and you have to remember one thing. Our front end is running on this address. So we have to mention it in the backend project within order controller.js file at this place. If the port number is different, then in this front end URL, we will add the different port number. If it is 3000, we will add the port 3000 here. If we are deploying the project online, in that case, whatever our front end URL is that we will place here. Now we will close all the front end files and stop this front end. We will click on control C. Yes. Let's delete this terminal also. Now close this folder. Now we will add the logic using that we can display all the user's order in our admin panel. So we will open this admin folder in integrated terminal and run this. So just add npm run dev. Now we will open this address in our browser. So here we have the add items page and list item page. Now we will create this orders page. Before creating the orders page, first we will create the API so that we can get the all orders from all the users from our API. So in this backend folder, we will go to controllers and order controllers.js file. And here we will add one arrow function using that we can find all the orders of all the users. So just add one comment and we'll add listing orders for admin panel. Then we'll add one arrow function and its name will be list order. So just add const list orders equal to async. In this parameter, we will take request and response. Now we will export this function. So just add comma list orders. Now we will open routes folder, order routes.js file. Here we will add one get method. So just add order router dot get and the endpoint name will be slash list. And after that we will use the list order function that we have created in this order controller.js file. So first we'll import that in this line. So just add a list orders. And here we will use that list orders function. We will save this file. Now open order controllers.js file. Here we will add the logic to fetch all the order details. So first we will add one try and catch block. In the try block, we will add const orders is equal to await and we will use the order model dot 
find using that we will get all the orders data in this variable now using the api we have to send this suggest so at response dot json success true then we will add data property in this data property we will send this orders if there is any error in this try block so it will execute the catch block so just add console.log error and we will add one response using the json method so the success will be false with that we will add one message property and here we will add the message error we will save the changes now api has been created now we have to test this so we will open thunder client we will click on new request the method type is get here we will use the http localhost 4000 slash api slash order slash list if i click on send button so here we have the success true and here we have the data property that is one array and in this one we have objects that display all two orders so we have two objects here so this api is perfectly working now we have to integrate this api with our admin panel so we will open the admin folder src pages order.jsx file here first we will create one state variable where we will store the data coming from the api so just add const orders then set orders equal to user state and we will initialize it with empty array after that we will create one arrow function and its name will be fetch all orders so we will add const fetch all orders equal to async so arrow function has been created in this one we will call the api to call the api before calling the api we will destructure the url and we will get this url from app.jsx file where we have passed the url as a prop and in the and here we have defined our backend url so here we will get the url now we can do the api call so just add const response equal to await axios dot get and here we will provide the url and in this one we will append the endpoint that is slash api slash order slash list so after that we will get all the data in the response because it is a get request so we don't have to pass anything as body and headers after this we will add one if a statement where we will add the condition if response dot data dot success is true it means we are getting the order data in that case we will store the order data in this orders state so let's add set orders and here we will provide response dot data dot data to check this data we will add one console log and we will add response dot data dot data and after that we will add the else statement if there is any error in that case this response dot data dot success will be false and this else condition will be executed so here we will display one toast notification so just import the toast so let's type import toast from react toastify after that here we will add toast dot error 
and here we will display one text that is header. After that we have to run this function whenever this component will be loaded. For that we will add use effect. In this one we will pass one add a function. And here we will add the bracket. In this one we will call this fetch all orders function. Save the file and we will open the web browser. If I click on inspect and go to console tab. Here we have one error, Axios is not defined. So we have to import the Axios. So just add import Axios from Axios package. Save the changes and reload the web page. So here we have one array. In that we have two order details. So this API is perfectly working. Now we will use this orders data to display the orders on this order page. To display the orders, here in this div, we will add one class name property. It will be order and one more class name which is add. Then we will add one s3 tag and write the text order page. After this text we will add one div with the class name order list. Inside this div we will map our orders. So just add curly braces orders dot map method and here we will pass one arrow function. So we will use the small bracket and in this one we will add the HTML structure and that will display all the orders. So just add div and here we will add the class name property that will be order item. Then in this div we will add the key property where we will pass the index. So from this parameter we will take the individual order and with that we will pass the index number. And in this key, we will provide this index. Within this div, first we will add the image tag. And in this image src, we will use the assets. So first we will import the assets. So here we will type import curly braces assets from double dot slash double dot slash assets folder slash assets file. Then here we will provide assets dot parcel icon. After this image tag, we will add one div tag. And within this, we will provide one p tag. And in this p, we will provide a class name. It will be order item food. Here we will display all the items name. So we will add the curly braces. Just add order dot items dot map. And here we will pass one arrow function. In this parameter we will take the item and index. After that, here we will add the if statement. In this one, we will type if index equal to order dot items dot length minus one. In that case, here we will return item name. And in this one, we will concat one string where we will add this cross icon. Then we will concat the items quantity that we will get from item dot quantity.
After that, here we will add the else statement. And here we will add the curly braces. We will return item dot name plus this cross icon then plus item dot quantity after that we'll add one more string that is comma we will save the changes and open the web browser so here we have the order page this image then order items name and quantity so here we are checking if it is the last item so at last item we have the name and quantity but we don't have the comma at the end and for other items we have added one comma after closing of this p tag here we'll create another p tag and in this one we'll add the order item name Here we will add the curly braces and here we will add the user's first name and last name. So just add order dot address dot first name. After that we will concat one string where we will simply provide one space. After that we will concat the last name. To get the last name we will type order dot address dot last name we will save the changes so here you can see the name of user who has placed the order so we have used this name greatest tag while placing one order after that we will display the user's address to display the address we will add the p tag and in this one we will add the class name order item address in this one we will add the p tag and in this one we will display the street address so just add the curly braces we will add order dot address dot street in this one we will concat this comma after that we will add the p tag and here we will type order dot address dot city then we will concat the string where we will add the comma and space after this city we will display the user's state so just add order dot address dot state and here also we will add the comma and the space then we will add order dot address dot country then we will concat one comma and a space and after this a string we will concat the zip code so just add order dot address dot zip code if we will save the changes and open the web browser so here we have the street city state us and this zip code while placing the order we have entered the street city state us and this zip code and in the second order we have added this aaa in all the fields that's why it is displaying this a after that we will display the user's phone number so let's remove this p tag and we will convert it into div tag so it will be div in this one we have two p tag so there is no changes here so after closing up this div we will add one p tag and in this one we will display the user's phone number so we will add the class name property and it will be order item phone and here we will add the curly braces order dot address dot phone we will save the changes and open the web browser so here we have the user's phone number after that we will display the item quantity for that 
after closing of this div we will add one p tag and in this one we will add items then we will add the colon and we will add curly braces order dot items dot length we will save the changes so here we have the number of items item 2 item 6 and here we have the six items name this is the two items name after that we will show the order amount so we will create one p tag here we will add dollar sign curly braces and here we will type order dot amount save the changes so here we have the billing amount that is dollar 224 and dollar 74 after that we will create a select menu so that we can change the order status so while placing the order if i go to orders data you can see the order status is food processing by default so we will create a select menu so that we can change the status to out for delivery or delivered for that let's come back and here we will create a select menu so just add the select tag remove this name and id and here we will use the three option tag so we will type option into three so here we will add the same thing in the option text and value so we will type food processing that will be the by default status after that we will add out for delivery after that we will type the third status which is delivered save the changes so here we have the option to change the status after that we will add the css properties for this order page so first we will add the css properties for this class name order item let's copy this one open order.css file here we will use display grid grid template columns and here we will provide the 0 0.5 fraction 2 fraction 1 fraction 1 fraction and 1 fraction it will be fr after that we will add the align items start gap will be 30 pixel border will be 1 pixel solid and this color code then we will add the padding that will be 20 pixel margin will be 30 pixel and 0 pixel then we will add the font size that will be 14 pixel and at the end we will add color and use this color code we will save the changes and open the web browser so for each order we have the entry and now we will add the css properties for the class name order item food and the another class name order item name so let's add dot order item food comma dot order item name here we will provide the font weight 600 save the changes now open the web page so this name and the item is looking good after that here we will add the class name dot order item name and here we will add the margin top 30 pixel margin bottom 5 pixel save the changes so here we have the gap between the item name and user's name after that we will add the css properties for this address so we will copy this class name order item address we will paste it in the css file here we will add margin bottom 10 pixel we will save the changes 
so here we have the margin between the address and mobile number after that we will add the css properties for this select menu so here we will add dot order item then select tag and here we will provide the background color and this is the color code then we will add the border one pixel solid and here we will use the color code after that we will add the width in the width we will add the max property 10 vw and 120 pixel then we will add the padding it will be 10 pixel and here we will select the outline none we will save the changes and open the web page so here our select menu is looking good after that we have to make this page responsive so we will add the media query so here we will type at media and we will use the condition max width 1000 pixel and here we will add the class name order item and here we will add the font size 12 pixel then we will add the grid template columns 0.5 fraction 2 fraction and 1 fraction after that we will add the padding that will be 15 pixel and 8 pixel then we will add dot order item select tag and in this one we will provide the padding of 5 pixel font size of 12 pixel and after that here we will add the order item img tag and for this one we will provide width 40 pixel we will save the changes and open the web browser so if i inspect this web page and reduce the screen size so you can see this is how this layout is displayed so we have created the order page also now we will create the api using that we can select this option and change the status and that status should be saved in the database for that we will close these files and we will open the backend folder go to controllers folder and here we will open order controller.js file so here we will create a new api for updating the status so just add comment and we will add text api for updating order status after that we will create one arrow function and its name will be update status and it will be asynchronous arrow function so just add const update status equal to async and here we will add request and response after that we will pass this function in this export so just type update status and after saving this file we will open route folder then order route.js file and here we will create a new api and its method will be post so just add order router dot post method and here we will add the endpoint name that will be slash status and here we will use the update status function that we have created using this order controller js file so here we will import that function so just add comma update status and we will use this update status function here after that we will save this file and we will come back to the order controller.js file here first we will add one try catch block in this try block first we will find the order by using the id then we will update the value we will get the order id and status from the request.body and we will 
send that while calling the API. So here we'll type await. Then we'll use the order model dot find by ID and update. In this method, first we will provide the order ID that we will get from the body. So just add request dot body dot order ID. After that, we will add the curly braces. And here we have to update the status. So just add a status. And in this a status, we have to update the value that we will get from the request dot body. So just add request dot body dot a status. After updating this, our status will be updated in the database. After that, we will generate one response. So just add response.json. Here we will add the curly braces. And in this one, we will add success true. After that, we will add the message where we will add a status updated. If there is any error in this process, then this cache block will be executed. So we will type one console log and we will log the error. After that, we will generate the response using the JSON method. And in this one, we will type success false. And we will add the message also. So in the message, we will add error. We will save the changes and we will test this API. To test this API, first we need the order ID. We will get the order ID from the MongoDB. So here we have this order ID. Let's copy this one. Then we will come back to the VS Code editor. We will open the Thunder client. Click on new request. It will be post. And here we will use the API. HTTP localhost port 4000 slash API slash order slash status. After that, in this body, we will add order ID and paste the order ID. With that, we need the new status. So just type status and in this status, we will type out for delivery. Then we'll click on the send button. So here we have one error. So let's see why we are getting this error. We will open order route.js file. So here we have added the incorrect uh, spelling. So let's correct it. It will be a status. Save the changes and now again click on the send button. So here we are getting the message success true and the message is a status updated. Now if I open the web browser and refresh it, so this status should be updated. So refresh this web page. So here you can see the status out for delivery. So this API is perfectly working. After that, we will link this API with our admin panel. So we will close this backend panel. Here we have two terminals. First backend is running and here we have the admin panel. So let's open the admin folder. SRC, pages, orders, order.jsx file. Here we will create a functionality using that when we select other option, then it will update the order status. So to create that, let's come back and here we will create one add function and its name will be a status handler. So just add const a status handler. and it will be one asynchronous add -o function. In this one, we will pass the event and with that, we will pass the order ID. 
we will create the arrow function and now we will link this function with the select tag so come here in the select tag and here we will add the on change property and here we will pass the arrow function and in this arrow function we will pass the event and here we will call the a status handler function in this one we have to pass the event and with that we have to pass the order id to get the order id we will type order dot underscore id after adding this on change property and a status handler we will add one more thing which is value property and in this one we will add the order dot a status we will save the changes now we will check whenever we will select another option it is calling this function or not for that simply we will add console.log event and order id save the changes and open the web browser let's refresh this web page and inspect it go to console tab and if i select another option from this drop down here we have one event and here we have the order id so we are getting the event and order id after that we will add the logic using that whenever we will change the option from drop down that changes will be reflected in the database for that here we will call the api so just add const response equal to await and here we will call the axios dot post method here we have to provide the backend url so we will type url and in this one we will concat the endpoint address that is slash api slash order slash status after that here we have to send the body so just add curly braces and here in the body first we will set the order id so just add order id then we will send the status so here we will type a status and we will get this status from event dot target dot value after that we will get the response so here we will check if if the response is success in that case we will execute this if block in this if block we will call this fetch all orders function so this data will be refreshed for that here we will type await and we will call the fetch all orders function we will save the changes and we will refresh the web page so if i select the out for delivery from this drop down and refresh the database so for this order the status is out for delivery here we are getting extra space so we will correct it remove this space save the changes if i select delivered for both orders and refresh the database so you can see the both order status is delivered if i reload the web page you can see the updated status here which is delivered so we have created this functionality successfully after that we will check if we are updating the status here whether our front end status is getting updated or not so now we will run the front end back end and admin panel together so here our admin panel is already running 
at this port number 5173 and backend is also running on port 4000. Now we'll run the front end. So open the front end folder in the terminal. So here we have three terminals backend, admin, and front end. Here we will type npm run dev. So our front end is running at port number 5174. So we have to update this address in the backend controller, order controller.js file. So we will update this port number. It will be 5174. Save the changes. And after that, let's open this address in the web browser. So here we have the admin panel and this is the front end. Now click on the login. We will add this email ID, password. Then we will log in on the web page. If I open the orders page, so here the status is delivered. So you can see the status delivered for both orders. If I change the status out for delivery from the admin panel and refresh this web page, so you can see the status has been updated for the front end. It is out for delivery. After that, we will add the functionality. Using that, we don't have to refresh this web page to check the status. For that, we will add the functionality on this track order button. When we will click on this button, it will update the current status. So we will come back to the front end folder. We will open this SRC folder, pages, my orders page. And here we will run this function fetch orders whenever we will click on this track order button. For that, in this track order button, we will add the on click property. And here we will provide the function name, which is fetch orders. Save the changes. Now, if I change the status delivered from the admin panel and come to my orders page on front end and click on this track order, so it will update the status. So now we don't need to refresh the web page to check the status. We will click on track order and it will display the updated order status. Now we have successfully created the full stack food delivery app and we have added the name tomato. So now we have created all the functionalities so that we can add the product in the cart. We can remove the product from the cart. We can place the order. So if I add great stack in the email ID, we will add this email ID. And in the street, if I add one to three main street in the city, we will type any city in the street, we will type any town in the zip code. We will add one, two, three, four, five in the country. I'll type us and in the phone number, we will add one dummy phone number and click on proceed to payment. So we will be redirected to the payment page. To make this payment successfully, we will search for a Stripe dummy card. We will open this link. Here we will select cards by country. And here we will search for country for which we have created the Stripe account. So let's copy this card number. Here we will provide the email ID, card number, then select any future month and year. Add any three digit number, add the cardholder name and click on pay. Then click on complete payment. So the payment has been completed and here we have the third order. So by default, the status is food processing. And if I open the orders in the admin panel and select the status, 
out for delivery and click on track order so it will display the out for delivery if i click on delivered so it is displaying delivered so we have successfully created the full stack food delivery app using the react js express js mongodb and node.js and in the admin panel we have created the product add page product list page and order details page here we have created the functionality for login logout and register my orders page cart page if i click on logout so now we have the login form so finally we have completed this full stack food order website if you want the source code of this full stack project including backend and payment integration i have given the link in the description below and don't forget to link this project in your resume it will make your resume stand in the top 1% and help you to secure a high paying job i hope this video was helpful to you do subscribe our channel if you have not subscribed yet thank you so much for watching this video